prosper from parts? Top men. Let's hope so. As two teams of money-obsessed car strippers battle to make maximum profit from breaking end-of-life vehicles. 65 at 250. 1,400 nickel. This isn't mindless nonsense, though. It's a learning experience. There's culture. What's that? A business masterclass. Excuse me, ladies. No, 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 don't run off. Don't run off. <laughs> and an in-depth study of linguistics. I don't speak Polish. I'm struggling with English. challenge the teams must go big with a whopping budget of 10 grand they'll be able to break true motoring thoroughbreds for parts but high purchase prices mean there'll be a lot of cash to claw back just to break even neither team has ever made a loss but get this wrong and all that could change leaving their reputations in tatters if recovering thousands in costs wasn't enough the teams will have only three days at this licensed breakers yard to strip their cars before selling off the parts for hard cash. Whoever rakes in top profit wins. This could be the toughest challenge to date for two teams more at home with Fords than Ferraris. Less Lamborghini, more Lada. First up, Ben and Frankie. Making sparks fly in the workshop is mechanic Ben Shemansky. Creating automotive perfection requires craftsmanship, skill and time. Destroying it, a big hammer usually suffices. Keeping the pound coins rolling in is East End sales shark Frankie Otway. I might look like a teddy bear, but when it comes to selling, I'm like a boy in a china shop. Across the yard, George and Sheldon. The man in charge of cutting up cars is wrench-happy George Percy. I'm not happy unless I'm up to my elbows in engine oil and grease. Taking care of cutting the deals is smooth operator Sheldon Nichols. When you look great, when you feel great, you can sell anything. Mission one for the boys is choosing which car to splash their ten grand budget on. Ben and Frankie have just one thing in mind. Porsche would be quite a good idea. Ben, I notice you jumped straight into Porsches. I quite fancy a Porsche. But not a Boxster. No, because that's not a real Porsche. That's not a Porsche. No, it's got to be a 911. A 911, if you prefer, Frankie. In 1963, Porsche unleashed the 901. Until Peugeot threw a hissy fit about the name, and it became the 911. 50 years of motoring supremacy proves you don't mess with perfection. The unmistakable silhouette has barely changed, and she's still driven by the powerful flat-six engine. Milestone tweaks came in 1998, with the 996 version adopting water cooling and four-valve cylinder heads. But Porsche's flagship car remained as prized as ever. With punters paying a premium for parts, a 911 should be a lucrative investment, if they can get their hands on one. And as luck would have it, Ben knows a man who can. I think I should take the lead, Frankie, because I know a man. And do you know what he does? What? You'll never guess. He sells Porsches. <laughs> he does sell Porsches, yeah. Hello, Kev? Yeah, it's Ben. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very good, very good. Listen, you'll never guess what I'm in the market for. Believe it or not, this isn't Soviet Russia. It is, in fact, Leeds. Benz brought Frankie to his Yorkshire homeland in the hope a shiny Porsche 911 might prove it's anything but grim up north. Just remember, we don't use Sovereignos up here for money. It's brass, if anything. You'll just confuse the fella. Benz, man with a Porsche, is fellow breaker Kevin Durkin. We're a specialist Porsche breaker. Uh, the cars in the yard that you've seen today are, are all Cat Bs, which have been uh, written off by the insurance companies due to accident damage. Although 
where Cat B means all these cars have been deemed write-offs, they're still good for parts. The lads today have come to see a Porsche 996 uh, Carrera 2 Cabriolet. No need to worry, the 996 is simply a version of the 911. So this is the car the boys are after. Porsches everywhere. There's a Porsche. Yeah, there's a Porsche. 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 No, Frankie, that's not a Porsche. That's not a Porsche. That's not a Porsche. No. Nah. Well, there's a lot of Porsches. This is a beauty. I've got to tell you, Ben, that's a bit of me. I do like that. I do like it. It's a beautiful car, Frankie, and there's a lot of cash here. This could be an adventurous trip. You see that roof? Have a guess. Go on. I don't know. You're looking at a grand, surely. Yeah, over a grand. 1,300 quid, I reckon. There's all sorts of bits. These wings, 400 quid a piece. These lights, you know, from Porsche? Yeah. 1,200 quid, those lights. So we've got a bit to knock them out for at least 300, haven't we? This is lovely. This is lovely now because now I'm seeing pay notes. I'm seeing our profit develop. Have a look, get in, have a look around. Do you think I should? Yeah, I think you should. Go on. How about taking it for a little spin? A little spin? Yeah. Ah. Now there is a there is a tiny little problem with that, Frankie. What's that? There's vital bits missing. How vital? Well, there's no engine and gearbox. Wallop. He's hit me straight between the eyes and said there's no engine and gearbox in it. I mean, that's like buying a, it's like buying an orange with no pips. No engine and gearbox. Well, it had a little shunt on the back and it damaged it all. So they've taken that out and it's not included in the sale, Frankie. But everything else, Frankie, this car will break for a fortune. Well, what sort of man is he looking for for this? He wants maybe five or six for it, Frankie. Now, it's a lovely car. It's been at, it's had a little accident and there's no engine and gearbox. But it's a prestige motor, it's a lovely motor and there's lots of parts saleable on there. Meanwhile, back at the yard, Sheldon's relishing the chance to splash out. You've got the opportunity to go big on this one. You've got 10 grand. 10 grand? It is nice, but it's a challenge, isn't it? We've got to make the money back. Rolls-Royce? Bentley? What about an Aston? We could get an early Aston. What about a Maserati? No one's breaking those. Well, not that I know of. Yeah, you've got the Quattro Porto. And you've got the 3200 twin turbo. Yeah. One yeah. with the boomerang back lights. They're nice. I like your thinking, George. Maserati had been lurking in the shadows of its rivals for some 20 years prior to the company being taken over by Ferrari in 1997. A major boost in credibility came with the release of the 3200 GT. Boasting a 3.2-litre twin-turbo V8, 370 brake horsepower and a top speed of 280 kilometres per hour, Maserati finally had a car to rival the Porsche 911. The 3200 GT helped turn around Maserati's fortunes and a hefty price tag on parts could do the same for the boys. Hi, I'm ringing about the Maserati. It's sold. All right, mate. It's sold. Oh, she's gone. Hi, I'm ringing about the Maserati. Is there a bit of movement on that money if I come down, see it and like it? That sounds... Yeah, that sounds fantastic. The mission to secure a Maserati has brought George and Sheldon to a high-end dealership in Chessington. How lovely, isn't they? Oh, oh, oh. Look at that red one. Oh, he's got a few quid's worth of motors around him, isn't he? Where Italian car specialist Ilya Salaya is primed to strike a deal. We basically specialise in Ferrari, Lamborghini and Maserati. Sheldon and George are coming down to look at a Maserati 3200 GT. The head gaskets have failed. It probably would cost anything between five and £6,000 to repair, so it's really uneconomical to repair the car and then try and sell it on. It's the best option, really, to break the car. Well, I'd like £6,000 for the car, but we'll see where we go with the price. Oh, wow. George, we're buying a Maserati. Can you believe it? Oh, look at it. Oh, man. Children. Woo! George, a Maserati. <laughs> you sound like you've already bought this. Do I look good next to it or not? I've got to admit it, I fell in love with it. I've never owned a Maserati. I've never thought of even owning a Maserati, contemplated owning a Maserati. I mean, is she as clean your side as she is mine? It's got a couple of minor marks on the wheels, George, but that's about it. The tyres are all the same tyres all round. 
It's obviously been kept in a garage because there's no curb marks on any of those wheels. That tells you a lot about a car. It's been well looked after. It's had a lot of love. Go on then, start her up. Uh, well, no, hold on, hold there on. was a few issues with that. Well, the, the coils aren't plugged in. Yeah. It's not even got a spark plug in there. Yeah, gasket's gone on it. Right. But he assures me it hasn't got a cracked head and the block's all good. It's just the head gaskets. Are you sure? Well, yeah. It's got a couple of engine issues, but the bodywork and interior-wise, it's all there. It'd be fun to own the Maserati, wouldn't it? Meanwhile, up in Leeds, Frankie's pulling no punches for the Porsche. So, uh, Kev, yeah. Ben tells me you're looking for a lot of money for that mate with no engine and gearbox. Ten grand, mate. Worth it all day long. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you, Ben told me six grand. No way, it's worth more than that. I think I might have uh, dropped a bit of a clanger. A big clanger? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else, Kev. You ain't going to get ten grand out of us. Never. Never, brother. Not in a million years. Six grand, take it or leave it. Don't start all that rubbing your face, Kev, because it won't wash. Oh, yeah. You know, we are shrewd people here. We are exactly what you see. You're we having are... a laugh, mate. No, they all say that, Kev, we're having a laugh. You don't see me smiling, do you? <laughs> not often, no. No. Six grand, it's reasonable, Kev, though. It's not bad. It is, Kev. I need more than that, mate. You'll have to try a little bit harder. Come on, come on. Can I'll break for a fortune. Ben, will it you... It will break for a fortune, Frank. He is right. I'm doing you a favour here. But... If we offer you, right, a little bit extra, six and a half grand... You're going to get six and a half grand with that motor. We've got a deal, Kev, haven't we? Surely, Ben. Surely. Surely? Go on, then. Six and a half grand. Yeah. Shake that man's hand, Ben, will you? <laughs> Jeez, you've done the right thing, Kev. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you have done the right thing. One engineless Porsche 911 bought for six and a half grand. It's one of the most acclaimed sports cars in the world, although its current 0 to 60 time depends on how many people are willing to push. Back in Chessington, Sheldon is straight down to business as he attempts to secure this Maserati 3200 GT, complete with blown head gasket. I've got four and a half thousand pounds. That's pretty low. Five and three quarters, 5,750 pounds. It's got good history. That's all the history there, is it? Yeah, it's right here. So you're saying five, five and three quarters? Five and three quarters. <sighs> I've got a maximum of five grand. And that's, with all respect, I'd have to take it or leave it, because I can't go any more than that. Five grand. It's difficult for me to sell it for that, but, you know, you're a nice enough guy. I think we can, uh, we can do business at £5,000. Lovely. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> I own a Maserati. <laughs> so, George and Sheldon have secured this doomed Maserati 3200 GT for five grand. It may have looks to die for, but with a knackered head gasket, it's living proof that beauty is only skin deep. Having bought their high-end motors, the teams now have their work cut out in clawing back the deficit. So, with just three days to play with, they need to get stripping and start selling. What can't be sold will be crushed and weighed in for scrap. But before the teams get to work, there's just time for a butchers of the opposition. Well, it's taken a bit of time, but it's nice to see you guys have finally decided to buy yourself a decent car. It's a lovely motor, Frank. But it's hardly a scrapper. I mean, where'd you nick it from? George, don't start all that game. You're practically calling me a thief. Well, let's have a look at Wait, the no, George, we're no, George, we're very busy on. now. Come let's on. Let's have we'll... a look. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was all Lee's idea. It was all Lee's idea. You even got the engine. no engine. It was. I knew there had to be something wrong no, with it. No, no, no. Onwards and upwards, <laughs> fellas. Let's uh, take a look at this. <laughs> it's a nice car. Face your eyes on that beautiful bodywork. That gorgeous leather interior. You like it, don't you, Ben? Hmm. Start her up, then let's have a look at it then, see what it's all about. It doesn't start. Ah, well, no. George, being a Maserati, it'll be something very simple. A fuse, some lack of fuel, a flat battery. It's a head gasket. A head gasket. Oh. George, at a main dealer's, that would cost a billion pounds to fix. Your car, it's worthless. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Ben. Only those two could have bought an engine as bad as ours, and we ain't even got one. George and Sheldon splashed out five grand on this shiny Maserati 3200 GT. Looks can be deceptive, though. A blown head gasket has seriously lowered the value of the engine. And that's a big minus when you've splashed so much cash. 
Ben and Frankie are in petrol head dreamland with this Porsche 911. In reality, the absence of engine and gearbox, a dented rear bumper, a gaffer tape based security system, and a purchase price of six and a half grand mean that dream could turn into a financial nightmare. But that's not to say they should throw in the towel. There's still plenty of money in the 911, with premium sales to be made on roof, body shell, and leather interior. It's the interior that on day one is job one for Ben and Frankie. That moved a bit sharpish, didn't it? Yeah, it's pretty quick, these posh bits, that straight yeah. down. Do you know what I think we should do first? Get all the interior bits and pieces out, because these are in quite nice condition, apart from the mould. But they're worth a lot of cash, and I don't want muddy footprints all over them. I've even put a bit of white carpet down to put these. Well, that's on. what you should be doing, actually, because it is very expensive. We are where we are. We've got a six and a half grand Porsche with no engine and gearbox. We've got a mech for money. But they won't make a penny without alerting the part buying public. Cue the big man. Front seats, I've got back seats. Everything for sale when that motor. You name it, I've got it. Speakers, I've got seat belts, door cards, panels. I've got doors. Frankie's phone bashing isn't in vain, as there may be a sale in the offing. Oh, you want the rear seats? Come down and see me. I'm approachable. How nice. And that's just as well, because here are the punters. Father and son, Bally and Sean. My name's Bally. This is my son, Sean. And we're here to buy 911 rear seats. Lovely to meet you, boy. Lovely. I'm looking for two and a half hundred nicker for these seats out of the Porsche. And are you going to buy them or not at that money? No chance. Too steep. No chance. Can you elaborate on no chance? I'll give you 125 for them. I think 125 is a cracking deal. 125? You can think what you like, Bally, because you're not going to get them at 125. I am looking to you two today. 195 nicker plus a fiver for lunch. That's 200 nicker to you two from Coventry. How do you feel? I'll tell you what, I'll give you 150 quid. You are getting a deal of a lifetime, my son. These are so soft, you will never get backache, leg ache, headache, or any other ache, right? So I'm telling you what I'm going to do with you, Sean, because I like you. 175, how do you feel? I'll tell you what, you got yourself a deal. You, I've got a deal. That's the rear seats and seatbelt clips sold for 175 quid. Breaking even. It's only £6,325 away. Meanwhile, George can see pound signs in the non-running Maserati engine. There's a lot of money in just these little bits. That throttle body, £600. Yeah. yeah can you imagine if you... Second went... hand. Imagine going into Maseratis and trying to buy it. Even though the head gaskets are gone and that engine doesn't run, it's not the end of the world. We could sell that engine on to someone else that's prepared to rebuild it and overhaul it. We've got all the ancillaries, the starter motor, the alternator, the aircon pump. There's still a lot of money in it. George has a point. But aside from the engine, there's also cash to be made from other desirable parts, such as bodywork, lights, suspension, and brakes. Getting the engine out requires a few other parts to be stripped first. Fortunately, those bits are worth a few bob too, so the boys are killing two birds with one stone. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I've got your number from um, one of the local car magazines. And Sheldon wastes no time in trying to flog those parts as they come off. I'm actually at the moment breaking a Maserati 3200 GT twin turbo. Not for you? What, none of it? Hello? Yeah, the grill's still available. Do you want me to put your name on it? Lovely. A phone sale of 150 quid for the front grill is a start, but it's small change when you've got five grand to claw back. Across the yard, something's troubling Frankie. Ben, look. What? I've just been doing some number crunching. And, uh... It ain't looking good, brother. We ain't got time for a lot of this stuff. And if you look at it realistically, and you can't play some quick, then you are left with 
not only parts that you can't sell, but possibly a, a deficit, which means that you are in debt. You know, if we paid three and a half grand for this moat, I wouldn't be worried. We've paid double that. I feel that we're going to end up having to take a bit of a whack on this, and that's not a good thing. To tackle the deficit, the boys need sales on high-value items. And there's a lead on the wheels. Hello, Mush. Yeah. What, the allies on the Porsche? Yeah, you like them? All right, yeah, well, come down and we'll have a deal. Yeah, no, as long as you don't strong it, Mush, and all that game. With uprated tyres, a set of four new Porsche wheels can cost as much as £1,700. So the chaps should be good for a few hundred quid, if they're in good nick. What sort of condition are these in, in these tyres? Pucker or what? Well, there's a few things you need to look for if you're buying used tyres, Frankie. I mean, the first thing is the condition of the rubber, because as rubber get, as it ages, it starts cracking, it dries out. The other thing is any significant curbing or gouging in the sidewalls there, you know, if they've hit the curb. But these look pretty decent. They look all right, don't they? They look pretty nice. So the final thing to look at is the tread depth. Now, right. you get one of these devices just to measure it. So you can see you've just got above four millimetres on this tyre. So what should it be? Well, on a new tyre, you'd start off with maybe seven, eight millimetres. And in the UK, tyres become illegal when they get down to 1.6. Right. So this is about halfway done in terms of tread. Halfway. They're still pretty decent. They've got plenty of miles left in them. Yeah, they have, haven't they? With the condition of these wheels, with that sort of logo, the tyres all look good and tasty. Yeah. I mean, could be talking about a nice few quid here, Ben, couldn't we? I think so. And here's the buyer. Dr. Cal Dazia, who's come to examine the goods. My name's Cal from Manchester. Come here to buy some wheels for my Porsche Carrera 4, and I'm on a budget. The budget's 500 pounds. Cal, if I said you 700 nicker, yeah. what would you say to me, Cal? Not, not a possibility. Not a possibility. In other words, it means no, doesn't it? It means it can't be done. It can't be done. Yeah. They spin like that, <laughs> right? All that, Cal, and they bounce. Look. True. Right. Because they bounce, Cal, I'm going to do you a deal of a lifetime. Six and a half hundred nicker. To you. I have to say no. Cal, listen. Listen to me. Yeah. Now meet me halfway and you can put them in the boot of your motor yeah. and take them up where they have that black pudding and all that <laughs> other dodgy grub, right? Yeah, yeah. Take them home. Okay. For five and a half hundred quid. Five and a half hundred quid. Appreciate that. I'm looking at more than 500. You said you'll refuse to pay five and a half. If I took an Urton Senna off of it, a Paul McKenna, a tenner off yeah, of it, yeah. what would you say? We got a deal or what? I think we got a deal. We got a deal? And I have got 540 on me. You got 540? It's all there. It's all there. That's 540 notes for the wheels. It's another notch on the sales belt, but the boys need to be adding zeros if they want to break into profit. Meanwhile, Sheldon's tried to squeeze money out of the knackered Maserati engine but it's not going to plan. Yeah, the engine's complete. Yeah, it's a twin turbo. No, no, the, the head gasket's on one bank's gone. Cheers. It's the one in the front, isn't it? Yeah, it might drop a little bit. Drop a little bit? No, it's a great engine. I'm prepared to give you a guarantee with it. It's got loads of service history. <sighs> this engine is bad news. I don't want to say I've bitten off more than I can chew, but I think I've bitten off more than I can chew because it's not the easiest thing for me to get rid of. The inquiries that I'm getting, they're all asking if it's a runner, which unfortunately it's not. A lot of people are in the same situation that I'm in okay, with an engine with a blown head gasket. It's not happening fast enough for me, so I think we're going to have to divert our energies and our passions to selling a lot of other bits off of this car for the time being. And those bits need to be stripped before Sheldon can sell them. So George gets to work. I've got a Maserati 3200 GT. It's got the wheels, it's got the interior, the dash. Yep, engine box, diff, front, rear suspension. It's, it's a complete car. No, not silly prices. Whatever you need or want off of it, it's here. Yeah, speaking. No, there's no damage on the bonnet. The bonnet's fine. And after countless efforts, the hard sell looks like it's about to pay off. Because here's car bonnet collector Terry Jeeves. My name's Terry. Um, I'm interested in a Maserati bonnet. Um, it's the first Italian bonnet I've bought, because I collect American bonnets generally. 
um, but I just love the shape of it. Um, so I don't want to pay too much money for it because basically it's a wall hanger. So we'll see. How you doing, Terry? Right, mate. Um, as you can see, it's got no scratches, no dents. It's never been repaired. It's in good nick. Yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's exactly what I want. It's fine. It's no damage. It's great. Just got to sort out what, some money, you know. OK, well, as you know, it's advertised at 280. It's a bit more than I wanted to pay for it. Can we do 140? For a minute, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> well, you said 140 for a minute there. I did say 140. No, no. I know you're bigger than me, but, you know... 180? Getting close. So you what, make it 280? We can shake hands. That's gone back up where we started. Well, that's all good for me, that works. Not for me. Do 230 and we've got a deal. I can't do it. No such word as can't. There is. 200 quid and I'll shake your hand. Go on then. All right, cheers, mate. Do you want to hand put it in your motor? Yeah, if you don't mind. That bonnet sale means 200 notes for George and Sheldon and a lovely wall hanging for Terry. It's petrol head chic. But both teams have got to pull their socks up if they want to start All making right, profits. Thanks, Thanks very much, mate. Cheers, you mate. take care. Thanks a lot. It's day two out of three as the teams attempt to make top profit from breaking high-end motors. Right. I've got a deal. Things could have gone worse on day one. It's all there. It's all there. But they could have gone a lot, lot better. George and Sheldon spent five grand on a handsome but non-running Maserati 3200 GT. On day one, they battled to get sales on a bust engine, but ultimately came away with just 150 for the grill, 200 for the bonnet, and a financial mountain to climb. Ben and Frankie paid six and a half grand for their engineless Porsche 911, and despite having made early sales on rear seats for 175 quid and wheels for 540, they're far from profit. But Frankie's had a call that could make all the difference. Hello, Governor. Yes. I've got a lovely Porsche. It's wonderful. Is there anything I can tempt you with? Yes. You want that? Lovely. What else? Yes. Yes. Yeah, go on. Yeah, lovely. In fact, the punter wants the vast majority of what's left on the 911 including the body shell. But it's not all good news. How far away are you exactly? About 1,100 kilometres, because the buyer is in Szyalona Góra, Poland. Oh. Right. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's all right. I do, I do long trips. Frankie arrive in Poland ahead of their 9-11 parts, leaving them time to sample the local culture and cuisine. Look, Ben, I think you better order because I don't speak the old lingo. Yeah, leave it to me. Now, with a name like Szymanski and a Polish father, you can see why Frankie's brought Ben along. He needed a translator, and who did he turn to? Me, of course. The little problem, the little flaw in this plan is I don't speak Polish. You've got to be one of those. And, uh, yeah, Frank, you'll like that. Yeah. You know, what chance I've got? I mean, you know, I've got no chance, have I? I'm struggling with English. Yes. Okay. Yes. I appreciate that, that he interprets it and orders what, exactly what he thinks I'm going to love, which is lovely. You like it, Frank? It's nice, good stuff. Is it? You are, yeah. Nice of him. What's that? It's your soup. It's got three colours in it. It's a lovely mix of, um vegetables and, and things, and seeds, and a leaf on top. If you like it, I think. Back at base, there's a change of plan for Sheldon. Right, brainwave time, think out of the box, new strategy. I'm not going to sell that engine as a lump. It's worth more in bits, i.e. the cans, the heads, the block. Selling it as a lump doesn't make sense because the phones aren't ringing. No emails, no texts, no nothing, no interest. I really think that's the way forward, and that's the only way I think I'm going to get my money back. Having devised a new engine strategy, it's up to George to get it stripped and Sheldon to sell the bits. So you just want the bare block and the heads? 
and nothing else. And with a change of tack, a change of luck. What are you thinking of putting that in? No, what sort of car are you thinking of putting it in? A table. All right, lovely. Speak to you soon. Bye now. Well, might be getting somewhere finally. And on day three, that somewhere is Auto Italia's car meet near Weybridge in Surrey, where Sheldon's punter is running a stall. He's Dave Clark. I make uh, automotive furniture and uh, sculptures. So turning car seats into armchairs and sofas and bar stools from wheels and things like that. I know Sheldon's got an engine block and a set of pistons and con rods. Now I could make two tables out of that, but I would pay 500 maximum for all of that. Hey. How you doing, Dave? How you doing? Very well. How you doing, Sheldon? I'm good. What are you going to do with our engine then? First of all, um, got to take it all apart. All the pistons, the con rod and crankshafts, that's all got to come out and then split into the two tables. Two tables. See? Two See? tables. So you're going to make two tables out of this. So really, by right, if one of your tables is going for £850 to maybe £900, you know, I can't give it away. How much do you want for it then? I would say at least £700. <laughs> It's got to be worth £700. No, 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 no. To get a £900 profit out of it. There's so much work there. 350 Come on. <laughs> that's, you're insulting me. I don't want to walk this thing all the way back. It's quite heavy. Oh, exactly. But, Dave, come on. We're not even on the same page. We're in two different books. I'll stretch to 450 550 and I'll leave it here with you, and you throw in one of those for me. 500 and one of those. Done. Deal. That's the engine block and pistons sold for £500. With a fancy paperweight thrown in as a sweetener. With one deal in the bag, Sheldon has a moment to check out the event. This is the perfect excuse to show off your new Ferrari. But if you haven't got one, you can at least try and look like you have. All right, George, what's going on? Ah, you're here just in time. George, just... I expect to see queues of people here with Maserati parts walking off. I've not been here five minutes. I'm unloading. Look, I'm still unloading. Come on. Give me a hand. George and Sheldon have secured a pitch at the event in the hope of selling more than just the engine parts. In fact, facing a potentially massive loss on their Maserati, they're hoping to flog the lot. Meanwhile, in Poland, Ben and Frankie's Porsche parts have arrived at one of the country's top Porsche dealerships. The job lot will be inspected by Marjek and Tomas, who don't speak a word of English. Luckily, Frankie can call on the services of a translator, who, despite his surname, doesn't speak a word of Polish. This could be good. Długo jechaliście? Inspect the goods, yeah, just let's get into it. Beautiful looking thing. To jest auto przed faceliftem czy po faceliftie? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do your thing, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Z maski no, przedniej ktoś zdjął herb w Polsce. He said that, that panel is fantastic. I'm glad you are along. Just thanks, because I do have to pay attention. Just, just, yeah. What are you saying? What are you saying? Really good condition, I think, yeah. He ain't said nothing. The inspection may not have been an unqualified success, but with euros being a pretty universal currency, there should be no language barrier when it comes to the deal. Well, I say that. So, uh, am I going to do this then? Well, why don't you write it down, the international language of numbers? I'm still writing in English. Yes. Well, are they going to understand that? Numbers. Nie, nie, ma nie to nie ma sensu. Nie ma... Wracajcie panowie do Anglii, no naprawdę to za tyle nie możemy kupić. Musielibyśmy nie ma dołożyć szans. do interesu, nie ma takiej opcji. If I said to you, you know, if I said to you that, how does that grab you? Nie, to jest już ciągle za dużo. Maciek, ja myślę, że możemy zapłacić im gdzieś 3,700, ja im powiem 3,500. Dobrze, tak zrobimy. E, 3,500 e, euro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's back, oh, he's back. Oh, he's back. Yeah. I, know, I know the game. I know the game. Oh, I know the coup. And I've got him now. Got... Oh, no, he loves it out there. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, boys, quick. What is your last price? 
That is the best I can do for you, little boys. Thank because you, you are Bro. lovely boys. Matt, Stay at the shelter. What's, that, what's his problem? OK. We'll have that. We'll take it. Can we see that, please? It's OK. Dobra. OK. Lovely. Lovely. Super. Super. Super stuff. Good stuff. That one Porsche 911 body shell plus assorted parts sold for €4,000 or £3,379. Thank you very much. Ben and Frankie yeah, are yeah, racing yeah. towards Thank profit and are poles apart from the opposition. Do you see what I did there? Back in Weybridge, the opposition are failing to build on the sale of their engine parts. Come and get your Maserati bits. Tail lights, headlights, anything you like. Young man, I've got something for you. Young man, hello? <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. No, 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 don't run off. Don't run off. <laughs> My Maserati's not doing well at all. It's doing very, very, very badly. I've got turbos, I've got interiors, I've got wheels. You name it, I've got it. I just need to move it. Um, desperate times call for desperate measures. He will be going off in about sort of 10-15 uh, minutes time and... Uh... Excuse me, can I borrow your mic for a minute? Yeah. Hello, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, sorry to disturb you, but if you own a Maserati 3200, you really need to get over to our school today. It will be the best move you could make today. Thanks very much. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Thank you. And the bold move seems to have paid off. All right, mate. All right. Do you do? For anything in particular? Just a lot of wishbones. Just a lot of wishbones? Yeah. First rule of selling, don't insult the customer. Sorry, I don't mean it would be rude, but it ain't for you or maybe for your dad. What do you mean? Have, Have you, you got, got one? Yeah. You, you've got a Maserati yeah. 3200? Yeah, it's from my car, yeah. Okay. okay, anything else you need? Well, we've got two of those, the intercoolers. And what are you looking to spend? Probably about £75. It's a Maserati, not a Cortina. How much money have you got with you? I'll offer you £100, and that's it. That's all I've got on me today. All right, done. £100. £100, pounds. £100 all right. then, yeah. Here's back. All right, then. All right, let's see your money. £100 for the intercooler and a couple of wishbones. Normally a satisfactory outcome. But still heavily in the red, George and Sheldon need to do much, much more. Oh, here we go. Hello, mate. How you doing? OK. Looking for anything in particular? Well, I may be thinking about the radio. Dun, dun, dun. I was hoping for 80 pounds. I was sort of thinking more like 40. We can't do 40. 60 is probably the most I could justify. <laughs> Go on, 60 pounds. 60 pounds for the radio. Not really music to the ears when there's so much ground to make up. Got it for 60 pounds in the end. That's uh, pretty good, I think, for, uh, for this. And uh, looking forward to fitting it. In one sense, it's been a fantastic day. Couldn't wish to be anywhere better. But on the other side of it, you know, I came here to make money, not on a jolly. The engine, 50 pounds shy of what I really wanted. Sold a radio cassette for 60 quid. You know, sold um, two A-arms and an intercooler for 100 pounds, which I'm not happy about. But hey, three days, backs up against the wall. Hello, Neil. How you doing, Hello. mate? Lovely set of Maserati headlights. But things oh, could be like about to look up like with the arrival of Maserati yeah, dealer yeah. Mark. And son. So you obviously know what these parts are worth? Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, six of them, you tend to get a, an idea of what uh, things You've go for. Six? For. I do, yeah. Today, I've, bought, uh, I've got my Maserati Mexico, which is. Nice. Not the blue one? Yes. The metallic blue. Beautiful it's car. car. It's just in front of the hangar, yeah. isn't it? I'd like to get a picture of it, it's class. Yeah, yeah. More importantly, yes. uh, right, yeah. business. Put the subject <laughs> in hand. <laughs> yeah. What do you need from us? I'll, um, have a little ring around, see if I can try and get more customers to spend their money. OK. Yeah. <laughs> that could be the one we need, mate. Well, do you know what? That could be the one we need. It will need to be, because a meagre total of £660 of sales on the day means the boys are still facing an almighty deficit and severe embarrassment. The three days of stripping high-end motors are coming to an end. Ben and Frankie have made a tiny profit with their Porsche 911, but have nothing left to sell. At least they're not doing as badly as their opponents. George and Sheldon enjoyed a relatively trouble-free dismantle, but a string of small-time sales did little to recover the five grand debt left by the purchase of the Maserati. Three days, backs up against the wall. With the final curtain about to fall, they're still heavily in deficit and in need of a substantial sale. But there may be a silver lining for Sheldon, 
I've had a real result. The fellow that I met at Auto Italia, Mark, he's put me in contact with this guy who wants loads of bits and pieces. So what I've arranged is for my man Gordon, who does all my transportation needs, to bring as many Maserati parts down here as possible. All I know is that we're talking big money. And how much is down to Maserati dealer Gerald Ace? David Askew, Maserati parts, breaks cars and also sells um, new parts, purely for Maserati. How you doing, Mr oh, Ace? Nice to, to meet you. Thank you very much. You happy with everything? I'm happy. Well, I, the only thing I need to do is to sort out the best price with you. Well, you are going to get them for the best price. You know, you've bought a job lot and I will give you a good deal. I'm thinking somewhere in the region of about £4,800. Whoa. That's about one and a half too much, I'd say. If I had the time personally to sell all the bits, I'd make well over £4,800 on well, this Well, I point. know you haven't got time, have you? No, and you're taking advantage of that. <laughs> I think I know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's going to work for both of us, hopefully. If I tell you the, the price and you see whether you like it. I have to sit down because I think you're going to hit me low. So I am going to hit you low. It's four grand. And that, matey, is it? Forty-one fifty. Four thousand pounds, Sheldon. Next time I go and buy a car, I'm going to ask you to come with me. OK. Four thousand pounds? Okay. Shake Four thousand pounds it is. Shake hands on the deal. Pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Ace. Thank you very much. Four thousand pounds for pretty much all that's left of the Maserati. George and Sheldon have finally hit profit. But is it enough? With Sheldon's last gas method beating the final deal, it's time to weigh in any leftovers for scrap value. Both teams have managed to get shot of nearly everything on their cars so there's not enough metal to crush. Which leaves Joe, who operates the crusher, some time to contemplate a career change dilemma. Architecture or demolition? That's enough of that. All that remains from either car is the engine cover from the Maserati. And with scrap going at 125 pounds per tonne, a weight of nine kilos nets the boys a whopping one pound. And with that pound safely in the pocket, it's time to do some maths. Right, chaps. This should be interesting. Looks like uh, we've all been busy, haven't we? Well, some of us. It's not like you had an engine to take out, is it? Well, shall we put you ladies out of your misery? Yeah. George and I, we paid £5,000 for our Maserati. Total sales, £5,411 which gives us a total profit of £411. George and Sheldon soon learnt that paying five grand for a scrapper puts real pressure on sales. Normally respectable sums paid for parts barely made a dent in the deficit, whilst phone and web sales on items such as the front grille and gearbox didn't help much either. Ultimately, the Auto Italia stall did pay off, leading to a four grand bulk sale that turned their fortunes. Over to you. We parted up with six and a half grand for our lovely little German Porsche. 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 Total sales, 6,576 nicker. Right, giving us a total wonderful profit of 76 spondulios. Buying a car without engine and gearbox is risky. Paying six and a half grand for it now looks like total lunacy. Ben and Frankie did well to make early gains from rear seats and wheels. We got a deal on what? I think we got a deal. Whilst phone and web sales on items such as suspension and rollover unit added to the haul, but it was the bulk sale trip to Poland that brought in the big score. We like that. But it wasn't big enough. George and Sheldon are this week's thoroughbreds. But I don't think they'll be buying a yacht just yet. That is the last time I let Ben buy a motor. I mean, it's all right being a translator, but buying motors... <laughs> Do I feel guilty? No. Well, a little bit. OK, really close to taking a hit on that one. <laughs> don't want to be doing that too often. Since the making of this show, all the parts sold have found a new lease of life. Terry's looking for a wall space for his Maserati bonnet. 
Tomas and Marjek couldn't be happier with their poor shell and panels. And Mark's given his engine block not one, but two thumbs up. Where there's metal, there's money. Just how much, we'll find out, as two teams of iron-fisted vehicle strippers compete to make mountains of cash from breaking end-of-life cars. 1,500 quid. 160. Five. Prepare yourself for an outbreak of nerdism. It's classic, isn't it? Yeah. And X-rated chat. 17 inches on that. 17 inches of what? In fact, it's so racy... Oh, oh. It's barely legal. A petrol head's first car can evoke sweet memories and cause severe embarrassment. Just ask our sound man, Dave. In this challenge, the teams must amass profits from breaking an example of one of their first cars. And as if digging up a rusty relic from their distant past wasn't tough enough, the boys have just three days to slice and dice their beloved first cars at this licensed breaker's yard before selling the parts for as much hard cash as they can. The highest earners will win the challenge. Reliving their wonder years in this challenge are two teams of scrappers of the finest vintage. First up are Ben and Frankie. Supplying the mechanical muscle is grease monkey Ben Chiamansky. Any monkey could strip a car, and I am the ape. Providing the hustle is motormouth car dealer Frankie Oatway. Welcome to the Bank of Oatway. Deposits, thank you very much. Loans, forget it. Doing battle with the boys across the yard are George and Sheldon. Breaking the cars is the domain of no-nonsense action man, George Percy. What I don't know about cars, you can fit on the back of a postage stamp. The selling side falls to Stanmore's very own connoisseur of cars, Sheldon Nichols. When it comes to sales, baby, I've got all the right moves. Mission one is to choose which team member's first car will yield the biggest profit. With only two possibilities, it shouldn't be the toughest decision they've ever faced. So go on then, George, what was your first car? A Mark II Fiesta 1.3 gear, and it was done up as an XR2i. Purple with blue windows. <laughs> oh, my God. What was yours? I had a Mark II Fortina 1600E. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you, what do you reckon? Should we have mine or your car? I think there'll be more of a market for the Cortina. You know, they've got there's so much nostalgia to them. Yeah, I'm going to look forward to this. And here she is, Sheldon's first love and his girlfriend. It's the summer of 1985, and Sheldon's Mark II Cortina sparkles in the Stanmore sun. As does the young lady, I hasten to add. <laughs> Taking its name from an Italian ski resort, the Ford Cortina was designed to rival the popular Morris 1100. But Sheldon isn't the only Cortina lover out there. By the summer of 1966, one million Mark I Cortinas had rolled off the Ford production line. In 1963, Ford beefed it up with a larger engine, Weber carburetor, and Cosworth-designed camshaft to create the GT version, turning a fun and affordable family favorite into a fast and affordable getaway car. The Cortina was Ford Dagenham at its best. Stylish fun that didn't hurt the pocket, and enduring popularity should mean a decent market for parts, providing those parts are in good nick. Over in the Nichols office, Sheldon is mixing business with pleasure. I'm looking for a Mark II 1600E. Really? It was my first car too. Yeah. Hi, I'm ringing about the Cortina. Have you still got her? So we can have a deal, can we? Sheldon and George make tracks to a classic car garage in Bedfordshire. The man looking to put the squeeze on the boys is Gavin Arnold. I'm a salesman at RS Cars. We buy, sell and restore cars. Oh, look at these. 
This is what I love about the motor tray, George. <laughs> so is that what we're here to look at? My, my, my. Is that actually your first car? What have they done to that? We've got a Mark II Cortina 1600E. Um, I'd ideally like about £1,000 for it. I don't know whether to laugh, cry or roll over and die. I felt a little bit disappointed, really, because I remember how mine used to look, and this looked nothing like it. She's actually quite solid. She ain't got a lot of filler in her. <laughs> it's all fallen out. George, she's over 40 years old. Nice bit of moss growing on the boot. Do you know what? I can see a couple of light lenses in there and some other bits and pieces. Why don't you open the boot? Don't come with any keys, does she? That's something we need to sort out when we get to the workshop, George. But slowly looking round it, touching it, opening the door, smelling it, it just all come flooding back to me. Oh, that's good news. Look, we've got a bumper there. So is there a bit of money in there or not? Yeah, it's looking better by the minute, man. Oh, look, we've got a front bumper as well. So we've got front and rear. Oh, wow, look at that. Old four branch manifold, twin choke Weber, flipping it. I'm actually quite confident about this. Sheldon does know his classic cars, so I'm pretty sure we're going to sell quite a few bits. George, have you any idea how much these are worth? You cannot get these anymore, and people who've got them, they're old and onto them a dear life, trust me. As Cortina love blooms for George and Sheldon, over in Frankie's porter cabin, a disturbing lesson in romance from Ben. What was your first motor then? A Renault Clio. Renault Clio? Renault Clio. What you had to do to attract a bird, a bit of skirt, you had to put 17 inches on there. 17 inches of what? Wheel. Oh, wheel. A alloy wheel, yeah. Come on, what were your car then? Well, it weren't class as a lady puller, you know what I mean? You know, like, come here, darling, jump in me uh, Austin 1100. <laughs> That's what it was. Oh, you beauty. That's not Frankie, but that is his Austin 1100 in the background. Believe it or not, that is Frankie at the wheel of said Austin in 1977. Times are cruel, mistress. So, what we're going to go for? There's my chaved up Cleo, or your Women's Institute middle aged Austin. Well, it's a no brainer, isn't it? The Austin 1100 and 1300 were the best-selling British cars from 1963 to 1966. And again from 1968 to 71, when they were knocked off their pedestal by Sheldon's Cortina. This well-loved family saloon first hit the roads with a venerable 48 brake horsepower 1100cc engine. But the later 1300 model put one over on its brother by giving us a bucket load of extra clout with its 1275cc A-series engine. A bestseller in its time, this little Austin is now quite a collector's item. And if the boys can get their hands on the Meteor 1300, there should be plenty of punters willing to open their wallets. Frankie has decided to start his Austin hunt close to home. In fact, he's not even leaving the breakers yard where our teams are based. All right, Tim, how are you, son? I'm after an Austin 1300. Yep, no problem, mate. And I can't find one. Okay, I'll give Dennis a call, mate. Dan, it's for you, mate. Who's Dennis? It's me. Who's the man? Hello, mate. The man who might be able to help is head of online sales, Dennis. Well, we're a breakers yard. Um, we're one of the largest around London. Uh, we take cars in that have got a COD on, certificate of destruction. We put them into depollution take the tyres off, uh, batteries, drain the oils, uh, and then they're put up on the shelves for you know people to come around and salvage bits and pieces for their own motors. And among the hundreds of cars Dennis has been dealing with is an abandoned Austin left to rot in a nearby barn. The vehicle had been dumped. We were to pick it up, got COD on it, certificate of destruction, so its life was basically to be crushed. I mean, if he can do something with it, some parts go to good homes. Ideally, I mean, for that sort of motor, I mean, seven, seven fifty, you know, squeeze a little bit, but not much. The Austin is due to be transported back to the yard, but Dennis has agreed to let the boys have a sneak preview at the barn. Oh, look at this! What a little beauty! So this was your first car? It was my first car, and I had more than one. I had many a time in this motor. Yeah, the old Austin. I'll tell you what, I love them, and I know what Ben wants to do. He wants to get that in get it broke down, get it stripped. No memories, no attachment, no art strings, nothing. He just wants to break it. You can't crush memories. Oh, the mighty A-Series 1275. 
Frankie has surprised me for once. That Austin is a charming little car. It's very nice. And it's got the mighty A-Series engine. It's a great little unit, and it's been used in all sorts of British cars. Nowadays, it's most popular in the old original Mini. This is a little gold mine. We've got those original Lucas lights. We've got everything. We've got these stereos, just kitsch value there. All the ignition parts, the little dynamo. There's just millions and millions of quality bits on this car. But I'll take it apart gently. Kid glove. And if there's some sort of breaking or cutting you've got to do, I'd rather no. not be there. You know what I mean? I w no, I won't. It'll just, you know, gently, gently. Just be gentle. Don't go mad on that. Back in Bedfordshire, Sheldon is settling for a Cortina that's a mere shell of its former self. Gavin, I've had a look at that Cortina. Oh, it's grand. It's not worth a thousand pounds of my money. I'll drop it a bit. OK. You make me an offer. I see the car around about three, four hundred pounds. Whoa. He said, make you an offer. Yeah, I said, an offer. If you can go up a bit. I'll give you £500 for it. What, all of it? Yeah. You can go a bit more than that. Come on. I'll give you 600 quid for it. 650. <sighs> I tell you what, take into account my petrol money, my time, your time, 620, and let's just do it. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah? All right, oh, all right lovely. 600, and I'll just give you the 20. So, George and Sheldon go home 620 quid lighter. But are the proud owners of a multicoloured Cortina with a bonnet that could double as a chessboard. Meanwhile, over at the barn, Frankie is brewing a cunning plan. I've got a secret weapon for Dennis, and he's going to be very surprised. A nice cup of tea. All right, Dennis. Oh, Frankie. Thanks for coming down, son. Oh, it's a lovely cup of tea, isn't it? It's a nice motor. So, look, it's a nice motor. If I said to you... Yeah? Three and a half hundred quid for that, what would you say? <laughs> I'm walking. I've offered you three and a half hundred quid and you point blankly refused. And that ain't right. So I'm going to offer you another deal, Dennis. And I'm going to hit you straight between the eyes. And I'll fancy four and a quarter. Four and a quarter? No. No. Five hundred. No less, mate. 500. You got yourself a deal, son. Thanks, Frankie. That's one Austin 1300 rescued from certain doom for a rather reasonable 500 quid. Onwards? Backwards. Backwards. Challenge to max out profit by breaking an example of a team member's first car our dedicated scrappers have returned to base with their donor vehicles. They now have just three days to strip the most valuable parts that they must then sell for top dollar. Any unsold leftovers will be mashed to a pulp in the crusher and then weighed in for scrap. The team who rake in the biggest profit will win. Before the teams get out their tools, it's time for a peek at the opposition's motor. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Whose motor is this then? Oh, oh, don't tell me. Got it in one, boys. <laughs> I'm loving the multicolored effect. What is it? The Technicolor Dream Car? <laughs> yeah. Which one's Joseph's and which one's Mary? It's a lovely little motor, this. Was this seriously your first car? Not this particular one, Ben, but I did have one. But it was in lovely champagne gold, oh, chrome Ross styles, yeah. oh, lovely right. wooden cabin oh, doors, oh, four o'clock dash. Oh, oh, yes, my oh. man. And it also had four branch manifolds. Oh, I'm over the Basto moon. sunroof. Oh, oh, I can't get over it. The Mark II full Cortina. What a load of old. Oh, hold up. Don't spoil his fun. Who's is this then? How's that happened? Is that mine, George? Were you ever a district nurse? I was in my sort of part-time life, yeah. Collapsible front wing. Oh, this is class. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking this. Are you? No. So, Ben and Frankie have parted with 500 notes for this Austin 1300. A motor with a reputation as beige as its bodywork. It's not the most exciting thing on four wheels, but with a near pristine outer shell and interior, complementing an engine that'll fit in a host of other vehicles, this could be a nice little earner. Upping the ante to 620 quid, Sheldon and George have secured themselves this rather faded Ford Cortina. The team are hoping there's more to this book than its cover, especially with a cover as patchy as this. In fact, it could prove to be a bestseller. The boys should have no trouble finding a home for the solid body panels and leather interiors. 
Add to that an iconic Ford 1600 crossflow engine and things could be looking really good. The teams now have just three days to strip the cars of their valuable parts. George and Sheldon are starting the day with a spot of breaking and entering. When was the last time you bought a car without keys then, Shell? I think this is the first one, George. It's just such a pain. George managed to find a selection of old keys that he tried to open our car with. Now, what you've got to bear in mind, back in the 60s, especially Cortinas, they weren't really known for their security. There you go. Oh, you've Bingo. Done it. Touch. Once we opened the boot, oh, it made my day. Look at this shell. All the original dials. Look at that, it's like brand oh, new. Oh, beautiful. It was like a little gold mine in there. Found a box of bits with the headlights, with the grills, uh, found a little bit more wood for the car. It was so all good. They are gorgeous. Immaculate. Imagine these in that lovely walnut dash. Look at that shell. Original badge. There's another bumper. There's another one there. They're near enough new, then, wiper arms. That's lovely. That's, that's good that's chrome so on old, that as well. Isn't they? Look at that. Oh, look at that, Shell. Oh, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And the headlight bevels, look. Oh, oh, lovely. I feel love. Across the yard, deal merchant Frankie is never one to let the truth get in the way of a transaction. So what you're saying, if it's a runner, then that'll make the difference, will it? Yeah? Well, as it happens, it is a runner. Nothing wrong with it. No. Well, I'm looking for a carpet. 300 nicker. So the good news is, straight off the bat, I've got to buy for the engine. 300 nicker, a carpet. I mean, you can't turn your nose up at that. There is a little bit of a problem because I actually sort of said that it was a going concern, and at the moment, no one's tested it, so I ain't been sort of strictly, sort of what you call kosher about it. For Ben and Frankie, mission one is to get that motor purring. Because the Austin's biggest asset should be its iconic 1275 A series engine. Other prime selling points are the near immaculate bodywork and oodles of chrome features. Right, the battery's on, Frankie, so if it's going to do it... Hold on, Ben, I'm having a bit... I mean, I'm in. Bit I'm of a in. squeeze. How much did you wear when you ordered one of these? I was 11 stone. Bloody hell. Yeah, I've doubled that. So, in order to uh, test that this engine was a going concern, we wanted to get it turned over. It didn't need a fire. Nothing? Not a sausage. Right. I think on my feet. And I thought, like, it's only the battery. It can only be the battery. I mean, what else can it be? It can't be nothing more than a battery, can it? Uh, right. Well, we've got 12 volts on the battery, so that's OK. I'm getting a little bit concerned, Ben, that we're getting no action. No, there is no action. The battery's fine, Frankie, so it is something else. I'm going to check the starter motor. You might as well get out of there unless you're feeling comfortable. Yeah, if it, even if it is a starter motor, I can go and get a second air motor for 40 quid, so it ain't like it's the end of the world. And, I mean, um... You know, if that is the case, then we're still in the game. You know, there's nothing to worry about so much. But, you know, there's always a little bit of a concern. Meanwhile, George and Sheldon are beginning to resemble two kids in a very oily sweet shop. So, Shell, what's your favourite bit? Honestly, this little bit here, mate. Number plate light out of the boot. That's classic, isn't it? Yeah. I had a bird hit me up the back in mine and broke it, and I had to have one out of an Escort Mark II gear, which was black in my chrome bumper, and I was gutted, and I couldn't get one of these anywhere. So, 20 years later, I found it. I've seen these going on the internet, new old stock, for about 60 quid, George. Really? Yeah. And this is original. You ever seen that logo there before? FOMOCO? No. No? This you know, is old stuff to me, Shell. FOMOCO, Ford Motor Company. Really? Yeah. A nice bit of Dagenham memorabilia. But ultimately, it's stock, and a punter has arrived on site. Ford enthusiast Gabby Keane is the man with an eye for Sheldon's hidden parts. Hey, my name's Gabby. I've come down today to uh, see Sheldon about some Ford parts, some bumpers, lights, a dash, clocks, and what have you. He wants about 300 quid for them. There's quite a lot of bits there. I'm hoping to get them a lot cheaper, and we'll start off low. I'm a Ford enthusiast myself, so hopefully he'll take a little bit of pity on me. Sheldon's so sure of striking a deal that he's already loaded the parts into Gabby's van. Well, Gab, that's all the bits and pieces. I'll need 300 quid back for it, and I think that's pretty reasonable. I wouldn't pay free for it. I would about 200 quid, really, because uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff needs a bit of tidying up and cleaning and polishing. You know, and I do. You know, you go to Ford Fair, people will be charging twice that money for them bits and pieces. That wood's probably worth a one on its own. Two and a half? I really need three, Gab. Yeah, I really do. Uh, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Cool with that? that. No problem, cool, man. Nice one. That's one job lot of Cortina bits wrapped up for a sweet 300 notes. George and Sheldon are first to cash in. 300 there, mate. Nice one. Lovely. Yeah, done the deal with Sheldon. He knew what he had. He knows his Fords as well, so we both knew what they were worth. Saves me a lot of hunting around for parts here, there and everywhere, so I'm a happy man. Going home happy. Back in Ben and Frankie's workshop, the Austin engine is swiftly turning from a going concern into a major concern. So the next stage in the process was to eliminate all the other wiring in the car. So what I did is got the battery straight onto the starter motor. Oh! Oh! They don't know why, do they? It? It's not right, Frankie, no, it's not right. How's it going, Ben? Well, I've put 12 volts straight into the motor and it should spin and it's not spinning. So, it's shorted out. What's it's that fit there? for the bin. Oh. Take it away. Oh, dear. The electricity is not flowing round the correct path it should do to turn the motor. It can happen. It's an old car. We might have got crud in there. The wiring might have melted. Um, it's not unusual for a car of this age. With a punter lined up for a fully working engine, the heat's on Ben to turn fiction into reality. So the starter motor didn't work, and that's not a massive problem. You can usually turn the engine over by hand and nut onto the pulley at the front and turn it over. There was no space there, so you get a screwdriver to lever on the ring gear. Now, that's the little teeth that the starter motor usually engages with. Now, I couldn't move that at all. It was absolutely seized solid. There's plenty of leverage there, so if it was going to go, it was going to go. And we took the spark plugs out, so there was no compression. I wasn't trying, trying to compress air while doing it, so it should have been really easy, really smooth, but it wasn't. It was sea solid. When you've exhausted all other options, there's always nudging. It's the same technique Frankie uses for getting coins from vending machines. So we put it in gear. All the planets were in alignment, so we got drive from the wheels, through the gearbox, to the flywheel, to the crank. And then shuttle it backwards and forwards using Frankie's considerable mass. If it was going to go, it, it would have moved the crank, but it didn't. So it was obviously badly seized. No, stop, stop. You're going to tear the engine off the mountains, mate. Stop. I can see power notes sort of disappearing, falling away from my very hands as I spoke. It was going bad. As dark clouds gather over Ben and Frankie, the sun continues to shine on George and Sheldon. The boys are getting to grips with the bodywork. Sales from the Cortina's bodywork could really add to the haul because under that two-tone paintwork is solid metal. But when a potential customer shows up, he's interested in leather, not steel. Meet Cortina connoisseur, Michael. My name is Michael, and I've come to buy a couple of seats and some door cards for my first car that I ever owned. It's the Mark I Cortina, and I'm looking to pay anything under 100 quid. That'd be fine. Well, this is the interior, Michael. What do you think? Mm, not bad. 60 quid? I was thinking double that. Too much wet. Bit of soapy water. Bit of soapy water on a sponge, and you'd be amazed that had come up. 80 quid? I'll meet you halfway. Call it 100 pounds. 95. You know what, Michael? I won't lose a deal over a fiver. All right? Great one, Michael. That's a good, firm, solid handshake. <laughs> I like that. That's the seat shifted and 95 notes in the bank. 95, that's reasonable. It was okay, good deal. It's nice to know that those Mark II parts are gonna go into a Mark I. So yeah, I've, um, I feel really good about that. In Ben and Frankie's workshop, a small glimpse of light at the end of a very dark tunnel. Frankie, yeah. this is very clean under it. If this engine had been neglected, that would be covered in sort of slimy, gungy tar from the oil. The fella who has owned this, he's probably changed the oil every couple of thousand miles. That is a good sign. How do we develop it going forward? <sighs> right. Can you pass me the endoscope, please, sir? Is that in things you look down at? You look in places. The next level was the endoscope. We had to look inside the bars of the engine to see what the condition was like. Those cylinders are caked in rust, and that is why this engine is seized. And that means... It's not a goer. It would need a rebuild. That's going to cost us a lot of money. How much did this fella say you were going to buy it for? It was a carpet, 300 nicker, 300. I had it. I mean, it was there. It was there. It was almost there. But it, 
I mean, is it gone? I mean, has it gone? No, no, it's fine. It's a robust little unit. It's made all of cast iron, so it's not, it's not a fragile little thing, but it does need a rebuild. It does need time and money spending on it. We've got a couple of days left. We ain't got the time and we ain't got the money because at 300 quid, we will not make a penny. I'm thinking about getting a new salesman. I'm going to ring the job centre, put an ad in. Maybe we can get someone with a few more people skills, perhaps. I don't know. If I was being completely truthful about things to Ben and to myself, uh, there is nothing on the horizon in the way of sales. So, as the first day draws to a close, George and Sheldon are off to a flying start. Whilst Ben and Frankie are stuck in the pit lane with a dead dog of an engine. It's day two out of three, and the stripping is underway. Our scrap kings have been challenged to profit from breaking an example of a team member's first car. How much did you wear when you owed one of these? I was 11 stone. Bloody hell. Yeah, I've doubled that. George and Sheldon forked out 620 quid for their Mark II Ford Cortina. The boys got off to a solid start, flogging 300 quid's worth of prime booty and the seats for 95 notes. Ben and Frankie spent 500 pounds and saved an Austin 1300 from the Crusher. But day one saw maximum effort and limited gains. Make that zero gains. The crux of their problem is the Austin's engine, which is seized solid. Seized or not, it needs to come out for Frankie to have a hope of salvaging something from the situation. But of course, he's not one to put the pressure on Ben. Ben, I've got to tell you, this is double vital to the operations, especially the sales department, i.e. You. Oh, they go in like a mini, didn't they? Is that right? It could go in all manner of motors, Frankie, if it were a runner. Putting the engine debacle aside for the time being, Frankie's business plan is now focused on shifting the potentially valuable Austin chrome work. I've got, like, loads of chrome, loads of chrome on that motor. Yeah, the dials, I've got all the dials. Yeah, the speedo, petrol, gauge, indicators. You know those lovely, really beautiful looking chrome hubcaps? They're really trumpy, they're really, they're really classy. With a van load of chrome and wood, Frankie's in transit. Get it? Yeah, he's phoned up, fancies some parts off for the Austin 1300. He does um, prop motors for TV and film and, you know, drama and all that game. The man who does prop cars and all that game is Andy Lawrence. Well, with myself and my father, we've got a private collection of classic police cars, uh, which we use for classic car shows. One of the things we've done is the Inspector Morse prequel set in the 1960s. The current project we're working on is our Austin 1300 Panda car. The parts I'm hoping to get is um, some chrome work today. The, the deal breaker for me is going to be the condition of the chrome work. Um, and obviously the most important thing is price. I'm hoping to sort of spend 100, 120 pounds for the whole lot. Cool, look at this. This is unbelievable, isn't it? Look. Andy, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, brother. How are you? Yeah, very well. How are you, right? Yeah, uh, I won't shake you. All right. Can you, uh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got them? Yeah, I've got them. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah. So, uh, what else you got back round you then, in Andy? Well, we've got a few bits here. This one, the Black Walsley. Here's 1950s Walsley. At the back there, we've got 1970s Transit Ambulance. It's a Triumph 25, which is an ex Met police car. Yeah. And in the middle there's a little Rover. Got a thing about emergency services or something, or what? I think so, yeah. The traffic these days sort of helps me get through a bit quicker and uh, get some pieces like that. I love the old classic motors, and I mean, we're talking about some old shows here. You know, Softly Softly, Z Cars, you name them, them motors have probably been part and parcel of that sort of environment. I've got a lot of time for that sort of stuff. It's, it's quite incredible when you see what he's got in here. Would you allow me to sort of have a little go in the motor? Yeah, we can do that. Do you want, do you want to drive? Yeah, it's funny yeah. you should say that, because yeah. it, it, uh, it is the first time I've been in the... Uh, the front of one of these. All oh, right, okay. There's nothing like a relaxing drive in the country, and this is nothing like a relaxing drive in the country. What's that for here? Look. No, you can't do that, Frank. Oh no, I like it. That's why we've got the cover. No, no, I feel, I feel like I'm in a bad episode of the chips. Yeah, I know you're reminiscing. No, I really, no, I really do. I love a reminisce. But it's all part of the plan. Anyway, look, let's get down to business, eh? Yeah, okay. Call me mad? I don't know. Two and a quarter says you can take that little lot away and be happy. No, I'm not that happy, to be honest. 
Sure, there's some bits there that'd be useful to me, but it's just too much money. It's too much money? Too much for me, yeah. 200 Nikka, I mean, I'll see that's being fair. Well, I'll tell you where I am, Frankie. I'll push up £100. No, I can't go to £100 then. And it's not only that, I'm looking at those switches and they're looking ever so inviting because I do love that siren. So if I said sort of 150 150 and I'll shake your hand and you keep the hands off. Good boy. A clutch of chrome sold for 150 quid. Frankie and Ben are clawing their way back into this one. Anyway, uh, where are we? Back at base, Sheldon knows there's still plenty of money left on and in the Cortina. There's so many bits on this old car that's going to keep so many Cortinas on the road, you know that. I knew it was a winner from the get-go, mate. Just like the 1275A series for Ben and Frankie, the iconic cross-flow engine could be George and Sheldon's biggest asset. But it's not worth a penny whilst it's still in the Cortina. To get to the nuts and bolts of this engine's popularity, you need a man who knows his nuts and bolts. Over the years, there's been many iconic engines. There's the Austin A series, the Rover V8, Vauxhall Red Top, and this is another one of them, the Ford 1600 Crossflow. And the reason it's called a Crossflow is because of the way the air enters and exits the engine. It goes in through the carburetor, mixes with the fuel, it's then fired and it exits out the exhaust, hence Crossflow. Early Cortinas had the pre-crossflow engine, which had the inlet and the exhaust manifolds on the same side. In 1967, the crossflow engine was introduced into the Mark II Cortina. This is a better design because you can get the air through the engine a lot faster, and the more air and fuel mixture you've got, the faster you can run the engine, the more power and speed you get out of it. The reason people used to love these engines so much is because they were so simple to work on. You didn't need a massive great big workshop with loads of expensive tools, you could do these in your back street garage. You can put bigger carbs on it, bigger valves, a racing cam, bore it out, even a lighter flywheel. There's so much you can do to this engine. And it's not long before word of the engine spreads throughout the Ford fancying community. So you want the dipstick, the sump? Oil pickup and the timing cover. It's got a start of 100 full stop. So don't even waste your time offering me less than that. Ultimately, Sheldon's generous punter coughs up an extra tenner for the assorted engine parts. George and Sheldon are inching towards profit. It's the final day of dismantling, and Frankie is learning that honesty is the best policy. What you're saying is that even though it don't work, you still fancy it. You'll still have a deal. Especially when it comes to seized engines, and you have no other options. Come down. Lovely. You've made my day. God bless you. Tell our mate. The man prepared to take on an A-series rebuild is young mechanic Matt. My name's Matt. I've come to buy an Austin engine to go in my classic Mini. I've got 100 quid, but I don't really want to spend all of it. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Matt. I'm going to let you tell me what you fancy paying for that little motor there, that engine. I'll give you about 50 quid for it. You need to up it. Up it, Matt. Up it. Entice me. Entice me. Romance me. <laughs> I'll give you about 60, 65. No, Matt. It's not 65, it's not 50. So therefore, we're going up and we're going in the right direction because now there's only one way, isn't there? It's that way. So what is it? Considering it's not running, it's not working, I'll give you 100 for it. 100 pound. Less than they'd hoped for, but those 100 notes mean Ben and Frankie are hanging in there. Take it away, Matt. Don't come back and say that it don't work because I've already told you. Across the yard, George is busy removing the Cortina's front suspension arms. No, I wouldn't let it go for that. And he's not just doing it for a laugh. Sheldon's got a buyer on the blower. If you want the front legs, mate, you can have them for 60 quid. That's a further 60 pounds in the wallet. 
Perhaps more importantly, it represents the last major stripping job before Sheldon hits the road. He's in Somerset, where it's a case of Shell sells a body shell near the seashore. Scott, when you're ready. Well, today I'm in Burnham on Sea, which is just south of Western Supermere. I've actually come down here today to drop off my Mark II Cortina shell. I've got my mate Scott to drop it off. Key coming. Key coming. Oh man, how can I get this off here? Look, I can't block in the road and there's no room or nothing. This is a nightmare, mate. Do you want me to walk you around, darling? Come on, grab on. We're going for a little walk. <laughs> Away you go. Give us a kiss. Mwah. So what are we going to do? Um, you do what you do, then. You do your best. Do you want me to stop the traffic again? This could go on a while. Let's meet the buyer. Hi, I'm Stuart. Um, I've got a sheet metal work company. My passion is restoring the Mark II Cortina. Sheldon's brought me a Mark II Cortina over today. Hopefully, we might get a bargain, 150, 200 quid. Let's see how we go. It's worth every penny of 250. It's worth more than that. 150. Come on. After speaking to you over the phone, yeah, you said to me you had a love for the Mark II. I do, I do. I've got a love for the Mark II as well. I could have quite easily have cut this up and sold bits and pieces on the internet. You said that you would store them, you refurb them. So show me some love. And give me 250, because that's what it deserves. I'll give you 200 quid for it. Sometimes I do actually roll over and say 225, meet you halfway. But on this, no, I'm sticking to my guns. It's got to be 250. Yeah. No, it ain't too bad, is it? I've seen a lot worse. Yeah, so have I. I've, I've seen an like... awful lot worse. The wings that. might go again. Those wings are solid. <laughs> I admire your strategy and your negotiation <laughs> skills and trying to get me down a few quid, but it. On this one, it ain't going to work. You're not going to go 225, then? No. Sorry. 250, because you know it's worth it. 250, mate. Come on. 250? 250. Top, mate. You've had me. <laughs> That's a Cortina shell that will live again, and a hard-fought £250 to cap a cracking dismantle. Back at base, time is ticking away, and Frankie is launching a last-ditch sales offensive. Put the word out there because it's all got to go, a lot of it. I've got it broke down now. Get the punters down here, give them my number and tell them they can take a little lot. He's contacting Austin fan clubs in the hope of drumming up a major deal. Tell you what else I've got. I've got those lovely sort of antique vinyl leather seats. They go in any sort of motor. You can put them in your front room. And it's one Austin fan to another Austin fan. Why don't we just do the right thing and get our heads together and try and sell some of this stuff? Invite your mates round. We could start a club. An Austin club. Oh, there is one. Well, we'll start a splinter group. And before long, he's back in the workshop to update Ben. But beware of the salesman bearing good news. Yeah, Ben. You won't believe this. I've got two different punters. Option one, both wings, 30 shots each. What's the second option? There's a lot of maybes for a start off. He wants possibly more panels, or possibly wants the old chassis, or possibly nothing. So Mr Indecisive might buy all of it, or he might buy nothing at all, but he can't make his mind up until he sees it. Yeah, but think of the benefits. I, well, hang on, hang on. When he does see it, he will see how remarkably sound most of this is. These subframes are original and they're solid. And they're probably 200 quid new for a pattern part. So I reckon option two, get him down, Flog him the lot. I'll let him know. I'll let him know that we're going to go with the option tomorrow. Your choice. Your, My choice, uh, uh, Your decision. I am going to use your uh, technique of spreading blame if it does go wrong. Yeah, well, you know, you've got to see how you feel about it. It will be awful. So do as you see fit. Yeah, I'll let him know. With ground to make up, Ben and Frankie need that gamble to pay off. The three days allotted for our breakers to dismantle an example of a team member's first car are drawing to a close. George and Sheldon have enjoyed a dream dismantle with their Mark II Cortina. Sales have been brisk, and having flogged the body shell, the chaps can put their feet up. Since the dismantle started, Frankie and Ben have been playing catch-up with their Austin 1300. Some inspired deal-making from Frankie has kept them in the game. What's that for there, look? 
But having turned down a sale of the wings in the hope of a bulk deal materializing, it's squeaky bum time. Frankie will therefore be relieved to see his non-committal contact turn up on site. My name is Sid. My business is servicing and repairing Porsches. Well, my hobby is uh, 1100s. I've come down today to see if there's any parts on Frankie's car. Nice to meet you, Frankie. Lovely to meet you, lovely to meet you. And this, look at this, I mean, this has made my day. However, if you like to turn that way, Sid, we've got a shell, got all the boot, we've got the bonnet, got all the front wings, you've got the steering wheel, you have got the lock. I don't know, look, I'm just going to put it out there. Four and a quarter, four and a quarter, with a little job lot. Take the lot, put it on a low loader, put it on a crane, put it on a ship, put it on a train, and get it out. Take it, part up with the money, and away you go. Four and a quarter is a lot for a, for a shell. Am I getting a feeling here that you are not interested at four and a quarter? Well, I never paid a full asking price for anything. You never paid no, a full asking price. Never. You never do pay the full asking price. Listen. Yeah. If I said to you, three and a half hundred nicker, right? to you, you can take that away now. Well, I think I've got enough bits I can put it back on the road. All right then, Sid, now listen. Yeah. I can smell the money, I'm like that, I've got yeah. nostrils for it. Look, look, yeah. <laughs> I can smell it. I'm gonna relieve you of a carpet. That's 300 nicker between me and you. And I'd like to see the goods. Can I see the paper? 300 notes in the dying seconds ensures that Ben and Frankie stay in contention. Will the weigh-in of unsold parts be the difference between winning and losing? Well, probably not, as neither team has much to weigh in. It's going to be a quiet day for Joe, who operates the claw and crusher. Still, it'll give him a chance to catch up on some reading and make himself dizzy. All right, let's get on with it. George and Sheldon's box of unsold toot weighs in at 41 kilos. With scrap going at 140 pounds a tonne, that equates to a whopping six pounds towards profit. Ben and Frankie's leftover weighs in at one kilo, most of which was the box. That's a potentially game-changing 14 pence. Will that tip the balance in their favor? It's time to find out. You're not telling me that's all you got left. I'm afraid so, George. No one smokes anymore. Yeah. Well, anyway, he's up on the insults, Georgie boy. What's the damage then, chisel chops? The damage? Yeah. Let's talk financials. We paid 6.20 for our beautiful example of a Mark II Cortina. Total sales, 1,193. Gives us a total profit of 573 pounds. Sheldon's trip down memory lane proved to be a lucrative one. A bundle of guff in the boot provided the kickstart. Seats, engine parts, Front legs and body shell helped Sheldon build on that early success. Whilst internet sales accounted for a further 316 pounds. How did you do? We'd never done too bad, as it happens. We parted up with a monkey for that little motor. Total sales, 638 nicker. What? Giving us a total profit of 100 and 38 <laughs> Nicarinos. Seriously, what, what went wrong? That makes us the winners. We got first. Yeah, but you will get this. Were you? Yes. With a car as simple as the Austin, a non-running engine is always going to handicap the sales team. Frankie did well to shift it for a ton. 100 pound. And the trip to sell chrome to a film prop vehicle specialist was an inspired move as was the last ditch sale of the shell. Can I see the paper? Internet sales accounted for another 58 notes, but it just wasn't enough. Sheldon's first car wins this one. I have absolutely no idea how we managed to do so badly with that. Actually, yeah, I do. That Austin, I mean, uh, I did fall in love. I was in love, but uh, how do I feel now? Wow, I mean, I didn't think it'd be that easy. We spanked them. Four Cortinas, driven by winners, didn't they? Since the making of this show, all the parts strips have played a role in a host of restoration projects. Sid is hatching plans to get the Austin body shell rolling again. Gabby's been busy upraising his Cortina with Sheldon's hidden booty. Oh, 
Oh, you cheeky minx. And Matt's had a great time rebuilding the A-Series engine for his tastefully decorated... One man's trash is another man's treasure. Out to prove that point, our two teams of cash-hungry car breakers competing to make maximum profit from breaking end-of-life motors. One and a half. 220. Four hundred pounds. Watch out for international negotiations. Este el coche es mucho dinero. Precision engineering. Well, something happened there. And stomach-churning off-road skills. And salt. Buckle up. This challenge the teams will be competing to make top profit from breaking French cars when it comes to motors our Gallic cousins are all about character flair and joie de vivre and they've produced some true icons with loyal fans which could mean a gold mine in part sales buying the French motors is merely the hors d'oeuvre as the boys will then have just three days to strip them in this licensed breakers yard before selling the choicest cuts for as much dough as possible the team with the most profit wins. <laughs> Stepping up to take on this challenge are two teams of scrapping royalty. First in line, Ben and Frankie. In charge of the breaking is Yorkshire's finest stripper, Ben Shiamansky. When you're stripping a car, you make one wrong move, that's it, money down the drain. Heading up the sales department is East End dealmonger Frankie Otway. Some people get all teary-eyed when they see a motor coming apart. I don't. I see power note sights. Squaring up from across the yard are George and Sheldon. Motor mad George Percy is hard as nails and boss of the engine room. There's no such thing as a royal. Every inch of a car's worth something. Leaving one man dealership Sheldon Nichols as negotiator in chief. They say in business, you gotta know how to walk the walk and talk the talk. Well, words are my deadliest weapon. So bring it on. Mission one for the teams is to decide which car to go for. And Ben fancies something sexy. The most beautiful French motor ever made was the Citroen DS. In fact, it was voted the most beautiful car in the world and groundbreaking at the time. Was it groundbreaking? Oh, the other hydraulic suspension and everything, and the, the design was far ahead of its time, thank you. But, you know, they're trumpy. Yeah, but Ben, you say that. It's the people with expensive motors. Got to spend a few quid, ain't they? In 1955, the French had another revolution, this time in motoring. The Citroen DS was the result of 18 years of top secret design. A cutting edge aerodynamic body stuffed with as much groundbreaking tech as they could muster, including hydraulic power steering, self leveling suspension, and headlamps that swivel with the wheels. Clever. With the brains of a rocket scientist and the looks of a supermodel, the DS was a smash hit, taking 12,000 orders on release day alone. These days, the Citroen DS is regarded as an icon, and the enthusiasts should be fighting for parts. But for Frankie, the British DS market is looking a bit pricey. You have got one. That price. Hello, Tel. How are you, mate? I'm after a Citroen DS. Well, I've looked everywhere. I don't know. You know, it's been a you know been a bit of a wild goose chase. What, France? Well, how much cheaper? And so, the search for a cut price DS takes Ben and Frankie across the channel to Fontenay Trezini in northern France. Waiting to cut a deal over the DS is the aptly named Frank family. So, we've come all the way to France to buy a Citroen DS. Now, as soon as we pull up to the house, there's a key indicator that the car has not moved for quite some time. It's fenced in. I do quite like it, though, mate, I've got to tell you. It does look a bit low. Low? Ah, well, frankly, it's a hydraulic system, and what you've got is three positions. You've got driving along, driving along with a boot full of cheese, and parked like this. 
Now, the Citroen DS is a beautiful looking car, but um, when we were looking around this particular example, straight away it hit me. It's a little bit rough. French racing brown, this is. Yeah, well, there's a lot of colours on it, but I mean, it don't really matter, does it? I mean, what really matters, Ben, is the... It's nice, isn't it? And Frankie, he's got the five-speed gearbox. The five-speed get more money than the four-speed. That's right, it's an upgrade. Yeah, I'm excited about this, Ben. <sighs> it is a beautiful looking motor, though. And all this chrome, I mean, it's all trampy, that's money. Oh, look at that. Look at it, it's like, like an helicopter. Well, like engines of an helicopter. You see that there? Yeah. Not a jet turbine. Yeah, I know. What it is, is a 2.1. It's the bigger engine out of these. These are the spheres for the hydraulics, but if we can get this engine started, we could test them, but I have spied no battery. I hope when we get it back to the workshop, we can get that started. And if we get the engine started, then all the hydraulics should spring into life. Will they? We don't know. Yeah, it's a bit of a risk buying this motor without an engine working, and, um, you know, we're taking a big gamble with it. I suppose what I've got to do now, I've got to put my best foot forward, Ben, and... Uh, have the geezer over. Yeah, how fluent are you in French? I don't, I speak Spanish, though. And how's that going to work? Meanwhile, back at base, Sheldon has his heart set on a little classic. A Citroen 2CV. A hit Citroen 2CV? Hear me, me out. They've got a real unique suspension setup <laughs> that is quite sought after. Yeah, I like the way you're thinking. It's going to be more rewarding than a Renault 5 GT Turbo or a Peugeot 205. You, if you want it, go for it. Yeah? Citroen's quirky little 2CV was released in 1949. The brief had been to build the ultimate people's car. Highly efficient fuel economy paired with the essential ability to drive a basket of eggs safely across an unplowed field. With its frugal two-cylinder engine and ultra-soft suspension, the 2CV had cracked it. That's the brief, not the eggs. The press may have scoffed at first, but the 2CV soon won hearts, racking up a three-year waiting list within months of its release. In 1967 came the Diane, essentially the same car in more conventional clothing. It was a cash-in on the 2CV's fan base. And with that fan base still going strong, the boys could be onto a winner. But Sheldon's finding a little classic could cost a lot. That's the price you're asking for it. No, I thought, there were, I thought there was an error on the ad, actually. The web is a wonderful search tool, but you just can't beat a friendly tip-off. Keith, remember that fella that you introduced me to? He had loads of old Citroens. He's got 30 of them down there. What about the address? So, the promise of a collection of French classics has lured our boys to a trading estate in Berkshire. And Richard Rouse is the man in charge. I'm a landowner and I rent out to uh, different uh, workshops and storage areas. This uh, car was part of 30 cars. I was owed money, yeah, rent arrears. So I took the French cars in lieu of rent. It's a Citroen Diane. It's in pretty poor condition. To repair it would outweigh the value of the cost of the vehicle. The ideal price I would like would be about 700 pounds. The only puddle in the place and you park in it. Is this it then? Well, I can't see any more. So we've drove in to see these loads of old Citroens, and there's one. What happened to the other 29 of them? Well, I'll tell you what happened to him. He reckons he scrapped them, but he left the best for me. How nice. This is the 2CV we're here to look at then. Actually, George, um, it's not a 2CV, it's actually a Diane. Um, all these parts will go into a 2CV. Suspension, gearbox, engine. All the rear quarters rippled. This door smashed right in. You've got to bear in mind, this car's 32 years old. Is that it? Wow. Do you know what? How wrong does this sound? That is a flat two. It's that big. I know. Have you ever driven one of these? No, well, thankfully. Well, I'll take you for a little spin in it. I bet it's more comfortable than your car. Citroen have always been known for their great suspension, and this car is no different. It just smooths out an uneven road. It's not a modern-day car. It's not got all the gadgetry, but it's just very simple. And do you know what? It's still going. Oh, we got the top down. This is an old bone rattler. <laughs> I'm being chucked around everywhere. He's telling me it's the softest ride ever. Yeah, 32 years ago. 
George has got no brakes. Oh, my God, no bloody brakes, George. If that was me dealing for that motor, I think it's about 200 pounds, to be honest. Even if you weighed it in, it doesn't weigh that much. Over in France, Ben and Frankie have brought the DS deal to the table. And the seller has bought a small dog. <laughs> do, do, have we established how much he wants for the car? Frankie speaks the lingo. Quantos dinero por el coche? Quantos? <laughs> Although that lingo is Spanish. It's also gone. Swasson oh. Sacon, uh, he wants uh, 750 euros. 750 euros. Well, 750. How much is that in the. In, in Spondoli? 750. Uh, 635 pounds and 59 and, and, and a third. He wants 7,500 quid for that motor. No, he wants 635. <sighs> este coche is mucho dinero. I think he says he doesn't understand. No, he does understand. He's just using a little tactic. I know what these French are like. I know their game. <laughs> Keep on that dog. Gonna, Look at the teeth on it. Look Sorry. at the teeth on this one. This one's giving me evils. Ah. Una. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Más. 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 Five. What? Four fifty. Yeah. Donc, uh, 750 Why don't they understand me? What I'm trying to say here. Right, because we're in France and you're speaking Spanish. What's with the dogs in the car? Right. There's four dogs. Oh my, he's, he's in my gentleman's area, Frank. Yeah, I don't know what's. Marseille. Oui. Uh, Marseille. Donc, encore un comme ça. Et après, c'est bon. Après, c'est bon. Après, c'est bon. That means that's Encore very that's very ça. good. Après c'est very good. I mean five hundred and eight quid. Okay. You have had it off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've had a lovely day out and we've had a blinding day. Can we shake on this? Merci. Gracias. 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 Thank you. Uh, merci. Gracias. Et voilà. One trend-setting French icon riddled with rust and freed from a life behind bars for £508, plus a £52 charge for removing said bars. It may no longer be roadworthy, but this DS could help get others back up and running. I've got a sneaky suspicion. I've been tucked right up. It's probably a result, but I'm not too sure. Back in Blighty, Sheldon's cutting a deal for the Diane. I suppose it all comes down to money, doesn't it? What's she worth to you? What do you want back for her? I was looking for about £700. I, I don't see her nowhere near that. I see her about half of that, about 350 I can't go for 350 I can't up to 400 quid. 600 I'll meet you halfway. Call it £500. Deal. Yeah? Top man. She may be the last left on the shelf or in this case, Muddy Yard. But this dirty Diane has now been snapped up by Sheldon for 500 quid. She's a financial write-off, but her parts could bring other Dianes back to life. With their French scrappers safely back at the yard, the teams now have just three days to strip them down and flog off the best bits. Anything that doesn't sell will be thrown to the crusher and weighed in for scrap. Before the breaking begins, it's time for the teams to eye up each other's French fancy. Citroën DS. Very nice. If it weren't 2,000 years old. That pray what la deluge. That's a classic mush. When was it last on the road, anyway? Well, funny you should say that. 1990. And been well looked after to boot. 1990? So it's a runner, yeah? Well, no, it isn't, George, actually. But it is packed with hundreds of collectible parts, dueling the crown bean. The hydro pneumatic suspension. Is that the same suspension that won't work unless the engine's running? <laughs> yeah. I hope you boys didn't travel too far to get this. Well, no. Mm, no. No, no, we didn't. No. Anyway, anyway, forget that. Let's take a look at this. You decided to get the magnificent two C. Oh no, you didn't, did you? No. You no. you got the two CVs inbred half brother, Diane. Well, actually, Ben, this has got all the best bits of the two CV and a few little bits extra. Oh, yeah. Well. Who are you trying to convince us or you two, you couple of little snowflakes? I tell you what, the Traffic Cone Preservation Society's got a bigger following than these have. Do you know what, Ben? Granted, the 2CV is a great car and it's very much in demand. <laughs> but you know what? These parts, they're going to fly off the shop as well, you know. Do I believe you? None. That's the Luego, chicas. 
What's he saying? That means goodbye, girls. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. George and Sheldon forked out 500 quid on this Citroen Diane. Although she's slightly less lovable than her sister, the 2CV, under the bonnet, she's much the same. And there's a loyal fan base to tap into. Ben and Frankie spent £560 on this Citroen DS. Its famed good looks may have crumbled with the years, but a motoring icon such as this should have plenty of punters queuing for parts. Whilst there's money in the aerodynamic body panels, the serious cash should lie in the pioneering tech, which includes engine and suspension. On day one of the dismantle, Frankie's doing a spot of market research. I'm trying to find out what the prices are, basically. You know, what sort of money we're talking about for, for the engine? That much. It's a lot of money, isn't it? When that geezer phoned me up and told me that engine was worth a grand, if it was going, I was over the moon. If we can get the engine going, then we can test the suspension, and that's like anywhere between three and 400 nicker. That's like 1,400 nicker. That's almost like trebling our money. Shall we see if it turns up? Well, move. Shall we see if the well, engine's free? We'll have to start, <laughs> won't we? So we needed to take a look at the DS engine to see if we could get it started. Now, none of the electrical systems work and the start motor didn't work. So the first thing to do was just to see if it was free and try and crank it over. <laughs> oh my God. And it's stuck. Do you know what, Frankie? What? This could be bad news. Why? Well, I can't, I can't move the engine over. What's that mean? Well, it means it seized, it won't turn. So what I did then was uh, just have a look at the oil, and it turned out I'd be more like custard than oil. Lots of water in there, lots of muck in there. And if there's a lot of water in there, there's a high chance that the engine bores have actually rusted. So there's no chance we're going to get this engine started. Um, maybe we can sell it for spare parts, who knows, but it's not a goer. And what's the price of a broken engine? You're joking. Hundred pound. <laughs> if the engine and gearbox is working on it, motor would be worth about a grand. It don't. And the geezer's just sort of told me that the, the best I can expect is about hundred nicker. Well, talk about bad days. A bust engine means untested suspension, which spells double disaster for Frankie's sales. But as for George, he's cruising. Dismantling is easy when your car is held together by pins and needles. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's like a big, big toy kit, all nuts and bolts. Which is just as well, because the Diane is packed with potential sellers. And those should be rolling chassis, engine and gearbox, as well as the body panels. Perhaps the most saleable panel is the bonnet. So that's off next. And then we had to take the front wings and all the lights off. When the 2CV was released, a journalist asked if it came with a can opener. But that was the idea. If a poor farmer couldn't fix it, then it wasn't the people's car it was built to be. And that's good news for George. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Citroen DS is giving up his body panels with even less of a fight than the Diane. It's a lot of work in taking them off, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a case of tug and lift. What? Do you see what I mean? It's hardly worth the effort. <laughs> Frankie's done his bit in the workshop. Cue the selling. Yes, I am breaking, I am breaking a Citroen DS. That's right, that is correct. Rust? No. Well, not if you look at it fast. Whilst the sails don't seem to be coming off easily, the bodywork is a different story. You take one bolt out and a wing comes off. You take two little screws, you were just two screws and the doors come off. It's so fantastically simple and I, I love it. I wish you'd bring me cars like this more often. So easy. Good, because Frankie's phone bashing might be about to pay off. Yeah, I've still got the Citroen, yeah, the DS, yeah. Oh, you specialise in them? Do you really? And you're interested in the roof? I am delighted. I've had a geezer fancies the roof off of that DS, and, I mean, it don't get much better. I mean, I've got to be honest, when I see it, I thought, I weren't sure that the roof came off. Here, listen. I've had a geezer on the phone. I think he fancies the roof off of this. 
Is he a DS fan? I think he is. I mean, you never know, Ben. We might be able to place a few more parts of the geezer. Hey, Frankie. Hold the nut. I'm hold the nut. The DS roof is 40-year-old fragile fiberglass. I'll get in, push it off. Do you think it's going to be easy? I don't know, Ben. Depends how big your feet are. So a softly, softly approach is essential. Although a boot from a Yorkshireman will do the job. Well, something happened there. Good boy, Ben. Good stuff, son. Buoyed by his success, Frankie is out to persuade his specialist to buy a few more parts. What, you want a bonnet off the DS? Well, you want... You, you fancy it. All right, lovely, lovely. Unbelievable the geezer's a DS specialist. I mean, and he's come to us. So I'm going to relieve him of a few, Bob. I wonder if he'll like it. You've not described it to him as absolutely mint again, have you? I mentioned it. It had a few blemishes. Well, that's pretty honest. I'm going to let it have it the right money. That's very honourable of you, but maybe you could sort of uh, tell him he's dropped something on the floor and nick his wallet when he's not looking. Frankie's date with the DS specialist is scheduled for the following day, which gives Ben time to strip more saleable parts. And it's just as well because Frankie's had an inquiry for a more imminent part sale. That includes C-pillars, bumper, and those easy-to-remove panels. Just how imminent? Well, here they are, classic car restorers Gavin and Dennis Downs. We're a restorers up in Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire. We're currently working on a Citroen DS project. So we're looking for the right bits. Don't really want to pay any more than... £300. Yeah, yeah, about £300 maximum. It depends on the condition, of course. Gavin and Dennis, what can I say? Lovely of you to come oh, down. Great, yeah. Wonderful. We have got chrome. We have got wings. We have got door panels. I don't know if it's because it's a sun or... I'm sort of... 400 quid is screaming out at me for 400 quid. Oh, oh no yeah. way, no way. They need a lot of work, Frankie. They need a lot of work. They're a bit rusty. They're, there's Everything. a bit rusty, and then there's uh, being able to drop things through the bottom of them. Would you like rust paper. on your car? Well, it ain't French. <laughs> so I haven't got no rust. Uh, if I said you sort of like, I don't know, like three and a half hundred nicker. Well, I wouldn't pay three and a half. You wouldn't? No. What have you got about your person? 330. 330. For the lot. You've got that in your pocket? Yeah. Yes, you've got a deal. Lovely, because it's funny you should say that, because that was my lowest end of the budget. <laughs> funny that, though, Gavin. That's isn't it? handy, isn't it? Lovely. Handy. Thanks very much, Scott. Right. Dennis. <laughs> yeah. No, lovely. Have you got the money? Here's yeah. the money, man. Yeah. OK, no, let me lovely. see. Come on. Better make sure I've actually only got 330. Yeah. yeah. No, it all looks good. It's looking good, Dennis. That's an assorted load of DS panels and parts for £330. Ben and Frankie are first to make a sale. That was a good price, actually, because yeah. I expected to pay a lot more for them bits. They're worth a lot more. Meanwhile, Sheldon proves that a good salesman can see value in anything. And I mean anything. Believe it or not, I am going to advertise these seat covers. I can see them going. I can see someone wanting them. Like, for a pair of curtains? Actually, I think my daughter might want them for her Wendy house. You are joking. If we, if we don't sell them, she can have them for her Wendy house. Do you want your daughter to hate you? But the ones underneath aren't much better, look. Right. Oh, got it. Do you reckon we can sell these? Yeah, mate. Definitely. They're, there's big followings for these little cars. <laughs> big followings. Well, I hope they've got big wallets. These, this car comes apart so easy. There's nothing fiddly or awkward about it. It's just a plain, simple, honest little car. That, in turn, gives us more time, because I don't have to help George so much doing what he has to do, which gives me more time to sell. You're looking for all the panels. What, the wings, the boot lid, the bonnet, the doors, and the tub. What's the tub? All oh, right, OK. Michelle. Oh, I just had a blinding phone call. You know what? It's not about putting all your chickens in one basket or your eggs or whatever you want to call it, but I might potentially have the capability of breaking even on the first sale of our first day. Sheldon's chance to break even is in the hands of his punter, Citroen connoisseur Ben Rothen. I'm looking for some body panels for a Citroen Diane to replace the ones I've got on my car at the moment. I'm looking to pay around two or three hundred pounds, depending on the condition of them, because actually they're quite hard to get hold of these days. Face your eyes and tell me what you think. 
be nice if there was some fabric on them suits. They have um, seen some action. <laughs> they have indeed. Quite a lot of action. So what bits are you actually interested in? All the panels, doors, bonnets, all the wings. Um, okay. I could use the seat bases, not the actual seats themselves, because they've seen better days. And I'll take the body tub as well, because I can use that for cuts for bits on mine. I mean, something like that, for argument's sake, what would that panel go for? Probably £75. Really? So... If, you know, if you cut it all down and it was rust-free. Taking that into account, Ben, it's got to be... It's got to be £400. Nah. How about 300? No. 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 So you wouldn't even have known the value of it, I'd not have just told you. No, I wouldn't. I shot myself in the foot. No, you didn't shoot yourself in the foot because you're an honest man. And I'm an honest guy, I'm not going to rip you off. And, you know, we both know that these things worth some money. 325? I was going to say 375. 375, and I've got something quite special that I think you'll like. Now, my daughter did want them for a Wendy house, but for a limited amount of money, when they're on there, trust me, I know you're not really seeing them in their full glory at the moment. Oh, but, trust me, I am. But when, when they're washed and just smelling a little bit better than what they smell at the moment... I'll tell you what, let's meet in the middle, 350, and you can keep the seats for the Wendy house. Do you, you just don't want them? No, no. No, thank you. This car's got enough personality on its own without that. All right, then. £350. It's nowhere near the cost-covering sale they were hoping for. And with half the car shifted, the boys will need to sell big on what's left. At the close of day one, both teams have made sales, but bulk deals mean cut-down prices. It's a risky strategy. It's day two out of three as the teams battle to make profit from breaking iconic French cars. Something happened there. George and Sheldon bought a financial write-off Citroen Diane for 500 notes. On day one, they flogged a job lot of parts for 350 pounds. Ben and Frankie parted up with 560 pounds for an end-of-life Citroen DS and notched up a first-day bulk sale for 330 pounds. Yesterday, Frankie also managed to line up a potential sale for the bonnet and roof. And he's arrived at a specialist in Hertfordshire to seal the deal. Ben's joined the trip to ogle some pristine DSs. I've had an idea. Go on. Why don't we sell this piece of junk and buy one of them? Look at it. Look at the possibilities. No. The man the boys are doing business with is Jamie Piggott. We specialise in restoring Citroen DSs and associated classic Citroens. And hopefully, Frankie's going to turn up with a decent bonnet, part of a roof rail, and the seat adjuster for a right-hand drive car. Having been unable to see the suspension in action on their decrepit DS, Ben takes the opportunity to road test a working version. I didn't care about part sales. I didn't care about whatever Frankie was thinking about. All I was thinking about, finding Jamie and saying, Jamie, let me have a go. Have you seen me driving before, Jamie? I'll be all right, won't we? Yeah, well, it's very good, was what I was going to say. There we go. Thank you very much, sir. Turn the key. Yeah. And then you start on the gear stick. So if I just push that over... Right into the D, that's it. Look at that. So how do I make it go up? Going up already. Oh, we are. Jamie, we're going up in the world. That's terrible, isn't it? I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Then and uh, away, you go. away we go. Straight into that. Straight into the pickup truck. Change the second, straight back. Knock it back there, and it just, oh my god, that's amazing. It's so smooth. What would you say it rides like? I'm not saying it. Well, go on, say I'm it. I'm not saying it. Jamie, just say it. What does it ride like? A magic you carpet. Eat them like a magic carpet. How cheesy is that? <laughs> it's bad, isn't it? So, the idea basically to drive one of these, you've got to be. Just need to be calm, relaxed. No, the car takes You mean you've got to be all French about it? It's, it's genius. It really it's is. Special. But this is, of course, a business trip and an opportunity for Ben to learn the striking of a deal from the master. Right, Jamie, the bonnet as discussed. As discussed? Yeah. I'll have to have a look at it, make well, sure it's going to be all right. It's a bit of a gamble, because I've got to get it all cleaned up. Let's see what else you've got. Well, while I was at it, I... 
I thought I'd bring another little job lot along. So, um, now, that, come on, Frankie, we've practiced this. It's a yeah. heater box. Heater box. And that one on the left is? It's a bit of an air filter. So, uh, Jamie, are you interested in those? No. no. You're not? No. The old, the old rear panels here. You what? brought me two rotten wings, and I can get these brand new. Oh, no. He don't want them. And that's not the worst of it. No. All right, Jamie. Well, what about the roof? The wrong bit of the roof. Well, what do you mean when you say wrong? What, what bit's wrong? We had a little chat about what was above the windscreen. A piece of metal goes above the windscreen between the roof. This is a nice big bit of fiberglass. And uh, what about the, uh, the seat bases? There's a few more bits to that. So that's only half of that. I mean, if we got you the other bits of the seat base, because we did take them off, would you be happy? Yes. What would you give me uh, for it then? You know, like the, the bonnet and the, uh, the little bits for the seats and that? Little bit of the uh, roof. A gamble. I'll tell you, 150 for the bonnet. 150. 20 quid for the rest. That's Wait. 170 nicker, Jamie. You have got a deal, Jamie, because it is embarrassing. It is a little. Yeah. I'm embarrassed for us. He packed almost everything wrong. We'd got the bonnet, which, yeah, it's a given. We've got one thing right, but we bought the wrong bit of the roof. We bought panels that Jamie didn't want. It's not really what I would class as me at my finest hour. Sort of Thanks ever so much, Jamie. That's 170 quid for bonnet, seat adjusters, some assorted extras, and, well, the least said about the roof, the better. I've just spent 170 pounds with the guys, primarily for the bonnet, which I think was going to clean up OK. The rest of the stuff they didn't bring up with them was a little bit disappointed, but uh, they're going to post them up to me, so they seem like trustworthy characters. Back at the yard, having removed the body shell for yesterday's sale, George can't resist the opportunity for a natter about the Diane's famous suspension. Now, one of the most noticeable things about this car is that the suspension is ridiculously soft. And this is because it's pretty much basically a 2CV, which was designed for French farmers to drive across ploughed fields in their clogs. And one of the design briefs when they built a 2CV was that it had to carry a basket of eggs across a field without breaking them. And another thing about this suspension is that it's independent left and right. So if you hit a bump on the left rear corner, the right one stays where it is. However, they are interconnected front and rear. So if you hit a bump on that front corner, it travels through this cylinder here where there's, there's springs in here and it adjusts the rear suspension, which is really clever, especially if you think these were built just after the Second World War. Tech talk done, there's a sailor foot. Although it's not the suspension, but the Diane steering rack that's attracted trike nut Joe. I've come to uh, buy a new rack for my trike. Hopefully um, it's going to be the right one and it's going to be a decent price. So I'll get to see Sheldon in a minute and see if it's any good. All right, so how you doing? All right, I'm Well, Sheldon. this is the said part. Looks right. Yeah. It's pretty good. If we can maybe just check. Is it lifting? Come forward with it. Excellent. Oh, wow. So some... What, that's a motor guzzy bike engine. Yeah, the motor guzzy 1000cc V-twin. All mounted into the original Diane chassis with the Diane gearbox. It looks aged. Well, I've not cleaned it since I took it out of the chicken coop. Thought Let's go and have a look to see where that rack was. It's down inside there. It does look similar. Yeah, that's the one. I'm quite happy with that. So what was the price on this? Uh, Call it 50 quid. Deal. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, it turned out to be the right rack. That's really good. I'm very happy. I got it for £50. So I'm really happy. 50 quid for the steering rack. Joe rides off a happy man. But George and Sheldon are still a far cry from breaking even. It's the final day of the dismantle, and Ben is prepping for another sale. Because believe it or not, Frankie may have found a buyer for their knackered engine. Hello, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I've still got yeah, I've still got the Citroen, yeah, the DS, yeah. I'll have a look. I mean, I've got a geezer now that's already working on it. I mean, he's my assistant. My associate. It will be ready for you to have a look at, and then we can talk about some money. Despite being as dead as a very deceased dodo, this is the coveted 2.1-litre engine with sought-after five-speed gearbox. That's a proper lamp, isn't it? So it's a dodo that should still fetch a price if someone else is willing to do the work on it. And Tom Wagelik might be that someone. 
I came to have a look at the engine, gearbox, uh, steering rack, and possibly some other bits for a Citroen DS. Uh, I'm not looking to spend much more than 60 quid. The engine out the DS, stripped especially for you by my young apprentice. Engine, gearbox, a steering rack down there, a neck green thing, a little job block to you. I'm looking yeah. for, say, 135. How do you I feel? I was rather thinking about 50 quid for the scrap value of this lot. Tom, if Tom. that was a runner, I would totally agree. But in this case, maybe 60 quid, Tom. 70 quid. 70. That's what it, it is worth for me. No, yeah. Tom, no. I'm talking to you now, 90 shots, 90 pound. That's pound notes. 90 quid. Yeah. 90 quid. All right. Have we got a deal, Tom? Yeah. Thank you very much, my Thank son. You Thank you very much, much Tom. Have you, uh, have you got the money? Yeah. I got the money. What, what credit cards? Yeah. Uh, no. No. So that's £90 for engine, gearbox and steering rack. It's only £910 shy of what the engine would have been worth, had it been a goer. But the boys are into profit. Just. It looks like there's an engine sale on the cars for Sheldon, too. And it's brought him and his Diane motor to rural Buckinghamshire. Well, today I'm off to um, a little place just on the outskirts of Milton Keynes, where I'm meeting a guy called Louis, who takes his two CVs and turns them into four-wheel drives and does off-roading in them. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he does it. More importantly, why? You can ask him yourself, because here's said punter, Louis Barber. They're all two CV people. Well, very long time, 30 years 2 cv -ing. We convert them to four-wheel drive, put the bodies all back on it. It's a bit of business, but it's not really about the business. It really is about the, the fun of the cars, you know. We like the company, the travel, and we just kind of have a bit of a laugh. This engine, we haven't seen it, so not good news. We could pick a good one up for 150, but I, I think they want a lot and they ain't going to get it, you know. It's not going to happen. Oh, wow. <laughs> How you doing, Louis? Hello, mate. Nice oh, to sorry. meet you. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. Go on, then. What do you got? I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a lovely 2CV right. engine, and I've got a gearbox, and I've right. even left... 2CV? Diane? Is there a Diane? Diane, same, okay. Same. Right. Is there any yeah, difference? Yeah, pretty similar. Yeah, OK. I've left the carb on it, alternator, right. starter motor, discs, Shafts, yeah. and calipers. Right. Um, come think on. about we'll it. We'll have a think about it. I mean, come on, have a... All have right. a look at the cars. But Sheldon's keen to do his deals <laughs> on wheels. Gentlemen, start your engines. Put your foot down. It's a chance for Sheldon to give Citroen's egg-friendly suspension a real test. You got used to it then? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it's a nice bumpy ride. <laughs> yeah. Out of all the motors that are out there, why do you use this one? This? Look, the two series got it all, you know. It's got the agility, it's got the lightweight. You can still buy them, they're cheap. They're dead simple to work on. Even if you break down in the middle of nowhere, you can, let's say, repair it. I mean, that one in front, that went from here to the North Pole, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been at, uh, North Cap, so, but yeah, twice, okay. twice. Well, that's a bit in cold. In the middle of winter. But Sheldon hasn't come along for a polite chat. He's here to make money. You know what? I've got to be straight with you. Um, you want to talk money? Yeah, let's talk I money. thought you might want to ask that. You know. Yeah. Well, how low do you want to come? Do you want to go as low as you're driving? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm looking at 200 quid. <laughs> are you really? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you looking for it, then? Come on. I've been in this game too long to get mugged over. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, put it up. I'll let's, let's cut a little deal, right? Go on. If you can do the whole course without getting stuck, I'll give you 175, right? If you get stuck, the money's coming down. Uh, but I'll give you a bonus, right? If go you on. can do it really good... Yeah. 200. All right. So I'm sticking my neck out All right. Here. Let's shake. All right. You've got to get around it. Cool. All right. At the end of the course, all that stands between Sheldon and 200 quid is a big muddy hill. Left, 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 left. Go, 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 um, I think we better get out and talk about this, don't we? I don't think I can get out. How about this? Go for it. Right, you wanted 200. Yeah. I helped you get up, cut the difference. 175. I'm happy with that. 
It's been a good day. It's been a good deal. It's been a good, it's been a good, a good, good to have really. you on board, as I say. He steered me right. He gave me some good advice. Gave me a lot of encouragement. And yeah, I'm not going to get beaten by a 2CV, am I? Come on. Hello. God, getting out is harder than getting up the hill. Oh my God. That's 175 notes for the Diane engine, gearbox and brakes. The boys have finally touched profit, but Sheldon's got a long way to go to claim victory. Time is drawing to a close on the three days of dismantling and selling French motors. Ben and Frankie have bought an iconic, if shambolic, Citroen DS. The boys made healthy sales on bonnet, panels and assorted bits, and even a few quid from a non-running motor. Thank you very much, my son. Thank you very much, Tom. And they've just broken the profit barrier. George and Sheldon bought a charming, if neglected, Citroen Diane. Minor sales on a job lot of parts and a steering rack kept them in contention. And an engine deal with Louis squeezed them into profit by a whisker. 175. I'm happy with that. There's not much in it. But a follow-up call from engine buyer Louis could help Sheldon tip the balance. <laughs> Hello, Louis. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a blast. Oh, you do want the chassis. Yeah, I thought you would. Well, look, well, why don't you just come down and have a look? With Louis shouldering the hefty transportation costs, Sheldon's sale of the rolling chassis with suspension comes to £25. That late trickle of coins into Sheldon's pocket marks the end of the French car challenge. It's time to weigh in the leftovers. There's nothing left of the Diane to crush, as George and Sheldon have flogged all but a single headlamp, which carries no scrap value. A rust-worn chassis is all that remains of Ben and Frankie's DS. With scrap going at 115 pounds per tonne, a weight of 511 kilos equates to an extra 59 notes in the purse. But is it enough to tip the scales? Now, I'll resist the temptation to say the light's on but no one's on because, well, it, it just isn't. So, uh, what's the problem then, lads? You a little bit nervous? No, we're not, as it happens. We parted up with 560 for this little bit of uh, French seaweed. Total sales, 789 nicker. Giving us a total profit of 229 Sovereignios. Wallop. Ben and Frankie travelled far and took a huge financial gamble by buying a Citroen DS with untested engine and suspension. When both those major assets fail to work, they look to be facing a disaster. But a couple of bulk sales set them on the right track and the eventual sale of the knackered engine inched them into profit. Minor web and phone sales on items such as windscreen and boot lids added coins to the coffers. But with profit margins this tight, is it enough? George and I, we paid £500 for our lovely little Diane. <laughs> total sales, £610. Which gives us a total profit of £110. With a car that practically came apart in his hands, George was on easy street from the start. But Sheldon's deals failed to deliver the big score. With sales on a job lot of panels and the engine falling short of the mark. Deals on the steering rack and chassis helped the boys avoid an embarrassing shortfall by inching them into profit. And a solitary web sale of one headlamp for just 10 quid proved to be the sour cherry on a rather small cake. Ultimately, the long-haul trip for a cheap DS paid off, as even a faded icon, minus key working tech, proved more desirable than a 2CV wannabe. Ben and Frankie have swung it. So, uh, what we're actually saying is then that you've sold an old motor bar and an headlamp and, uh, you still lost. Hmm, impressive. So it was the right decision to make, you know, to go to France to buy that motor. And, um, yet again, I have proved that I'm an international businessman. Well, we won, but just imagine if that engine was working. We would have thrashed them, just smashed them out of the park. 
to think I sold all those parts. Really put a lot of hard work into that, Diane. Don't always get it back, though, do you? Since the making of this programme, all the parts sold have gone on to live again. Ben's as pleased as Punch with his assortment of Diane parts. Joe's trike driving has really turned a corner with the help of his new steering rack. And Jamie loves his DS bonnet so much, he just can't stop pointing at it. The boys take on another challenge in a stripper's Cars for Cash premiere at the same... Are there riches in rust? We'll find out as two teams of money-motivated car strippers attempt to turn maximum profits from breaking end-of-life vehicles. 35 quid. Step with one and a half. 140 nicker. And 400 pounds. It's a process that requires teamwork. Be careful, all right? <laughs> Slick salesmanship. Easy dip. Oh. And competition so intense, it can feel like war. Today's challenge will see the teams attempting to make maximum profit from stripping a vehicle that broke the mold. Whether it be a revolutionary drivetrain, unique handling, or something that's just a bit weird, these vehicles raised eyebrows on release and in some cases changed the way we think about cars. With trailblazing cars purchased, the teams will have just three days to dismantle them at this licensed braking facility west of London, before selling the parts to the highest bidder. To complicate matters further, they'll be working with a maximum stake of just a thousand pounds. It's a mold-breaking challenge that requires two teams capable of thinking outside the box. First up are George and Sheldon. Stripper extraordinaire in this duo is George Percy. You can't make an omelette without cracking a few eggs. And cars are no different. Taking care of business is old money bags himself, Sheldon Nichols. Selling. It's like Christmas every day of the week for me. They'll be up against Ben and Frankie. Providing some northern grit to the mechanical side of the operation is Ben Shemansky. You can have all the tools you want, but if you don't have the skill, you're stuffed. That leaves sales, marketing and public relations to the East End's Frankie Otway. No checks, no receipts, no guarantees, no questions asked. First on the to-do list is the selection of a target donor vehicle. George and Sheldon are hoping that a spot of fresh air will help loosen the grey matter. Well, unless you're going to go back to a combustion engine, it's got to be an electric car, isn't it? Hybrid cars. What about a Toyota Prius? Well, yeah. I mean, every minicab driver at the moment in London seems to be driving them. I'm sure there's plenty of bits we can get rid of. Well, you make money out of it. Like you say, there's plenty of them out there. You've got the batteries, the engine, the panels. Yeah, it's still another car, isn't it, at the end of the day? When Toyota launched the world's first mass-produced hybrid car in 1997, they chose the name Prius, the Latin word for prior or before, as they saw this vehicle as the predecessor for cars of the future. The Toyota hybrid system powertrain works by combining a 1.5-litre petrol engine and a zero-maintenance magnet design electric motor that can work together or independently to deliver low emissions and fuel efficiency. In our environmentally conscious times, the Prius is particularly popular in London, where it is exempt from the congestion charge. In addition, the rechargeable batteries that power the electric motor can also be used to store energy generated by solar panels and small wind turbines. This trailblazer could prove to be a big earner. Yeah, about the Prius. OK. But you've only got one advertised. Just come in. OK, well, I'm very interested in it. Um, so the dark blue one, tell me about that one. 
Sheldon's got a lead on a couple of breakable Toyotas in the Bedford area. Well, Sheldon, are you ready for the wonderful world of hybrid cars? Not really, but let's just get this thing done. To leave with a hybrid scrapper, they'll need to do business with owner Mark. I've got a couple of Priuses here. They're in pretty good, good, good working order. I don't think they'll be going very cheap because we could actually break it ourselves. First up is a 2001 first generation Prius in navy blue. Everyone's raving about eco this and saving money and... But, I don't know. Well, does it start? No, apparently it's got some problems with the batteries and it's going to cost something like 340 pound or somewhere around that sort of figure to get it sorted out. I don't really want to be involved with that. There's only two ways to charge it. Because it's such high voltage, it's either going to be off of the engine and we can't start that because the batteries are flat and the only other way is to get a specialist unit round from Toyota. And apparently there's only one in the country, so that's not going to be cheap. Fortunately, Mark's got something else to show them. It's an accident damaged 2000 model. To get it roadworthy again would cost more than the repaired vehicle would be worth. Start her up then, Chill. Pull the bonnet. Mind your fingers. Go on. That's so quiet, isn't it? Sounds all right, doesn't she? It's like a little sewing machine. Right, come on in. Let's take her out. Let's take her out? Yeah. George, I hope no-one sees me in this thing. We're going to the beach, Sheldon. There's a few noises, Sheldon. Do you want the horn to go off as well? <laughs> You're enjoying this, aren't you? You're enjoying every single bit of this. <laughs> this is brilliant. This I'm is... a respectable car dealer. Just hurry up and get this thing back. <laughs> It drives horrendously, but I'm sure there's bits on it that can be sold. The batteries are going to sell and the charging system. The engine, well, that's the same as the newer shape one, so we should be able to sell that. All in all, it's, it's probably a good buy. Back at base, it's decision time for Ben and Frankie. With the clock ticking, Ben is cutting to the chase. Jensen Interceptor FF, first four-wheel drive production car, lovely motor. NSU R08, the first rotary Wankel engine. What well, about the um, the Sinclair C5, one of those little uh, little tibbers? Is that a car? Is it? Well, Is it... it's got pedals. I've got to say, I am a little bit concerned. Do you think you're up to the task here? Ben, I have never, not once in my life, in my career, let you down. And as if to prove his point, Frankie begins searching for Ben's suggested mold breakers. I'm trying to sort of get hold of a Jensen Interceptor. If you're sort of saying, like, that kind of money, I'm thinking, like, 20 grand less than what you've just said, sort of thing. With budget proving a stumbling block for Jensen's, Frankie decides to call in some more down-market contacts. I'm after a sort of uh, mold-breaking motor. Something that's changed the face of motoring, sort of thing, for example. And perhaps worryingly, he's got a lead. Yeah, still for sale. Oh, it is. Frankie has brought Ben to Brighton to see his mystery motor. I'm about to show that boy the surprise of his life. The man with the best-kept motoring secret on the south coast is Doug. It's been in the garage for over six years. It's been sat in there. One or two people have broken into the garage. The battery was stolen. And it's not been seen since that until now, when uh, it's now being sold. So, what is the mystery vehicle lurking in this Sussex garage? Hold that minute, son, will you, please? Do we need a drum roll? Oh, wait, you idiot! What is that? British car manufacturer Reliant can certainly be considered a mold-breaking company. With their Regal and Robin, they flew in the face of motoring convention by producing a car with just three wheels. From day one, the Robin was beset with problems. A tendency to tip over and self-combust being among the most serious. Nonetheless, the Robin has been a mainstay on British roads for some 40 years. Largely because a loophole in British motoring legislation allowed it to be driven with a motorcycle license and be taxed as if it were a motorbike with a sidecar. There are more than three and a half thousand Robin owners in the UK. The running gear is popular with trike builders, and Robins are even used in specialist motorsport. 
so Frankie's vehicle choice may not be as daft as it first appeared. Then again, it might. Hey, look at that, Ben. Look at that. Oh. Don't be fooled by the rust-free body shell. It's just made of fiberglass. You've got to think about the following. The people that are right bang into these motors. I mean, you've got all sorts of people. They go to little get-togethers, little gatherings. Wow. I know the battery's gone, because he did say something about the, someone broke into it and nicked the battery. It got nicked. They broke in and nicked just the battery. It about sums it up, doesn't it? Breaks yeah. into the garage and steals 40 quid of a battery. Is it possible to be more disappointed than I've just been? Probably not, no. Can you see us sort of getting, you getting it started? I mean, do you reckon you can develop it? As much as I would like to hear this 850cc behemoth purr, no. There's a wheel in the way, the engine's right back there. We don't have a battery, we don't have the keys. I can't be bothered. That's what I like about you, Ben. You're always so positive. This is why I love a gamble. And this is why I think now, I'm going to get this at the right dough. I know I'm going to have it off for this. We are. We are. Me and you. You've put them all on black here, Frankie, if you can get it for the right money. Back in Bedford, Sheldon is preparing for a spot of hybrid haggling. Right, what's the numbers got to be? It's going to be about 950 on that one. I see about 500 quid, Mark. Yeah, I can't do it for that, mate. Not at all. Oh, we're not going on this car. Oh, yeah. yes, we are. <laughs> um, I think the best I can do on it would be about 750. 750? Yeah, I can't go no lower than that, mate. Well, look, I'll show you what I got. OK. okay. You're saying 750? 750. Six. 50. You're missing another one out, mate. That's it, mate. That's what I'm prepared to pay for it. I mean, you can always give it back to me if you want. To be honest with you, I could do with the space, so I will take it. Yeah? Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much, mate. Top man, Mark. That's one barely drivable eco icon with a wonky front wheel purchased for six and a half hundred quid. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Brighton, Frankie and Doug are preparing themselves for a bout of championship negotiating. Heavyweight division. I know it's going to look spot on when we get in there, I mean. I'm going to offer you 120 quid for this. No, I'm, I'm looking for 200. Yeah, well, I thought you'd say that, Doug. I'm looking for 250. Yeah, I know what you're looking for, Doug. Well, if I set you 140, Doug, how does that make your sort of taste bus burst? Mm. I'll come down a little bit, but I'll go down to 220. 220, Doug. 220. No, no Doug, we're not doing 220. 220. No, Doug. 180 quid, Doug. That's all you're going to get out of me, love. I'll you be happy with 100. You sure? Yeah. You yeah, are that, sure? That's fine. Doug? You want to shake? You're a on? lovely man, Doug. Okay. We've got to get out of this little motor now, so, um, look, I think you should go first. Thieves may have considered it too shoddy to steal, but Frankie has snapped up this non-running reliant for 180 quid. All right, Sam. Oh, no. Tricycle. We own a tricycle. I've got to say, you have really outdone yourself this time. Thanks very much, Ben. It's not a compliment. Oh. With our team's mold-breaking scrappers safely back at base, they now have just three days to strip the most valuable parts before selling them to the highest bidder. Anything left on the cars will be slung in the crusher and then weighed in for scrap. Before the breaking commences, there's just time for the teams to check out each other's revolutionary ride. <laughs> What's this? What is it? This is a Toyota Prius Mark I hybrid, I hasten to add. Actually, we quite like it. George, I like sandals, but I don't wear them, boy. Probably got a foot issue. Does she purr? Yeah, like a kitten, mate. Go on then, start it up. Let's hear this kitten purr. Here, Ben, you ain't got another two bob for the meter, have you? Yeah, hang on. I've got two for the price of one, because it runs on petrol and also electricity. You say two for one, I say double trouble, Sheldon. Do you know what I say? Double the profit, mate. Anyway. What exactly about this is breaking the mould? I reckon they should have broken the mould before they made it. You are missing a trick here. It's lightweight plastic. It's mid-engined and rear-wheel drive. This is practically a Lotus Elise. He's right. Are you trying to sell it to me or to yourself, mate? No, it's a fast little motor, this. It's fast. What's the Nord 60? Uh, 16.1. Is that before or after it goes over the cliff? 
It probably helps. I'm telling you, see these? These are groundbreaking, and I'll tell you for why. Because three wheels is always going to be better than four. You know what, boys? That is the biggest donkey I've ever seen. You know what you need to do? Put a saddle on it, and a pair of you need to ride out of town. So, Ben and Frankie have splashed out 180 quid on a Reliant Robin that couldn't even get itself stolen. The engine doesn't run, and they've already broken the wing mirror. But enthusiasts can see beauty in the strangest of places. George and Sheldon shelled out 650 notes on this eco-friendly first-generation Prius with an alternatively angled front wheel. They've not gone all sandals and health food on us. They can see pound notes in the iconic hybrid. As with a standard motor, they can expect a return on engine and gearbox. But it's the game-changing batteries that could prove to be the best seller of all. It's day one of dismantling. George and Sheldon have realized that this could be one of their most dangerous missions to date. Right, Shell, I've been looking into this and I've got some notes on it. I'm a bit worried about this because this is quite a high voltage system. Right. And I don't want none of us to get hurt, so we're going to have to disconnect and isolate it properly. There's an auxiliary battery in the boot right. and there's a, an isolator handle for the high voltage system. Well, actually, I'm quite excited about this car, but I'm also slightly nervous because I don't know about these high voltage systems and potentially they could kill you. This is paramount. It's got to be safe. There's 300 volts in there. When we shut off that battery, I don't want you blowing up and I don't want me getting electrocuted. You're really beginning to like, frighten me a little bit, mate. It's, it's just a motor, isn't it? You've got to be safe with this. Come on, open her up. Yeah, you really have got to be careful, but... I don't know. I just... Come on. What's that all about? It's a, it's a car. And you've got to put gloves on to disconnect that. Yeah, it's 300 volts. That's half the power it takes to run a tube train. Right, I'm going to pop that off. That is what, if you was in an accident, the fire brigade would pull out to isolate those batteries. Looks like you could use it as a taser, couldn't you? It looks a bit... You can see what runs through it, you know what I mean? Now, if you can't access that, you've got the relay and the fuse under the bonnet that you can take out as well. So that's all safe now, is it? I want to cover all corners. With the fuses and relays still to remove, the tension builds. Could this be the first electrocution on strippers? No, bit of an anticlimax, really. Ben and Frankie's Reliant Robin should be less lethal than the Toyota. And with a far less complicated dismantle to look forward to, Frankie is taking time to wallow in three-wheel nostalgia. I'll tell you what, Ben, there was a lot, lot of famous people had one of these, you know. Really? Yeah. He had one. Who? Benny, Benny Hill had one. No. Yeah, he did. Uh, no. Yeah, he did. No, he, he, no, he didn't. No, he, he did have one. Yeah, Mick Jagger had one, Ben. Mick J no. Yeah. No, no, he, Frankie, he really didn't. No, he did. Mick Jagger? Yeah, he did. He wrote the song. Which song was it? I can't get no satisfaction. But Frankie could be getting some financial satisfaction. Because if Ben can get the mighty 850cc engine purring, it should sell. The seats should also shift. Whilst the unique chassis should prove attractive to trike builders. But that could all be immaterial as Frankie shares news of a potentially game-changing bulk deal with Ben. Now, Ben, look, I've had a very important phone call. Oh? From one of the clients. About? That. This. Correct answer. What do, what do you want? He wants, Ben. He wants. He wants. He wants. All that lot. Everything, Frankie. The whole lot. Everything. The whole lot. Absolutely everything. The whole lot. What, even in the engine gearbox? Except the engine and gearbox. Oh, except. Well, except the engine and gearbox because he doesn't want it. This is going to be a bit of a jam sandwich affair. We've got to peel back the slices of bread, Frankie, and lick that 850cc jam out. Body off the chassis, engine out, body back on the chassis. It's a bit of work, but why not? Well, it sounds straightforward. Famous last words.
Now, to take the body of the Reliant off its chassis, uh, it's a separate ladder chassis, much like a Land Rover, and just a, a plastic bathtub sat on top, basically. Should have been very easy. There was just, I don't know, 10 or 15 bolts. It did turn into a game of chase the bolt around the car. It, it was hidden. A couple more back here. Whilst Ben struggles with his boats, Frankie struggles with his boat. Singular. It's taken ever such a long time, this boat, Ben, I've got to tell you. Never known anything like it. It's like an epic. I can't get this one out. It just keeps spinning. It's always spinning. Boat gate over. It's time to lift the Reliance and prepare for the removal of the shell. I've got to disengage the uh, cable for the handbrake. Take the two clevish pins out of the actual drums there and just feed it back through. That pin there? That's it. So just take that out with a pair of pliers. It's got like a split pin on it. It's got a split pin on it. Take that out. Yeah. And then once I took that out, that cable comes away. Yeah. And releases the handbrake. Yeah. Do you know what, Frank? You, I could have done that in the time it's taken to explain it. I ain't got my glasses pin. I can't see it. I'll have to come back to that one. As Ben gets up close and personal, He's just not feeling the Reliant love. As we went through the process of dismantling the Reliant, I played a little game with myself called Find the Redeeming Feature. And I lost. So, what's the story? Ben, we ready to lift off or what? It's been hard work, Frankie, but yes, this body is going to separate off this chassis so smooth you won't believe it. What we do need to check for, Frankie, is if there's any cables still attached. Right. It's looking good, Ben. Yes, it's going lovely, Ben. It looks like to me that we are free. What's the story now, then, son? We're at the uh, full height of the lift, so what I'm going to do is I'll get the back, push that down, pivot the front up, and if you just pull the chassis out, should all come out, engine and everything. Better come right out. It should do. Right, ready? Yeah, come One, on. One, two, three. Bosh. Wallop. Look at that. That is good work, man. That is good work. Across the yard, George is getting to grips with the removal of the Prius batteries, and it's not a simple job. To merely gain access, George needs to remove the safety plate. And if Ben thought the Reliant had bolt issues... That's not the battery, it's... I don't know. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah, you too. Bye. And Sheldon realises that selling the batteries might not be a walk in the park either. Well, I've just found out some news about my Prius that's really going to change my sales strategy. Apparently, these batteries are good from anything between 150 to 300,000 miles. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to imagine doing 150,000, let alone 300,000 miles in a Prius. So, where am I going to go with these batteries? Because there ain't no Priuses around that have got that sort of mileage on it, or more. So, I really need to think again when it comes to the sales of these batteries. They were going to be a very large part of my profit. The charging unit may be out, but to get to the battery itself, George needs to remove the rear seats. Don't you just love technology? You give me a hand. What's up? Well, somewhere in the country, someone's screaming out for this. Put your gloves on. All right, all right, all right. So what, you're going to push it through to me? Yeah. It's not low it. Right, ready when you are. Drag it through. Hold on. Come on. Right. Are you ready for this? Yeah, on three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Where do you want it? Let's chuck it down here. Get some pictures of that and get it on the net. Yeah, got a Prius. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's a 1.4, 1.6. Yeah, it runs beautifully. Yeah, all the batteries. No problem with the charging system. And the wonders of the web mean that Sheldon is heading off on one of his more left field sales trips. It's a beautiful world. Hi, 
I'm sure, and I'm from Wintrap. We sell wind turbines all over the world. It's a growing market. A lot of people seem to want them for their houses, to supplement some of their power. We're going to use this Prius battery for our office computers. So we're going to convert the power from its voltage to 240 and use that to uh, supplement some of our energy usage. Ideally, I want to pay £150 for this. What I'm looking for these batteries is roughly about £250. Okay. okay and I think that's really justifiable. Mm. You know, these batteries on the internet, they go anywhere from between £450 to £600. Okay, my brother bought a new battery for his Jensen the other day, which is a 12 volt battery, and he gave 150 quid for it. <sighs> so, you know, I think, I don't think I'm being out of order for what I'm asking. No, it's, it's second hand though, Sheldon, but if it's a powerful unit, then I'd be interested. Well, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm looking for 250. What sort of figure are you at? I'm thinking around 150, to be honest, Sheldon. It's top mark. You're going to have to help me out a bit. Come on, Sean. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll meet you in the middle because it's freezing cold up here. Um, so let's call it 200 quid. I oh, appreciate that. All right, oh, thanks for that. That's one battery with a new job in an office and 200 quid in the bank for Sheldon. It would be if you stopped singing, love. It's day two out of three as the teams attempt to make maximum profit from stripping a mold-breaking motor. You're really beginning to, like, frighten me a little bit, mate. George and Sheldon parted with six and a half hundred quid for a first-generation Toyota Prius. On day one, they flogged the battery for 200 pounds. Ben and Frankie paid only 180 quid for a past it reliant, which is just as well, as they sold Nish, Nada, nothing. It's not a complete disaster, though. Frankie has a punter interested in the chassis and shell. But Ben can't reunite said chassis and shell until the engine and gearbox are free. It is a very simple old chassis, a bit of a ladder for him. It's like what the, uh, what the old Land Rovers had. Of course, they had a bit more about them. And I can't see why anyone would want one. Right, that's that bit. Next, chop the exhaust off. That engine could be a good seller, if it runs. But that's a big, big if. Get the choke on. Oh. So she doesn't want to fire quite yet, so first job is to check we've got a spark. So I'll take the king lead off the distributor. And if I just hold it away from the block, we should see a little spark jumping across. So we have got a spark. It's an orange one, which means it's a bit weak. A good, strong spark should be blue. But it'll still, it'll still ignite the petrol. I'm looking at the, in the carb on the metering rod, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of fuel. So maybe this little mechanical fuel pump here isn't man enough to suck it up from the tank. So what I need is Reliant Workshop part number 37B, chair. And let's see if it spins over. Oh. Oh, yes. Look at that, 850cc's of pure British, well, not muscle, but, yeah, the heart of a Reliant Robin, eh? But six years, it's, it's quite a long time to have done nothing. I'm quite impressed. An engineering triumph for Ben. And most importantly, Frankie has working goods to take to market. Yeah, so I'm on my way to a place called Bruntingfall, up north somewhere. Geezer fancies the engine out to be like Robin. Had the right money, he can take it. I don't know, something tells me two and a half hundred quid, he can have it off my hands. And here he is. 
Race driver Helen Gilfillan. I race in the 750 Motor Club Series. I race the Centaur Mark 16. Not completely male dominated, but there, there are a few women drivers out there. Reliant Robin engines are very good for racing because they've got a lot of power for the size of the engine and they're very lightweight, so ideal in a, in a racing car. I'm after this engine from, from Frankie. Ideally, don't really want to pay a lot more than 125 for the engine. I drive a hard bargain, I'll give him a run for his money. Bruv, how are you? All right, yeah. Well, here I am. And, uh, yeah, I've come down to do the deal. She just pulled up in a motor, and I thought like it was going to be like a Steve McQueen. All of a sudden, it looks like it's Penelope Pit Stop. I am right in the go-karts and all, funny enough. Uh, that's a racing car, I think you'll find. Oh, right. Don't get the ump, love. I've got a deal of a lifetime with you, my little love. And I'll tell you where I've got it. I've got it in my mobile office. Inside there, my little love, look. Have a look, love, have a look. Sit down the back there. Now, get in here and have a little look, my darling. I'll even come and join you. Now, look, take your seat, love, take your seat, love. Apart from being just beautiful, and you really are beautiful, right, Ellen? That engine there to you, to you today, you can take that now, and that's two and a half hundred nicker to you, my brother. It's a bit steep. So is yours. You know, they're steep, aren't they? If I sort of reduce the price, especially for you, because you are so beautiful, and I said to you, 200 nicker, what would what would be the first thing that comes out of your mouth? First words? Uh, no. No. Right. Tell you what I'm going to do with you, my little love. 175. 175. You can take that away. Take it away, love. Go for it, Alan. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting Not there. Not quite there, but it's getting, getting there. there yeah. You are a little bit of a tough cookie. I won't deny. And, uh, I'm thinking one and off. It's just, I don't know where it's come from. It's just, bonk. Wallop, one and a half. Call me silly. Call me silly, Ellen. Call me silly. Call me silly. Say, Frankie, you're silly. No, I think it's very sensible. Oh, it's very sensible. Are we going to have a deal at one and a half? We got a deal. We got a deal. We got a have deal. you got the money on you? Proof that flattery gets you nowhere. But that is 150 notes in the bank, and the reliant is close to breaking even. It's the final day of dismantling, and Sheldon is fielding a slightly confusing sales inquiry. You're not interested in the engine, or the gearbox, or the electrics. So what is it you're interested in, then? The shell, with all the panels on it. Well, you give me an idea. What sort of figures do you have in mind? No, it's not going to happen. We could definitely work something out around that sort of figure. Lovely. I'll give you a call back. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yes, George! Just sold this whole piece of rubbish. Even with the damage? Yeah, he knows all about damage. He wants it with the interior, lights, bumpers, glass. Just got to take the engine and box out. Day's just going from good to fantastic. Wicked, if when you need a hand with that, give me a shout. Yeah. With time limited, the pressure's on to get the Prius engine and gearbox out so that Sheldon can take the shell and chassis to market. But this is no Reliant Robin. The engine removal will be as much electronics as mechanics. What do you reckon that is? Probably an inverter. I think increases and stabilizes current to the electric motors. <clears throat> Nothing I can get to in there, so I think I'd be happier with that on. Just be careful, all right? <laughs> so not funny. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Is that heavy? <laughs> oh, I just can't breathe. <laughs> With the sparking complete, even the agricultural process of heaving out the engine and box is proving problematic. 
So as we're taking this engine out, it is a bit tricky because it's got the gearbox right on the end. It's massive. It's as big as that engine. You've got to take into consideration the centre of gravity so that as you take it out, it keeps it all level and uniform. I've got to get it so that it's a bit more level, mate, because it's twisting. Go on, it's, it's clear here. It's, it's nearly up. Go on, go on. Is you clear your side? Yeah. With the block yeah. finally out, yeah. George gets the chance to explain exactly why it's such a big lump. Now we've got the engine and gearbox out, you can actually see what a hybrid vehicle is about. This side, you've got your petrol engine, and it runs all the way down this line here. And this side, you've got your gearbox, and it's massive because inside this is the motor and the generator that runs the batteries in the boot. When the petrol engine's running, it turns a motor in here, and it generates electricity that charges the batteries in the boot. Once the batteries are fully charged, the petrol engine's then switched off, and then the gearbox is powered directly by the electric motor in here. And with that mold braking engine safely removed, Sheldon can go to market. Or should that be war? Yeah, um, when you're ready, um, Scott. You'll see me on the right-hand side. I don't think you'll be able to miss me. I'll, I'll be the black man on top of the tank. High-vis and tanks. What's going on? I'm Nick Mead. My company's called Tanks A Lot. We do all sorts of things with tanks. It started off 20 years ago where you could come along and have a go at driving a tank. And now it's gone more where you come along and drive lots of tanks and the best driver runs a car over at the end and we put in a bit of shooting and a bit of blowing up and a bit of survival. Um, you name it, we tank it. When it comes to crushing a car with a tank, people love the posh cars, the Jags, the Mercs. But there's also the other end of the scale, and people love killing Skodas and Larders, and your Prius will be much the same. That's that kind of ilk. Well, look, I know we've agreed a price of £350. I believe it was £300. I'm sure it was £350. I can check my emails. That's the most I've ever paid for a car. It's only that I'm really short on cars, and I hate electrics. Well, I hate this car too. <laughs> and I hate it so much that maybe we could come to an agreement where this £50 is concerned. I can't come all this way and not ever go in one of these tanks. I'm a busy man at the moment. I respect what you're saying, and I don't ever want to be pushy. Have you seen the state of my courses at the moment? I can handle it, and I don't want to be pushy, but I don't want to leave here unless I ever go in a tank. The mud is this deep. Oh, sounds great. It's not the time. Come on, if let's do it. you're absolutely certain. I'm you certain. really, really oh, I'm certain. You wouldn't want to do that in a Land Rover, would you? <laughs> Apart from driving a Ferrari, I think as a kid, every boy wants to drive a tank. I'm sure you've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> Sheldon was a surprisingly good tank driver. Um, he had control and a bit of finesse. Better than that poxy old Prius, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No one ever got excited driving that, did they? I fulfilled one of my final dreams today, and it's been, it's been amazing, absolutely amazing. There is one thing that's left me really, really disappointed, and that's that I'm not going to be around to see the Prius get crushed. But he has banked 300 quid by flogging it. Of course, the Prius wasn't the only chassis and body combo up for sale. Back of the yard, Ben has put the engineless Reliant Robin back together in time for the visit of Mark, who's in the market for a restoration project. Hi, my name's Mark. I'm from Manchester. I've come down here to buy um, a British classic. Are you sure you've come to the right place? I'm hoping to get it uh, as cheap as I can. I'm hoping to spend about 200 quid for the, for the car. Um, I'll see how I go and uh, see what condition the car's in when I go and see it. I'm up for a barter. Yeah, you're up for a barter. You want to come down to London and you want a barter. Well, that's what I'm here for. Mark, you're in the wrong town. <laughs> right? I want 400 nicker for this. I was going to go two. But, Mark, look at it, Mark, look at it. All right, can we? <laughs> no, but, Mark, that's worth dough. That's worth money. Mark. I'll tour. I'll tour. I'll give you a tour for it. No, we're not going to do tours, Mark. We're not going to do oneers. I'm going to have a deal of a lifetime for you, Mark. And it's there ready and waiting for you now as we speak. Three and a half hundred nicker, you can take that away. Three hundred. 300. I can't be for that now. Have you got it on you? 
I've got palm notes in my pocket. You've got it on you now, and it's in that pocket. Palm, palm you have got it. Can I have a look at it? Can I have a look? <laughs> yes. And it's a Union Jack. I like that, Mark. <laughs> I can see their goers. Right? I'm going to let you take that. And it has been a pleasure doing business with so you, We've got a deal, We've got a deal. We've got a deal, yeah. We've got a deal. Good boy, Mark. Well done, my old son. All right. Well done. Enjoy yourself. Thanks very much. Good boy. Frankie's sales technique, it was a bit um, extreme, to say the least. I, um, I don't think I'll be buying another car off him again. Um, but he's a nice lad, though. 300 quid for the shell of a car that only cost 180 represents good business. This could be a tight finish. Time will soon be called on the bone-breaking car stripping challenge. Sheldon and George went hybrid crazy with this first-generation Toyota Prius. They've secured three big money deals and included the sale of shell and chassis. Ben and Frankie picked up a reliant Robin and, like their opponents, topped impressive sales by flogging the body shell. In the dying moments of the challenge, it's becoming a tale of two gearboxes. Limited time means that Sheldon is offering the Prius box at a knockdown rate. My name's Andy. I work for a company called Automatic Man. We recondition automatic gearboxes. I did have it advertised at 400 quid, but I'm on a time factor and I've come to the end of my window, so um, I've got it advertised at 225. I understand these are quite problematic gearboxes. Right. Um, I was thinking a little bit lower. We're going to put it in a car at work. Once it's in and doesn't work, can I bring it back and get my money back? Not really, because I know it works. Right. If I didn't drive it, or if George didn't drive it, it'd be a different case. So I was, might, but I know it works. Sure. Okay then. I'm, I'm happy to deal with yeah. that. Yeah. You cool with that? Yep, I'm fine with that. Thank you very much. Top man. Brilliant. Lovely. 225 notes is a useful addition to profits, but Sheldon is not a happy salesman. Yeah, I'm gutted because what it took for me and George to get our engine and gearbox out, to let it go for that money, is just don't feel right. Considerably less complicated is Ben and Frankie's Reliant box. That's not to say it's unsaleable. Just ask Sean Anthony. I've come up from just outside Exeter in Devon to try and buy this gearbox to do a Reliant restoration project that I'm in the middle of. Bullseye, two fat Frankies, yeah. 50 nicker for that now. You can take it away oh. to uh, where the cows go Yeah. and have a good time with it. What, for scrap value? I'll it's give not, you a tenner for it. Not... Look, 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 look. That's oil. You will get this. You will get this, Sean. Oh, I, sure. I tell you what, that's a tenner there. Isn't Have it? you yeah. got one of these or what? Oh, yeah, I've got a couple, yeah. What's the matter with your gearbox then? Well, it just jumps out of reverse. Can you buy them off the shelf anywhere? No, no. correct answer. And that's the reason you're here, Sean, right or wrong? Yeah, all right, right. Yeah, right. You got it, brother, right. right. Mate. 30 yeah. quid. 30 you can quid. take that away. All right. Now, get the money out of your pocket, please. Oh, mate. 30 quid. Not a fortune, but at this stage, every penny counts. And that proves to be the final deal. It's time to weigh in any unsold parts. Ben and Frankie have flogged everything, so have nothing left to crush. As if to prove the recyclability of the Toyota, George and Sheldon have a pile of high-tech leftovers, too small to crush. It looks like being a quiet afternoon for Joe on the crusher. Nonetheless, with scrap going at 140 pounds per tonne, a weight of 52 kilos adds a further seven pounds to profit. And talking of profit, it's time to do the numbers. What am I supposed to be looking at? Well, it's a shrine to a, to a fantastic car. So many happy memories. In fact, I think we should just have a minute silence, if you don't mind. Yes, we parted up with 180 nickel for that little motor down here. That's right, isn't it? Right. Total sales, 480 sobs giving us a total profit of a car pair. How much? 300 nickel to me and you. Oh, yeah. Things may have looked a little bleak when the boys unearthed the Reliant, but the low purchase price meant that the sale of the engine and gearbox ensured they broke even. The bulk deal of body, shell and chassis then catapulted the Reliant into the black. 300 quid profit on a car that cost 180 is a mighty return, but is it enough? Well, we paid 650 quid for this, which I think 650 pounds too much. Wait, well, hold on a minute. Oh, yes. <laughs> Total sales, 833 pounds. Oh, my God, God. Gives us a profit. Profit, I can't believe we made a profit as well, of 100. 
and 83 pounds. There was nothing wrong with Sheldon's sales strategy as he secured both bulk deals and single item transactions. Ultimately, though, it was a high purchase price and the ticking clock that conspired against George and Sheldon. Ben and Frankie are this week's mold breakers. Prius, please. I'm an ex-mechanic, not an electrician. If he didn't want that car, he should have said so from the start. We've both bought the worst cars in the entire universe. How did that happen? Since the making of this show, all the parts sold have played a major role in a number of restoration projects. Sean is busy fitting his Reliant gearbox. Cheer up. That's more like it. Mark is pleased as punch with the Robin body. He just needs an engine and he'll be away. And as for the Prius shell and chassis, women drivers, eh? There's gold in them there cars. Well, money, anyway. And we'll find out just how much as two teams of cash-hungry car strippers go head-to-head -head in a battle for maximum profit from mashing up motors. 35 quid. Step into one and a half. 600 quid. 400 pounds. The scene is set for dodgy dealing. You agreed. And now you've gone back on your word. Yeah, well, I do tend to do that. International travel. Yep. Do you think we could grab a coffee before we go? I could really do with a drink. And some of the worst track craft you'll see this year. Hold on. Tim. Tim. I can't get a grip. I can't get a grip. the summer of automotive love. The teams will be stripping cars from the swinging 60s. This was a vintage decade for car lovers who appreciated beauty as stylish motors turned our roads into a catwalk. Key to winning this challenge will be tracking down a real stunner. But it won't be easy riding for the boys as they'll have just three days to tear apart their cars at this licensed breaker's yard before selling off the parts to eager punters. The team with the biggest profit will take the honours. Taking on this groovy challenge are two teams of scrappers for whom losing is not an option. In the blue corner, we have George and Sheldon. Gorgeous George Percy is the man in charge of stripping down the motors. Even the filthiest wreck can hide little Jen. You just got nowhere to look. Keeping an eye on the cash is thoroughbred of the sales world, Sheldon Nichols. They say 50% graft, 50% luck. Always 100% charm. You don't smile, you don't sell. Over in the red corner are Ben and Frankie. Mechanic Ben Schiamansky is the nuts and bolts man of the operation. Behind every half-decent salesman, there is a mechanic in the background who actually knows what he's doing. Leaving honest Frankie Oatway as the don of diamond dealing. Why are they stripping motors? I'm stripping wallets! First up for the boys is to decide which star of the 60s to buy. And Frankie's keeping an even tighter rein on his wallet than he does the sweetie jar. But Ben, you ain't got any idea what kind of dough you're going to spend out there for motors from the 60s. We don't have to buy an E-type or anything like that. We could buy something more of an everyman car, you know. Like the Human Hunter, the Avenger. Frog Eye Sprite. Call me silly, Ben, but what about a Ford? A Ford Anglia. I'm going to put my foot down, do a bit of phoning around, call in a few favours. There may be little exciting to say about his 997cc engine, but the Ford Anglia 105E was all about image bringing a splash of all American style to British roads with its jutting rear fins and sweeping nose line. The standard version may have been a bit on the sparse side, but the deluxe and super deluxe versions were awash with more silver trimmings than a Christmas tree. This reliable stalwart of 60s motoring remains a fondly remembered relic of a bygone motoring age. And with over two and a half thousand of them still left in Britain, there should be more than a few punters out there looking for parts. 
However, in his shabby, chic porter cabin, Frankie has some leads, but the sums aren't quite adding up. Oh, you want that kind of money? I won't be paying that, bruv. I won't be paying it. It's not in brilliant shape. Well, I'm not worried about it if it ain't in brilliant shape. I'm not worried about it. You know, has it got any spares on it? You know, something we can make a few quid out of? It does. Yeah. Lovely. And so it's over to a horse stables in East Sussex for Ben and Frankie to secure their rusty steed. Yeah, it must be around here. Here at the family farm, mechanic Tom Winchester runs his classic car workshop. I live here with my family at a livery yard. I'm a mechanic and just mainly do a classic cars. The Anglia is my sister's car originally. We were going to do it up, but sort of due to time and lack of money, it's sort of sat there and been a bit neglected, really. I'd like about 800 for it, really. Holy... Look at this place, fella. You like it, Sam? Oh, oh, I knew you would. Dolly Sprint. Oh, my God. That is a beauty. I had one of them, Ben. You never. I did. Volvo Amazon. These are amazing. That is only... Oh, you know what comes... The with? Lancia Delta Integrale. In my million-pound car garage, this and that... I told you, like, I see yeah. your little face light up when you walk through them doors. I've got something very, very special to show you, Ben. Special? Yeah. I just know you're going to like it. I'm talking about this. So, uh, what do you think, then, Ben? Oh. Under this bonnet, Frankie. Not even one litre. Yeah, but, Ben, it's meant to be made small, so it fits a big car. You know? No, it's, it's the deluxe, though. It's the upmarket version, and it's got this chrome. Unfortunately, all that extra chrome is covered in blue paint and bent and rusty. But apart from that, it's there. Um, the rest of it's looking sorry. The body's like Swiss cheese. Ben, don't look in there, son. Don't look in there. Now, one good thing about this Ford was there were loads of spare parts in buckets and in the boot, so there might be something. There might be a little gem in there. I do not want to part up with no more than 500 quid. It may be a rusty write-off, but a large market for Anglia parts makes this a promising buy. So it's up to Frankie to make the deal count. Meanwhile, back at base, George is dreaming of letting his hair down. It's going to have to be a convertible. Convertible? Yeah. For a grand. Well, I don't want a pristine motor. I just want a convertible. If you want a convertible, fine, I'll get you a convertible. And Sheldon proves once again he's a man of standards. Low ones. I don't care what it looks like, if it's been in the barn for half its life, or all its life, or in a field, or a swamp. And if you're prepared to scrape the bottom of the barrel long enough, you might hit gold. The, the condition doesn't really bother me, but is it a complete car? I can come down, shake your hand, give you the money, and take her away today. The quest for George's dream soft top has brought our boys to a garage in Edgware. Today, I've come to Edgware to see an old mate of mine who's got a Triumph Herald for sale. Don't know what it's going to be like. He said it's a little bit ropey, but he says I'll do all right out of it. The Triumph Herald spent over a decade showing off its sporty Italian-style bodywork along British highways. Under the surface, the flashy little Herald boasted cutting-edge technology as well. Peerless rack and pinion steering for a turning circle tighter than a tenor's trousers. An all-round independent suspension, unique for a mass-produced British sports car of its time. Today, this remains a favourite for classic car fans eager for a runner that's nippy and practical. And with convertibles going for an average 50% more than this saloon, a soft top could be a safe bet for the boys. Looking to do a deal with Sheldon is trusty old chum Nick Cohen. Sheldon is a great guy to do business with, but you know you're never going to get what you want out of the deal. You've always got to bend a little bit with Sheldon. So the Triumph Herald, it's a 1360, it's a 1969, and I think, to be honest with you, it's probably worth about a thousand pounds. But Sheldon's the perfect guy for this car. The secret of impressing a mechanic is to lower their expectations first. Just ask Sheldon. You were the one banging on about a convertible. You're the one who wanted a soft top. I ain't prepared to go and look at any other ones. This is the one. Sheldon? What the... George, let's have a look at the nice little car and take it from there. It ain't as bad as it looks. Back in the... 
Are you sure? These little chrome trims here. Badges. Little hinges. It's all pound notes. It's all money. Brand I can see right through that side. Yeah, it's because it's got a rear quarter on it, George. And it was your idea. I don't want to keep banging on about your idea, yeah, but... but sure sometimes... My idea is the idea of a complete car. <laughs> when I first saw that Herald, I thought, what have you done? Well, let's have a look at the engine anyway. There might be some money in there. Well, she looks... Looks pretty good. It's got all the alternator in that lot. Yeah, carbs on her. We'll have to get this running at the workshop, shall we? Do you know what? I don't think she's as bad as you're making out. And I've been told there is a little bit of a silver lining in the boot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Lovely. Got some wheel trims. We've got some original overriders. They're lovely. They ain't in bad, Nick. That's all good. Oh, there's definitely money to be made off this car, without a doubt. I've got the engine and gearbox. I reckon I've got 200 quid there. Those are the sort of things that I know will fly out. As we got to look round it, you could see that there was quite a few bits still there. So there's still a lot of money in it. Back in East Sussex, Ben and Frankie are stuck with a rather sorry-looking Ford Anglia. It's Frankie's moment to shine. All right, Frankie. Hello, uh, Tom. Tom, I've had a look at the old Ford uh, aggravation, and uh, I yeah. like what I see. I'm thinking like a carpet, like 300 quid. Oh, I don't think so, mate. Why do you nah. say that, Tom? I'm thinking more 800, really. You're thinking more 800? Yeah. I am not prepared to walk out of here and lose good money. You'll have to make me a better offer, then. I'm thinking more like sort of four and a half, maybe four and a half, maybe five. Five. Five gets old here, doesn't it? Nah. I see that. Not quite. No, I see your eyes dilute. No. Nah. Dilate. That's a shock. You'll go to 600. 600 quid. Right. 600 nicker. Huh? All right. For that. 600 quid. And you've had it Deal. off. All right, son? God bless, Thanks, Tom. Frankie. So that's one Ford Anglia 105E Deluxe, with more holes and a piece of Swiss cheese on a bed of nails, bought for 600 quid. It's beyond repair, but its parts could get other Anglias back on the road. Back in Edgeware, this haggard old Herald has Sheldon digging for mate's rates. Nick, you never told me it was as bad as all that. Sheldon, you've been in the game long enough. You know that the price we're asking for that, £1,000, what were you expecting? It's 45 years old. I don't need to know what you paid for it, but you know what? I wouldn't give more than 200 quid for it. George opened the doors and they nearly fell off. All right, so I agree that there are some things with the car that aren't perfect, but that's reflected in the price. I mean, we're only asking for £1,000 for it. It's worth five grand in brand new good condition. I'll take 200 off it. I'll do it for 800. Oh, come on. No, we ain't gonna do it this way, are we? Let's not make this too painful. All right, look, we go way back. I know you'll come back for more. You take it away from me today, cash in my hand, 500 quid. Come on, Sheldon, you know it's a good deal. You can get rid of the bonnet for that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. But you better look after me on the next one. Yeah, we got a deal? Yeah, yeah. All, right. all right. I'll even get up to shake your hand. <laughs> Stop, man. All right, done. Done. Right. So Sheldon and George part with £500 for a vision of hell in blue and chrome. A write-off it may be, but its parts could breathe life into other heralds and put shekels in Sheldon's pocket. Having bought their 60s swiggers, the teams now have just three days to strip them down and flog the parts for heaps of cash. Unsold leftovers will be food for the crusher before being weighed in for scrap. The team yielding top profit will be crowned winners. Before the carnage begins, it's time for the teams to size each other up. But there's something strange in the air. A Sheldon appears to be full of admiration for Frankie's 60s motor. Must be an age thing. All right, well, chaps. well, well, boys. I've got to hand it to you. I'm impressed. This is, this is classic. And you've got loads of spares as well. Sheldon, what are you doing? Sheldon, this is, this is, our, this is our car. He loves it, that boy. I Look, like I it. I know he'd like it. There's something wrong with him. Does Harry Potter know you got this? No, he don't, Joel. Stay right out of it, cos it's no one's business but ours. Ben. What was it, a barn find? It, it was a barn find, yeah. Tell you what, the fella's got a load of spares in there. Look in Is there, look. Really? Yeah, look in oh. there, look. Wow, you got loads of bits and pieces in there. Another set of bumpers, three grills, even spare glass. It's lovely. It's all right, George, they don't know what they're doing with it. It's quite all right. I'll tell you what, why don't you come and have a look at this, Frankie? And even Frankie seems to be feeling the love. I normally slag your motors off. I, didn't <laughs> I don't mean to. I mean, it's just how I am, but 
This is like this is like a dream come true because my brother Georgie had one of these. The door's falling off. George, you're gonna have the door off there, love. Well, Frankie, we can sell you some lo lovely bits. Oh, uh, mind your fingers. Yeah. Look at that. You don't see chrome like that today. No. Do you know what I mean? You don't. You've had a right job lot, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, don't worry about it. It's George that's going to be this man and this motor. He's way too young. I wanted a convertible, but this is a quarter of a convertible. It's not even that. It's I half a car. I can't see the metal for the rust. Come on, Ben. Were you two about to get a room? No, Ben. What, what is wrong with you? 600 notes have landed Frankie and Ben this Ford Anglia 105e Deluxe. Yes, Deluxe. Holier than the Pope, the bodywork leaves a lot to be desired. And the engine's not much cop either. But a legion of sentimental fans means there should be a few pockets to pilfer. This convertible Triumph Herald has set George and Sheldon back 500 quid. It may look as if it's been stuck together with elastic bands and chewing gum, but there's more than meets the eye here. With some sought-after body parts, there could be a couple of pearls lurking in this oyster somewhere. Key moneymakers on the Herald are the distinctive clamshell bonnet and bundles of unique stylistic features that include wing mirrors, trims and interior fitting. Day one of the dismantle and job one for George and Sheldon is to get that potentially valuable bonnet off. But with a car of this age, nothing is simple. So we started taking off the um, first bolts and um, everything went fine, you know, they were coming off nicely. Have you got yours all out? I've done the rod, I just need them spanners. See if you can just crack it with that. It looks a bit rusty. We've got to the second bolt, and then it all just started going wrong. Oh, that's tight. See also It's snapped. That ain't gonna come out now. I'm gonna have to cut that. Unfortunately, George snapped a bolt in one of the sleeves that um, holds the hinges on. And um, I said to him, well, get an angle grinder, just cut it off. It's the front end of the car. I'm not going to tell you it's there and take bits and pieces off of it. Well, of course you're going to have to respray it. Look, come and have a look at it. See the condition of it. I've been as honest and as open with you as I possibly can. There we go. She's off. Got it. Oh. Sheldon's openness could be about to pay off. Here's Herald obsessive Matthew Hughes. I've come down to buy a Herald bonnet. Uh, because I'm restoring two Triumph Heralds at the moment and I'm looking to spend about £100. You got the pictures that I emailed you, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it all looks the same. It's all there. Yeah. She's really tidy, she's solid. There's no rot, there's no rust, there's no filler. I was hoping for 300 quid. I was uh, hoping to pay £300. Well, what, were you, what sort of figures did you have in mind? £100? No, no, no. Look, I've left all the chrome on it, I've left the headlights. That lettering's worth a lot of money. I had a fella down the other day who just wanted the H. But if you're taking it now, I'll let you have it for 220 140 You come down a I'll, bit lower? I'll, I'll, I'll let you take it away now for 160 All right, 160 then. Yeah? Yeah. All right, lovely. Cheers, mate. I suppose you want to end with it, put it in there, didn't you, as well? That'd be nice. All right. All right I'll, Lovely. Well, let's get the money side out of it first. Yeah. There we go. Is that 160? Yeah. Lovely. All right. Bless you. George! 160 for the bonnet sees George and Sheldon kick off the money making. Across the yard, Frankie's getting organised. Have you developed a system here, Frankie? No, I have got a great system. And the have other you? thing is, Ben, look, the thing is, I mean, I'm looking at, I'm looking at prices here, Ben. Yeah. And I mean, those wheels, for example, on the front, on, the, on, that, on that side. Lotus Cortina times two. You took the words out of my mouth. Nice wheels. It's all about money. I mean, I'm not going to quote numbers, but it's looking like a gorilla all day long. People say to me, what's a gorilla? Well, it's two monkeys. That's a thousand pounds. We could be talking endless amounts of money here for a motor like that. Monkey talk aside, he's onto something here because, despite what's missing, there's still plenty of cash in the Anglia. 
Fans of Americana will lap up body parts such as chrome trim and rear wings, whilst a working array of mechanical parts should sweeten the deal. As they start inspecting the interior of the Anglia, it becomes apparent there could be a few extras to take to market. How many Ford Anglias have we got in there? I don't know, but there's a lot of gear in it. There's a hell of a lot of gear in here. Look at that tank. That's so got to be worth a few quid straight away. Five, about a five and a half, Frank. You see, you see that hole? You see that hole in the petrol tank? Yeah, but Ben, the punt... The punters don't know it's got an hole in it, do they? What you keep forgetting, Frank, is these punters are... They have got eyes. So you think they know this? I... yeah. Across the yard, George and Sheldon are determined to hear that Herald engine running, as it could be a big seller. You take that. Bend that round. No. Oh, oh. Go on. That's it. Right. This if you hold that up there, and then crank her over. Go on then. <laughs> oh. There's no spark. So we turned it over. We couldn't get a spark. So you, you're going to have to check things like your plugs, the leads, the coil. Basically, for those who don't know what a coil does. It's a converter. It converts 12 volts into a much higher voltage for your spark plug, for your engine. All the time that that reading's not stable, I know it's not working. Right, ignition on. On. Um. Right, lovely, off. Off. Oh. Yes, I think the coil's at it. With replacement coils easy to come by, the boys could be back on track. Right, ignition on. On. All right, off. Off. Ignition on. On. Right. Lovely. Yeah, that's reading the current now. Turn it off. See if we've got a spark. Right, go on then. Uh, flick her over. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. Turn it off. Turn it off. The spark's lovely, but Sucks. she's running on three cylinders. Lovely. That was that was sweet, wasn't it? Right, go on then. Fire her up. A triumphant roar from the engine and a blast of smoke from the high-tech exhaust assembly signals success. And good news doesn't end there with an internet sale for the engine putting a hefty £240 in the bank. And the money keeps rolling in for George and Sheldon, thanks to Pete Costa, who's after wing mirrors and steering wheel. Come all the way from Birmingham down to Heathrow to see if I can get some wing mirrors for my Triumph Herald Estate. I was hoping I can get them for 30 quid, but now I've seen a steering wheel as well, what I like, so I'm going to try and get both in for 40 quid. I've got the wing mirrors that you wanted, yeah, and I've got the wheel. I was hoping to get 50 quid for it, Pete. I was hoping to pay £10 a mirror and 20 for the... Uh... Sorry? £10 a mirror? I was hoping, yeah. I've, I've travelled. I've travelled. I've travelled. I know you've travelled and I'm going to I'm show you some love, but come on, man. Work with me. Work with... I've got 40 quid. You've got cold hands. Quick, I'll give you my 40 quid. The quicker you can put your hands back you know, in your pocket. Do you know what? <laughs> 40 quid, yeah. I'm happy with that. You happy 40 with that? quid, yeah, yeah. Sure. All right, let's... Okay. Deal. 40 quid's good. There you go, mate. I'll swap you. Would you like some cash? Yes, please. That would be nice. I'll just put these in the car. Go I won't go anywhere elsewhere. Lovely. You're a gentleman, Pete. Thank you very much. Well, listen, have a safe drive back. Yeah, I'll try um, my best. Yeah, she's lovely, man. Well, I do run down nicely. Managed to get what I needed. Uh, never know. Might be back down soon to get some more parts. And that 40 notes puts George and Sheldon just £60 from breaking even. Across the yard, Frankie is busy trying to flog the Anglia panels. You want those two panels up the Ford Anglia? That shouldn't be a problem, brother. I'm sure we could sort something out. With money in the panels, a less than 1,000cc engine is little more than an obstruction. We're doing it as we speak. I've got my team working on it now. Easy talk for Frankie, not so easy for Ben. Back in the day when that car was new, the technique was to weld everything together. Modern cars are usually bolted, so when you crash them, you have a little ding. Bolt the wing off, bolt one back on. But this is fully welded, so it's very difficult. Now, Frankie had a nice little easy sale. Easy sale for Frankie, difficult in reality to actually take off. This job is as difficult as climbing Mount Everest with a Ford Anglia in your backpack. They're very efficient. So am I, by the way. And I run the outfit. And when the buyer, Dave Empson, arrives, Frankie sees a chance to flog him more than just the panels for his lime green Anglia. 
I've had it about six weeks, two months. Purchased it for my son, he's 17, for his first car. The car's been lowered, it's had a fair bit of work done to it. It's got jag leather seats in it that are electric, and I think my boy would rather see bucket seats, but that's another story. Dave, on a serious note, as you can see, I've displayed all my goods out on the pavement. I've opened my art to you, right? And as an added bonus, that inside panel is going to go with the outside panel. See these, Dave? See them? They are additional added bonuses. Can you hear me, Ben? Yes, Frankie, loud and clear. Can you bring out the other display parts to put out on display? What does he want? A little bit of chrome? Yes, he does. Wow. Dave, Dave this is a bit of a bobby dazzler, mate. This, look at that, Lovely, beauty. Yeah, that is nice chrome, that. Yeah. See what I mean, Dave? That's good stuff. Nice, yeah. And that's good stuff. And that boy, that boy has not stopped. Has not stopped. It's not free, David. He's not free. He's knocked his thumbs out all morning, David. David, I'm not going to argue with you, Dave. And I'm going to be straight. You can take this little lot as a little parcel, including those chrome bits here. Including all that. Yes. David, I'm going to let you take that little lot away. 300 nick at you, brother. You've got, 300, you've got a carpet on you. You've got 300 nick on you. Yeah, I've got 310 on me. 310, David, you got yourself a deal, brother. Let's have it out of the pocket, bruv. Yeah, I come down to purchase the wings. Um, Frankie's a lad, twisted me arm. I've come away with more than what I expected. 310 pounds is a major boost for the boys, but they've got some catching up to do. Although Frankie has mastered the art of persuading the buyer to offer more than the asking price, watch out, Darren Brown. <laughs> It's day two out of three, and the teams are working hard to turn end-of-life 60s classics into pound notes. They're very efficient. So am I, by the way. And I run the outfit. George and Sheldon paid a neat £500 for a rather lacklustre Triumph Herald. On day one, they sold the bonnet for £160. Engine and bits for £240, as well as mirrors and steering wheel for a further 40 quid. Ben and Frankie forked out £600 and wound up with a deluxe Ford Anglia. Day one saw the boys up the ante on a panel deal, netting a cool 310 notes. But they've got some catching up to do, and an opportunity to do that catching up arises with a potential buyer for the diff. The slight problem is that it's still on the Anglia. Could I have you balancing this on that and I'll knock all the pins out and then we'll lower it down? Am I going to get crushed? It's a, it's a possibility that I'm willing to risk. A bit of this. That's a way. So we'll just break my arms. We'll find out. It's a bit of an experiment. Try and keep it steady, love, because we don't want it falling off the trolley jack, do we, love? OK, love. It's really nice and light, though, Ben, isn't it? Yes, loves. And it's just as well because Frankie needs to get that diff on the road and out to the punter. I'm on my way to see a geezer called Tim. That's a bit of racing, all that game. But anyway, what's the diff off of the uh, Ford Anglia? I might see if I can get him to throw in a little, uh, a little trip round the track, you know. Waiting to cut the deal with Frankie is racing enthusiast Tim Foxlow. The form of racing is a form of called classic hot rods. So it's taking hot rod racing back to the late 70s. And we're running cars that are a replica of the cars that we were running back then. Ford Angulars, Escort Mark 1s, Escort Mark 2s, and Chevettes. So it's quarter mile oval racing in one of the fastest formulas on the tracks. I'm running a Mark 2 Ford Escort. Uh, with a full race Anderson engine in it. Obviously, these cars are fitted with racing gearboxes, but the variation on gearing to make them accelerate quicker is based on the differential. Um, the 4-4 diff, which I understand Frankie's got, is one that we're really looking for. They are fetching good money, but probably £100 max is, uh, is where I'd like to be with that. Tim. What a chef. Hello, son. How are you? All right, Frankie. Tim, look, listen. Where's this diff? First things first, I want to get in this. Now, give me my crash helmet, will you? Do you think you'll be able to handle this, Frankie? You name it, I can do it, son. Don't worry about that. Uh, I, I thought I was taking him round at first in a passenger seat, but he's quite cocky about this and uh, has insisted on driving himself round. So um, let's see how he goes, eh? 
No, you're punter. It's rule number one in the selling game. And Frankie takes his homework seriously. This should be a walk in the park. Frankie's seen Days of Thunder 12 times. The noise of it is unbelievable. He may drive a hard bargain, but that's where Frankie's driving ability ends. Oh, oh! He's sliding, he's sliding. What's that all about? Hold on, hold on. Tim, Tim! I can't get a grip! I can't get a grip! Tim, I can't get a grip! All right, Tim. All right, Frankie. Here's your diff. Oh, Frankie, pull it down. You've not even cleaned it off. No, no. Oh. That's two and a half hundred quid, sir, Tim. To you. Frankie, we're not even going to get anywhere with that because I can buy a new one at 240. But why would you have new when you can have second hands? Because they, they wear out on the crown wheel and pinion. I, I mean, I'd only be starting at something like 80 on that one, Frankie. 80, 80 soft. quid. All right, look, all right, two and a half hundred quid's a little bit strong. I will grant you that. But if I said to you 180 nicker, what would you say? I'm getting warm. 140 quid, something like that. You would say 140, 140 quid. 140 quid. I'd, 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 be, I'd be happy, I'd be shaking your hand now at 140. 140 nicker? Yeah. How much have you brought here today? I mean, how much is in there? There's one and a half. One and a half? You've got one and a half in one your pocket. Half in pocket? Thank you very much, Tim. That's very kind of you. It's all just there. Check it there. I just want to check it, Tim. I'm not saying that, you know, I don't trust no, no, you. No, 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 not at all, Frankie. No, no, fair spare. I fair mean, spare. obviously, uh, I'll be getting a receipt with this, won't I, Frankie? No, Tim, look, which way is the uh, M6, brother? Just over there. Oh, it's down that way? Yeah. Oh, well, I'll go that way anyway, yeah. look. Yeah, don't call yeah. us, I'll call you, Tim. I think he pushed me hard on that one. I mean, I was uh, quite uh, expecting to get that around 130, 140. I stretched to 150, and that was my limit. 150 for the diff. Ben and Frankie are inches away from breaking even. Back at base with a Triumph's engine and front end removed, George takes the opportunity to admire some classy 60s tech. The type of steering this has is rack and pinion. So this rod, it's connected to the steering wheel and it runs down here and this is called the steering rack. And in here there's a gear which actually moves, it moves this rod left to right. If you watch here, so you can see it's pushed from side to side as the steering wheel's turned. Now a lot of the older cars of the day would have had what's called a steering box. The trouble with a steering box type system was that there was quite a bit of play available. Whereas, if you want really precise steering, you needed a rack and pinion like this car's got. Look at that lock on that. Not to be outdone, Ben has had a rummage through the assorted guff that came with the Anglia. And he's been busy tarting up some classic 60s electronics. We found this gauge pod in the back of the Anglia. Not hooked up to anything, as most of the bits and pieces on that car were. So, what I've done is created a simple little wiring loom on the back here to check all the bulbs and all the gauges work. Now, basically, I've got 12 volts coming from the battery to the, uh, to the back of the key there, and that sends the power, once I turn the key on, to all the other instruments. Look at that, in all its illuminated glory. Now, the dash did have this rather nasty, uh, nasty looking switch in there, so we've replaced it with this lovely chrome switch with a red light. Any device you want to switch on and off, there we go. Now, what we've also got on this dash are two little gauges, one for your temperature and one for your fuel level. Now, I've just wired that up to a potentiometer. Now, basically, in the actual car, what would happen is you'd have one of these, there'd be an arm attached to it and then a float on the end, and that float would sit on top of the petrol. And as the level of the petrol goes down, it moves the arm and moves the uh, shaft on the potentiometer. And that varies the reading on the gauge, as you can see there, up and down. We've got a full tank. And as you twist that gently, the fuel goes down. Very simple, but effective. And what we have on the other side is something very similar. This is the, uh, this will be your coolant temperature gauge. And we've got a little thermistor there. Now that is basically a little resistor that varies with the temperature. So if I get a lighter here and just apply that to that little thermistor there, you should see the gauge climbing once it gets hot enough. There we go. So there we are, we know everything works. All it needs is a little bit of a clean up now. What more could a boy want? And Ben's hard work in refurbing the dash pays off. Bringing in an internet sale of 10 pounds and 41 pence. Every little helps. Across the yard, George and Sheldon are busy stripping every saleable item from their herald. 
And with time ticking away, the boys get to grips with the roof. George insisted on buying a convertible, and it looks as though he might have been right on the money. As I said, that's not a problem. The roof, yeah, it's got your name on it. Yeah, it's been put aside. And it seems as though the soft top could be the start of a much bigger deal. Yeah, there's still a few bits and pieces left. Well, the good news is the fellow who bought our little Herald roof is interested in a load of other bits and pieces for the car. Yeah, the dash is there. Whereabouts are you based? Pardon? Where's that? Sheldon's phone work means a trip to the country for the lads. That country being Holland. It's a long drive, and Sheldon's decided to take George along for company. Though it might be a decision he lives to regret. Yep, lovely. Do you know what? How many pictures of windmills have you got now? I like windmills. You know what? You are really beginning to worry me. Sightseeing complete. It's time to remember that this is a business trip. And the man they come to do business with near Arnhem is dealership owner Wilco Bajer. The company is called Imparts BV. Uh, we're in the business of the British classic cars from the 50s and the 60s for more than 20 years now. Uh, started off doing mainly parts. Uh, now we have a large workshop. We sell a lot of cars. Uh, we hire out cars. Why people like these cars? Well, I like them. I have no idea why other people do them, but it's, uh, yeah, they have their charm, so yeah. I wonder what this is going on. Well, I know it's going to go on a Herald, but <laughs> I wonder how far the restoration is. Oh, George. Oh, wow. Today, I'm in my element. I am in the most beautiful part of Holland, surrounded by the most amazing British cars. It's hard to believe that I am actually out of Britain seeing so many old classics. I'm falling in love with this car, George. There's loads of That's cars beautiful. here. beautiful. Well, well, Kobe, we managed to get all the bits and pieces there. I was looking for around about £400 for them. That's a lot of money, Sheldon. I... It's a lot of parts, Wilco. Yeah, but not everything is very useful for me. For instance, the dashboard, it's right hand drive, and you appreciate we have the left hand drive cars here. I'm sure there's people that will contact you, and knowing that you deal in left hand drive, maybe just ask you have you any possibility of a right hand drive dash? Well, I think it'll be on the shelf for a long time. Stanmore's business community has stuck rigidly to Sterling, so Eurozone dealing is a step into the unknown for Sheldon. I was thinking about 200 euros. Couldn't do it for 200 pounds, let alone 200 euros. Um, for me, I'll 200 come, euros is quite a little bit of money. Um, I'll come down at 350. 350 pounds, that is. Have any idea how much that is in euros? What, 350? Yeah. Um, have you got a calculator? No. no. 110 times 1.18. I think that was the rate when I last checked. Um. While Sheldon's doing the deal, I went and had a little look around. I mean, if you like British cars, this place is a wonderland. Everywhere you look, there's a British classic. I spotted a little Vitesse, a Triumph Vitesse. And this was the top spec model of our car. Back at the deal, Sheldon is proving to be anything but a British classic. Let's agree on 300 euros. I think that's a very good deal. Well, I would be safe if we called it 400 euros in. That way I know I'm not yeah, being done. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's really is too much. That's really is too much, no. There's a lot of work to be done on all these, these old parts. I have to polish them, clean them before I can sell them. All right, 300 euros then. Yeah, I will be happy with that. All right, all right. Ah, all right, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> 300 euros, that's, um... 257 pounds, <laughs> I think. George, have you managed to sort that set about yet? Yeah, all set. Um, do you think we could grab a coffee before we go? I could really do with a drink. George, my friend, that ain't your standard coffee shop. I don't think you're going to get your cafe latte, cafe au lait or frappuccino there, mate. I think it's best we get you home. The 
three days of stripping and selling 60s classics is nearing an end. George and Sheldon went to great lengths to sell their Herald parts and are close to shifting the lot. Ben and Frankie plump for a Ford Anglia. A moment of inspiration added pounds to a panel sale and the two ploughed on with a major score on the diff. Easy diff. Oh. With the end in sight, another big sale could be decisive. Emma looked at the car boot and thought, that'll make a lovely sofa. No? Well, this man does. He's Spirio Antonio, a bodywork specialist with designs on the Anglia's back end, wheels and bumper. I uh, repair cars for a living, bodywork. I've got a few old cars myself, and I came here originally for the Lotus steel rooms off this Anglia, and I saw the back end's all complete. I thought I'd make a sofa. Around about two, two fifty, I'll, I'll probably be willing to pay. Can you throw a bit of light on what you want this for? Um, well, I just saw the wheels on eBay, and then when I saw the car, I thought the, the back end would make a nice sofa. Oh, cool, yeah, that would work. In the, in the summer for the garden. How am I going to cut it, Spiro? Great difficulty. Great, um, I don't like the sounds of it. just up to the back window. Uh, you got the bumper? We have got a, a bumper. We have. What do you mean a bumper? There was, I did see a bumper on this when I first saw it. Yeah, it was very nice. It was a Is very it nice the same bumper. bumper, though? Uh, no. We have got a nice chrome bumper. Can I have a look? Well, that, we're coming to that one, Spiros. It's a bumper issue. And the issue is, it ain't the bumper that I initially was going to sell him. So, Spiros, unfortunately, we are down to the nitty gritty now. And I know, I know what the Greeks are like, and I'm not generalising, but they do hold back on the old pound notes. But what's that I see over there? That is... That better not be the bumper. That's the bumper. That's not the bumper that I saw. No, no that ain't the exact bumper, Spiros, but that's neither here or there. No, the bumper... No, no. The bumper I saw was much better condition than that. Look at that. Have you got the nice bumper? No, there's been a bit of a problem there, Spiros, my old mate, and I'll tell you for why. Uh, because you sold it to a man with a lime green Anglia? I said to you, I want the bumper, the rear end, the lights. Yeah. You agreed, and now yeah. you've gone back on your word. Yeah, well, I do tend to do that. I don't know, I'm looking at, like, 400 nicker. I want to buy the back end of the car, not the whole car. I'll do you 150 for the wheels and the back end. 220 Sovereignios. There's a strut on the boot that I want. I want some ashtrays at the back. And that's it, and we'll do 220. All right, 220 softs. You got the dough there? Got the dough. Good boy, Spiros. Lovely, thank you. Now, there's your bumper. Enjoy yourself, and uh, away you go, lovely, thank brother. You. Yeah, love it. I was a bit disappointed with the rear bumper. It was a nice chrome one when I first saw it, but I'm happy, I'm happy with the deal. That's 220 for the Anglia back end, wheels and bumper, with struts and ashtrays thrown in for good measure. And that sale brings the swinging 60s challenge to an end, as it's time for any car leftovers to be weighed in for scrap. First up, the unsellable, rust-ruined section of the Anglia shell. With scrap going at 140 pounds a ton, a weight of 340 kilos brings Frankie and Ben a neat little pick-me-up of 48 quid. With little left of the Herald, bar a door and a few odds and sods, it weighs in at just 51 kilograms and nets a paltry seven pounds for George and Sheldon. But that says nothing of total profits. So which team has swung the balance in their favour? So here we are again, yet again, here we are. Looks that way, doesn't it? Um, would you like to go first? Uh, you sure? I mean, why don't you have a go? No, I insist. I'll, after you. Well, we parted up with 600 nicker for this little beauty here, me and him. Total sales, 1,185 Sovereignios, giving us a total profit of 500 and 85 nicker. Bosh! Ben and Frankie made a solid start with quick thinking on a panel deal, whilst the diff and back-end sales bumped them into profit. With phone and web sales of parts such as the gearbox and the bonnet adding to the haul, a profit of £585 proves the Anglia was ultimately a shrewd buy. George and I, we paid £500 for our little Herald. Total sales... £1,095. So I believe that gives us a profit of £595, which does technically make us the winner. George and Sheldon hit the ground running and kept the momentum going on sales throughout the three days. 
Additional phone and web sales on parts like engine, rear valance and chassis strip the Herald down to a minimum. With profit rather than total sales being pivotal, it was Sheldon's purchase of the Herald that proved decisive. Sheldon and George have shaded it by just 10 quid. Well, we've managed to keep a few more Heralds on the road and we've won in the process. Victory is indeed a very sweet thing. It all boils down to vehicle choices at the end of the day. And it was Ben that bullied me into buying that Anglia. He's young and headstrong, but he'll learn. Yeah, all right, there was a few quid in it. And both teams put a couple of old classics back on the road. But at the end of the day, we won. And that's the end of it. Well, the Ford Anglia, they don't make them like that anymore. Thank God. Since the making of this programme, all the parts stripped have gone on to greater things. The Anglia diff is making all the difference for Tim's hot rod racer. Wilco's over the moon with his assorted Herald parts. And although Spirio has yet to fashion the Anglia back end into a sofa, that hasn't stopped him sitting on it. Can you get rich by recycling wrecks? We'll find out as two teams of car breakers attempt to make maximum profits by stripping condemned cars of their mechanical booty. 35 quid. Seven, one and a half. 600 quid. Four hundred pounds. But this is more than a mere car show. Prepare yourself for fine dining. Lovely. Wonderful. Fascinating facts. Stanmore doesn't really have a large farming community. <laughs> and if music be the food of love... <laughs> I'll skip the main course. this challenge, the teams must amass maximum profit from breaking a vehicle that works hard for its living. These hard grafting motors can be purpose-built for the job or modified versions of regular vehicles. Either way, they don't come cheap. That's why the teams have been granted a budget of £2,000. Once they've secured a scrapper, They'll have just three days to strip it bare at this registered breaker's yard to the west of London. Before selling the parts for as much as they can. The team with the biggest profit will be declared the winners. Lining up to take on this industrious challenge are two of the hardest working teams in the world of scrap. First up are Ben and Frankie. The oily side of things will fall to Ben Shiamansky. This isn't smash and grab. This is laser-guided destruction. Proving that good stuff doesn't always come in small packages is head of sales, Frankie Otway. If you want to do business with me, you better bring your life savings, my old son. Facing them from across the forecourt will be George and Sheldon. The stripping will be led by the fresh-faced George Percy. I've been messing around with motors since I was little. Petrol runs through my veins. Shifting of parts falls to Stanmore's very own sharp-dressed man, Sheldon Nichols. Rockefeller, Trump, Branson, Nichols. Deal is done. Thank you. Not necessarily in that order, though. First job for the teams is to choose a donor vehicle. George and Sheldon are combining their meeting with a spot of spring cleaning. What are we going to get for two grand? Something that, you know, working, a working vehicle. Something that earns people money. Yeah. What's your thoughts? What about agricultural? What, like, like a combined harvester? No, like a tractor. George, we need something collectible. Yeah, people collect tractors, don't they? Do they? Yeah. yeah actually, it's not a bad idea, you know. I'm going to go and do a bit of research on that. And Sheldon does a bit more than research the subject in his plush sales suite. Um, I just need to know what you've got available, because um, um, it's quite a way away, and I don't want to waste my time or yours by... He appears to have a firm lead. Some of them are ready to go. Our two city slickers are heading to the wilds of Peterborough, 
where a tractor lover's paradise awaits. Well, do you think we're in the right place? That screams tractors to me, mate. Well, he's got a few, he? To leave with a scrappable farmyard gem, they'll need to win over owner Mark Weston. We've been here since 1995. Um, we collect tractors um, and then sell off the surplus ones. I mean, the tractor price range, I go for anything from a sort of non-running tractor at £500 um, to some of the big Ford Doe tractors and things like that, which will make £50,000 and £60,000. As Sheldon and George begin browsing, it's becoming apparent that there's an inherent flaw in their business plan. I mean, I've never really had anything to do with tractors before. Would have pulled a well, I've had pretty limited experience with tractors, putting maybe jigsaw puzzles together with tractor pictures in them and um, drawing them as a child, really. We're going in blind, but we've got to ask someone. In your opinion, what will give us the best return on our money? Well, I would think the Gray Ferguson diesel here would give you the best return because the amount of parts on it that's still saleable. Yeah. And, and, it, and how old's this one? It'll be middle 50s. With sales exceeding three quarters of a million on both sides of the Atlantic during the 1940s and 50s, the Ferguson TE20 was the tractor that replaced the horse on many European farms after the Second World War and facilitated the spread of mechanised agriculture. The Fergie has also kept famous company. Sir Edmund Hillary's team drove three modified TE20s to the South Pole in 1958. A powerful two-litre engine and low gearing deliver plenty of torque but not a great deal of speed. The cameraman's trying every trick in the book here, but it's just not happening. Speed doesn't matter to tractor enthusiasts who just love restoring these historic vehicles. George and Sheldon could be ploughing a furrow to profit. So what's the most desirable in this that... If I mean, at the moment, it. if you're advertising the parts, the bonnet, the bonnet system on this one is still fairly good. Right. Um, the Akai gas system, which is on the dashboard there, the one last week on eBay made £233. For that just, little just unit? That, just that one unit there, really? yeah. yeah. What's up with this? Is this front axle broken? No, it's not broken. No, you've got three bolts either side to just spread it out for different track widths where you want to run down the rows of the crops. Really? Yeah. Can we hear it run? Yes, you can, yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> With the engine started, George does what any man or boy over the age of six would do in the same situation. <laughs> yeah, I can see why people like them. They, they've, they've got, like, little faces on them. It's funny. Being here today, up close and personal, I can see why people strip them down and, and refurb them and, um, and why they've got a love for them. They've got so much character. That's brilliant. Is she sweet, though? Back at the yard, Frankie's thinking big. Yes, yeah, so Ben, would you, uh, would you reckon about a coach, for example? Or, uh, I don't know, like a bus? Transit van or something like that, converted to an ambulance, yeah. Yeah. So we've got the transit parts and the ambulance parts. You know what, I really like that idea. I really do Good. like it, Ben. Good. So now it's just a matter of finding a transit-based ambulance for under two grand. And what sort of money are you looking for for it? Four grand, yeah, do me a favour. Can you believe that for an ambulance? Hello, mate, yeah. Well, how much money do you want for it? Three and a half grand? No. Nah. You got anything else knocking about I could have a look at? Oh, have you? And it all works? Yeah, where about sign your bruv? Frankie's got a sniff of a likely sounding motor in Stainforth near Doncaster. True to his word, Frankie has bought Ben to a transit treasure trove. But that's the strangest looking ambulance I've ever seen. Perhaps owner Barry can shed some light. We bought the ice cream van off a customer of ours and we've had it kicking about. We were going to do it up for my lad, but we just run out of time. <laughs> oh, look at this, Frankie. <laughs> What's the matter of it? There's nothing wrong with it. I like it. It's transit, workhorse, plenty of parts there, and all that jazz. But it is an ice cream van. You do know that, didn't you? The problem you've got with ice cream vans is that the machine is worth more than the van. We appear to have fridges. We appear to have an ice cream maker with a residence bird's nest. I'm looking for about two grand for it. This paint looks a bit flaky, isn't it? 
You beauty. She looks okay. Looks fairly clean. Whether by accident or design, Frankie may have stumbled on a gold mine here. Under this vision of pink fiberglass lies the workings of a Ford Transit, a genuine road-going workhorse. Released in 1965 with a price tag of £542, 2.3 million have been sold in the UK, making it Britain's best-selling commercial vehicle. Combine the transit with a colourful fibreglass shell, refrigeration units, and Italian ice cream making equipment, and you've got yourself a vehicle popular with children the world over. Britain is home to 700,000 Ford Transits and some 5,000 registered ice cream vans, so the boys should be able to ship plenty of parts. Me and Ben really like this motor. You'd never guess. I think he fancies two grand for it. I ain't gonna pay that. Back in Peterborough, tractor novice Sheldon is about to start talking turkey with agricultural plant aficionado Mark. At stake, an end-of-life Ferguson TE20. Yep. Right, so I suppose it's coming that time, isn't it? Yes, We're yeah, yeah. Got to get down and dirty. Um, what sort of money you got in mind for this whole thing? £1,200. I thought it was going to be around about 600 quid. No, it won't be that low because it's just for us just to resell it on again. Can't we meet somewhere in the middle? Well, yeah, um, what, a thousand? I was thinking more about maybe 750. Um, I'll split it, I'll split it with you. What are you saying? 850. Well, 850 is the, the death on it. You wouldn't meet me at 825? No. Would you no. let me walk away? Yeah, for I would 20, let you walk away. For 25 quid? Let, for 25 pound, I'll let you walk away. Get off the track, sir. That's it, yeah. Get off. Buy it. <laughs> Go on, isn't it? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Eight twenty-five. Yeah. Eight fifty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go on, try. Yeah. Thank you. Here you go. You take that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Top man. That's one Ferguson TE20 tractor in Battleship Grey, purchased for eight hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> Meanwhile, up north. Frankie knows he'll have to be at his best if he's to strike a deal on a transit-based ice cream van that's reached the end of the road. You know, be, be realistic with me now. I mean, what sort of day are we looking for? Yeah, I want 2,200 quid for it. I fancy 1,400 quid. No, no, no. What do you mean, no? no? The sun's out. It's worth more money when the sun's out. Yeah, but I can't... There's I... everything to go. A machine's worth that. 1,900 quid. 1,900 quid and you can have it. No, I bet I look. Because I did bring up 19 yeah. between me and you, but, you know, I knew I weren't going to pay your top dough for it. And you know that, though, Bell, didn't you? Yeah, you do. Go on, right. man. You're, you're twisting me arm. You've got to take it a long way. 1,800 quid. 800. Good boy. Good. You know it makes oh, sense, Barry. I know I like that about yeah, you. No so that's one ice cream van, complete with a sitting tenant, bagged for 1,800 notes. Falling down, London the bridge is falling down. Bye. Challenged to make maximum profit from breaking a working vehicle, our teams have returned to base with their scrappers of choice. They'll now have just three days to break the vehicles before selling the parts to the highest bidder. Anything unsold will be crushed and weighed in for scrap. Before the stripping commences, there's just time for the teams to check out their opponent's donor vehicle. <laughs> Would you? Would you buy an ice cream from one of these two? Oh, I, I think I'd run the other way. <laughs> I'll tell you what, fellas, this is going to be a nice little learner for us. Yeah, he's yeah. right. Do the chimes work? Uh, um, no, no, they don't. No. Does it even run? I think the uh, candy floss machine's working. <laughs> What's this freshly made just for you? Is that with or without the salmonella? Well, <laughs> whatever you want, we do it all. Let's have a look at this old pig's bloater, shall we? Look it's at it, look. Gym, this. Listen, Little fellas, Fergie. I have got to be honest with you, I know nothing about tractors. I'll tell you what, Ben, have a look at their faces. It looks like they know even less. <laughs> How big's that engine? Two litre. 
You sure? Oh, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. It is or it ain't? I think it probably oh, is. Oh, right, it yeah. is. It is. Oh, right, now we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Right, so, um, what's the turning circle on this? Tight. A nice non-committal answer there. I like it. Yeah. Go on, how fast does it go, then? <laughs> how fast do you want a 57-year-old tractor to go? It goes as fast oh. as the tractor goes. I know this is a bit like mastermind, but what is it? A drop of petrol or diesel? It's diesel. Oh, it's diesel? Yeah. Is it? Diesel, yeah. diesel pump. Oh, we sure uh, about this or what? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, OK, sure. we'll give you it's one. Diesel. I think this is going to be double interesting, don't yeah. you? We've got a shrewd little investment here, mate. Yeah, you crack on, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad you didn't wear your green wellies. So, Ben and Frankie have played it cool with a transit-based ice cream van, purchased for 1,800 quid. The exterior might be peeling worse than an orange suffering from eczema, but the engine runs, and if any of the bespoke ice cream-related paraphernalia still works, they could be in the money. George and Sheldon have gone all agricultural with a Ferguson TE20, snapped up for eight and a half hundred quid. The Fergie's farmyard days might be long gone, but she could still make a big contribution to the bank balance. The boys will be particularly confident of shifting the wheels, tin work, and dashboard with cold start system. Whilst the biggest ticket item should be the engine and gearbox. But on day one, there's a catch. So we've got the tractor transported back, and it's now not running. I think the start motor's packed up. There's no key like a normal car. You've got to push this safety switch, lift up the gear stick, pop it into start. That's how you start it, with the gear stick. Oh, come on, George. It's only a flipping tractor. We're gonna have to bump start it. A bump start on a tractor is pretty much the same as a car. And what's involved in a bump start is you've got to have the clutch disengaged for the vehicle in gear, and then as you're towed up the road, you gradually release the clutch, and the gear turns the engine over and fires it up. I'll say all that, but I've never bump started a tractor. What's to do? Across the yard, reality has bitten hard, and Ben's enthusiasm for the transit-based ice cream van is on the wane. I've done a complete 180 on this. When we saw it first, you know, I was reminiscing about the great ice creams, Frankie, the, the side lolly, the 99, but now I'm not into it now. Honestly, Ben, that's a proper, proper ice cream machine. It's gonna do over half our money. I fancy about 1,200 nickel for that. Frankie's on the money here. The ice cream maker could fetch a four-figure sum. Chiller unit and freezer should also make a healthy contribution to profits. Whilst the ever-popular transit engine and gearbox are other likely bankers. But before they can get their hands on any of the valuable machinery, they'll need access. Down at Elfie. Glass is coming away there. Oh, pull it down. Now, a very simple job like taking those big windows out should be easy. But because that vehicle's so old and so rotten, the screws are just turning in the rotten wood behind them. Ben, I can't get this out. Ah, watch this. Multiple screwdriver technique, Frankie. One in there and a flat one behind it just to prise it out. I don't care what they say about you. I think you're all right. Thanks very much. Now, in theory, it was perfect. It used to be a Ford Transit, and it got converted to an ice cream van, so we got a dual-purpose vehicle. But the harsh reality is it's, it's disgusting. It's agricultural. It's been bodged over the years. So if this is a taste of things to come, we could be in real trouble. Across the yard, George and Sheldon are beginning to realise that their unusual vehicle choice is going to require a bit of thinking outside the box when it comes to dismantling. So we've got the tractor in the workshop, and we've already taken the hood off and the fuel tank, and a bit of an unconventional use for some straps. But it's with a good cause, because this actually splits into three sections. You've got the engine and the front axle, and that rolls forward. You leave the gearbox where it is, that sort of just stays there. Back axle, unbolts down the middle and rolls back. 
So what that gives us by splitting it down is three manageable lumps to work on. I bet some of this is the first time it's coming apart. Yeah. It's just so clever. You know, I think you probably only need, like, four different spanners to get this apart. When Harry Ferguson probably designed this, he designed it for farmers to work on it. It's got real mixed emotions over this little tractor. The fellow that I bought her from made it very clear to me that she's reached the end of her working life. So essentially, she's a scrapper. Sorry, girl. But I feel that I owe it to her that every part that I take off of her goes towards a restoration project of the highest quality. I've got the exhaust shell. Ugh. Harry Ferguson, I salute him. Ready? Yeah. Go. That is one fantastic little bit of kit. Come on, cup of tea. Meanwhile, Ben is hatching a plan to liberate the valuable equipment from the ice cream van. Whilst Frankie tries a spot of cold calling. I've seen you on the old, um, on the old internet, yeah. The ice cream game. That's right, isn't it? As it happens, I've got one. And the ice cream maker. You know, like the machine. As ever, the well-padded salesman is keen to please. Uh, might be ready. Even if that involves bending the truth. Is it ready? My answer to that is always yes. Come down. That's it. He's dropped me in it again. Now, I've had a look and I was quite surprised. I thought it'd be an electric generator, but it actually takes a power off the crankshaft, off a couple of belts, and runs down a big prop shaft down here. There's about six feet of it all the way to the ice cream machine. Now, I'm going to have to find where that ends and disconnect it. So what I'm going to have to do is cut a big inspection panel out here so it's bye-bye bodywork. Now I've cut that inspection panel out the side of the ice cream van, I can see where that prop shaft's connected to the ice cream machine. Unfortunately, I can't get to it from that inspection panel. So what I'm going to have to do is take out that sink next to the driver's seat. Can't smash it out because it's probably a saleable item. Not a lot of cash, but we spent a lot, so every little counts. And even once I have disconnected that prop shaft, that's not the end of the story. There's still bolts that bolt the whole frame to the floor of the ice cream van. I can't see all of them. So, a little bit of a puzzle still. But it's got to be done. As a child, Ben may have dreamed of being left alone in an ice cream van. But reality never quite lives up to fantasy. For George and Sheldon, dismantling the Ferguson TE20 is an altogether simpler process. That's it. But that's not to say it's without its complications. Normally, the wheels are the quickest and easiest job you'll have on a car. This is a bit different. The wheels are huge. I mean, they're bigger than a lorry. What I've had to do to get those rear wheels off is lift it up, get the wheel off, lower it down onto an axle stand, move the engine hoist over to the other side, and it's the same procedure again. And the thing that I really noticed at the end was those wheels, they are heavy. At least the front wheels should be a bit easier. Just as well as a potential buyer, Hardy has arrived on site. My name's Hardy, I'm after a couple of wheels for my Fergie T20. Uh, I've got three tractors already, two are in the middle of being refurbished and we're after a new set of wheels. I don't really want to pay much more than £30 for them, it depends on what sort of condition they're in. That one's nice, isn't it? I was hoping for 80 quid, mate. You can wheel them back for 80 quid. I've got a lot of work to do on this one. This one's nice and clean. This one... It's what, a little it's bit on. of a wire brush on a, on a, on a, dr on a drill? If the tyres were good, maybe, yeah. I'd go 50. 60 quid, we've got a deal. No, 50. 50 or a walk. Meet you off, mate, 55. Come on. Don't let me walk them back in there for a fiver. Nah, 50. 50 notes, that's it. Done. All right, mate. Well, I'll see you later. Seriously? Yeah. You're going to lose them for a five pound? Yeah. Oh, right, 50 quid. God. 50 quid. You're lucky I've only got three days. Do you know that? Because if I didn't, I'd lose it for a fiver as well. But 50 quid. 50 quid isn't bad for a first sale, but there's still a long way to go if Sheldon wants to turn a profit on his tractor.
Before Ben and Frankie can start earning big bucks, they need to remove the chiller unit that's barring access to the valuable ice cream maker. Ben had a bit of a struggle trying to get this out. But as it happens, I looked inside and uh, Bob's your uncle. Two ice cream cones. I mean, you might laugh, but I fancy I can place these. And to prove his point, Frankie takes a trip down memory lane. Well, the lane, anyhow. This is uh, Brick Lane in the East End. Say no more. A bit of an area I used to knock about in quite a lot of years ago. All around this area here now, you could buy anything. You could buy almost any animal you wanted to in the dog market. You know, it was all colourful stuff, you know, all good stuff. It's a very trendy part of the land, land that they live in now. It's not my cup of tea anymore, but, you know, I can understand it. Well, perhaps Frankie will be able to get a cup of traditional Rosie Lee at a cafe that's been an East End institution for decades. I'm Nevio Polici and me and my family run Polici's Cafe. We've been here for over 100 years. My parents were in here. I was born just around the corner. My sister works with us, my cousin. My mum's in the kitchen. Good traditional family business. I've known Frankie for years. He said he had a nice deal for me. He said he had some ice cream cones that he'd got off of an ice cream van. Frankie's told me they're not in perfect condition, so I'm hoping to pay about 50 quid for them. And I think it'd be something that might look really good on the cafe, so if the price is right, I'm sure we'll do a bit of business together. Nev? Yes, Frank? Look, I brought these down here for you. Right. Because I fancy that they're right up your street. Yeah. I know you mentioned something about lights, like a couple of lights going yeah. in them or something no, like they that. they look nice, yeah. If I clean them up a little bit, they need a bit of work doing on them. But... I'm looking at sort of 180 cells for these, Nev. How do you feel about that? It's a bit too much for me, Frank. Why do you say that? Oh, Frank, no. look, this one's falling apart. No, but, no, I've but got to get it all worked out. No, it gives you excess, you know what I mean, for lights and electricals and the... Uh... Come on, do me a better price, Frank, than that. If I said to you sort of uh, 140, how do you feel about that, Nev? That's better than 180. It's better than 180. But it's still a bit far away from me. a little bit far away. 80 quid? 80 quid is a little bit too strong. Um, because I'm going to do the right thing for you yeah. and let you have these for a long, 100 quid to yeah. you, right, because I love you. I know you do. And um, plus a bit of grub, a bit of spaghetti, a bit of spaghetti, a bit, uh, bit of sauce. How's that? Good boy, Nev. And uh, what about the dough? Can you part up or what's up? Yeah, of course I can, mate. Lovely. Here you yeah. go. No, I like it. Like it. Love it, Nev. Thank you, Frank. Two fiberglass ice cream cones sold for a one -er. And a plate of pasta, just like a mama used to make. Lovely. Wonderful. I've never had a deal, actually, that's been as wonderful as the deal I've just done. Am I happy with 100 nicker? Oh, shit, Coco. I'm, I'm over the moon. I'm double excited that I've walked out of there and I've nicked 100 quid off of someone for a couple of ice cream cones. One of them's broke. It's day two out of three, as the teams attempt to stash the cash by breaking their working vehicles. Ben and Frankie splashed 1,800 quid on a transit-based ice cream van. Day one, they managed to shift a pair of decorative fiberglass cones for 100 pounds. George and Sheldon coughed up eight and a half hundred quid for a Ferguson TE20 tractor. They made a good start by flogging the front wheels for 50 notes. But as day two dawns, Sheldon is beginning to realise that a lack of knowledge and contacts could seriously hamper his business plans. No, 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 no. That, that's never, ever going to happen. If you want it, make me a, a sensible offer. Please don't insult me. I'm a businessman. I'd rather put her back together again and keep her for myself personally. Oh. <sighs> To be fair, I think I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Stanmore doesn't really have a large farming community, so I think I'm going to have to make a few trips out because um, the farming community ain't coming to me, so um, I think I'm going to have to go and look for it. Now, I've been on the net and there's um, a show on called Tractor World. Hello. I just wanted to inquire into um, getting a pitch, if possible. I've got um, a Ferguson TE20. Um, so those are very, very good sellers, are they? It looks pretty promising, so hopefully I'm going to have a result. 
Cheers. Securing the pitch is only half the battle, of course. There's no point in going to market without merchandise, so it's time to strip. That's for sure. Oh, bloody hell. It is a risky strategy, because once I go there, I've got all my eggs in one basket. Across the yard, the labour-intensive task of liberating the ice cream making machine is reaching its conclusion. Right. One more. You got it, brother. But the stubborn transit won't give up the bounty without a fight. Hang on, get back. Tilt it. There's little time to waste as potential punter Dan has arrived on site. Well, Frank has been in touch with me and he's indicated that he might have a car pajami van machine for sale. Of course, an heavy lamp, isn't it? Oh. We buy and sell ice cream equipment taking old machines as trade-ins. Take it away, maestro. We repair them, give them a new life, and then sell them on again. Well done, Bill. And if it's in good condition, I could be prepared to pay up to £1,000. <laughs> All right, Frank. Dan, isn't it? It is, yeah. Hello, Dan. Nice to meet you, son. Nice to meet you. As you can see, Dan, this is a... This is an ice cream machine. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And, and I know that this is going to be right up your street. Uh, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at you and I'm working it out and I've, you know what, I fancy, I fancy 1,500 quid, Dan. Dan. Can't do 15, Frank. But why not, Dan? You see this label here on the side? It's got my name on it. I know this machine better than you do. 1,100. Dan, Final look. offer. 1,100 pounds. Check books here, Frank. No, I don't do checks. What so. about this? Oh, I'll have some of that. 1100 can, can I see the money? Yeah. Have a look at the substance of it. Yeah. Dan, you're a gentleman, and good luck. And it's been a pleasure doing business with you, Dan. Thank you, Frank. 1100 quid is a serious deal and ensures that the ice cream van is close to wiping its face. Seeing that badge on the machine, uh, I realise it's one that I must have worked on in the past. So uh, nice to see it again. I'm very, very pleased to buy it. And parts are beginning to sell like hot cakes. Has anyone ever bought a hot cake? The sink. You want the sink. All right, make me an offer then. First, the sink goes for £20, and the inquiries don't end there. I ain't being funny, mate, but I mean, are you wired up, right, or what? Corbs has got a freezer. So we finally managed to liberate the freezer from the back of the ice cream van. It was an absolute <laughs> It weighed a ton, it was difficult, awkward, nasty. Um, it just sums up the whole experience of this ice cream van. No, no. It might have been a struggle, but it's all worthwhile as the phone buyer agrees to part with 200 quid. Ben and Frankie are running away with this one. It's the final day of dismantling. George and Sheldon have decided to take the mountain to Mohammed, or more specifically, Malvern, the home of Tractor World. For the agricultural community, this is the equivalent of Glastonbury, and attracts some of the most knowledgeable tractor enthusiasts in the UK. George and Sheldon are also attending. People are arriving, George. Oh. We should have got here earlier. Stop stressing, Sheldon. George, we need to get them bits out on display as soon as possible. Sheldon. Stop worrying, mate. I'm not worrying. It'll be all right. Oh, what's Sheldon like? He's flustering like a pigeon. Let's get in there. To be honest, when I first got here, I was a little bit anxious. Um, everybody else had all their stalls set. Really didn't know what to expect for the day. What they can expect is hordes of spares-hungry treacher enthusiasts perusing the many stalls. This is Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> you know, nothing about tractors. <laughs> We're the two stooges. <laughs> George and Sheldon decide to pool their ignorance, and before long, things pick up. 150 for the bonnet, and 170 They're for the genuine um, ones, wings. obviously. George got involved in the sales, which was quite nice. He was doing his bit. It's probably about 20 quid, isn't it? Um, 20 quid, mate. Once I started getting into it, I loved it. You want to pick it up later? Yeah, can pick it up later. yeah do you want to leave it with us, yeah? yeah. We've set up, we sold a preheat tank for um, £20. Well, actually, I think it was a combined sale between George and myself, really, because um, he knew what the part was and I didn't. That sale is quickly followed by the visit of Ferguson enthusiasts and Peggy and Cliff. 
What do you want for this then? Driver? No, because that unit there yeah. goes for over £100. You're a tractor man. Yeah. I'm not, I'm a car man. Yeah. If you were selling this, if you were standing where I'm standing now, yeah. honestly, what would you be selling that for? Well, I'll tell it for £100. £100. Yeah. You happy with that, Cliff? Yes, thank you. We're happy. Yeah. We're very happy. Yeah. Thank you, Peg. You'll be all right with that? Yeah, I'll drag it with that. A hundred pounds for the dash is a good deal, but they'll need to keep up the pace if they want to stay in the game. What a lovely cup. Oh, man. That's made my day, that is cool. Yeah, it's made mine. It really has. Back at base, Ben can finally concentrate on stripping the eminently saleable transit parts from the ice cream van. And when a buyer arrives, there's a sense of deja vu. It's Barry who sold them the ice cream van in the first place. A regular customer of Barry's is on the lookout for a transit engine that they plan to put to novel use. I've come to see Frankie about trying to buy this engine off him to go in a narrow boat. The maximum I want to pay for the engine is, is 450 quid. I've also come for the mirrors off the ice cream van. So, Bell, look, thanks for coming down today. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, it's out here now, ready and waiting. So you've got to put it in a boat, Bell? Yeah, it's going in a narrow boat. Yeah. We're on the canals. Yeah. Well, whatever floats your boat, yeah. Yeah. Bell. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, as much as me, that's 750 nick of no, this sitting here all no. day long. All day long, Bell. All day no. long. I only want to give about 400 quid for that engine. Only because I know that engine, because it's come out of the ice cream van. That's the only reason why I've come for it. I fancy 600 quid, says that's your little engine, and, no, and those side lights, those mirrors. Tell you what, 500 quid, and that's me done, 500 quid. 500. I've only called to see you because I'm in area. 500. 500. A monkey. And you've got it on you? I've got money with me, yeah. And they are good ones, they're not moody, yeah. they're straight goers. Let's have a look, pal. Let's have a look. It's all there, is it? Yeah. Put it there, my yeah, son, and you go and have a nice little day out. 500 notes is the icing on the cake. Or should that be the flake in the ice cream? Barry must be happy too. It's a bit more than I wanted to pay, but he gave me the mirrors for nothing, so I can't grumble. With Ben and Frankie oh, streets ahead, <laughs> George and Sheldon need some sizable sales at Tractor World. And George is certainly entering into the spirit. Got one of these. Look. That. What do you look like? <laughs> George and Sheldon's stall is attracting plenty of passing trade. But the series collectors are gathered in the main hall. Here, some of the most historic tractors are on display. And money is changing hands as enthusiasts snap up parts and all manner of agricultural memorabilia. With time ticking, Sheldon is here with a TE20 bonnet, hoping to strike a deal with a fellow trader. Hello, Rob. Sheldon. Um, brought it down. Do you want to come over and have a look? Yeah, I'll come and have a look. Yeah? Yes. I was hoping to get 140. No. No, that's, uh, that's too much. It's 60 years old. And I know it's 60 years old, but there's a lot of work to do on it. It's needing, needing the front end sorted out. It's needing repairs there, welding done to it. I can see it needs a new grill. When these tractors are done up, they're done up to a high standard. So we've got to restore this to a high standard to sell it. All right, 100. 200. Yeah? All right. Well, at least I've got a bit of raw room in the car, because I really didn't want to drive back to London with that, so... Um, <laughs> no, I'll bet. All right. I've got to take it all the way to Scotland now. There you go. Check that, please. Lovely. OK. Thanks very much. This is turning into a great sales trip. And the boys have even found time for a spot of R&R. &R. So I saw this tractor competition where two teams were building a tractor against the clock, and I just had to have a go. George got me involved in a tractor building competition, of all things. The chaps are joining students from Wiltshire College, who prove the tractors are not the preserve of the Blue Rinse Brigade. I was actually on the blue team, while George was on the green team. I mean, it was hard work. You're against the clock. It's quite physical. You've got to, you know, got to really put into it. Oh, do I want to beat George? I've got to, I have to beat George. 
naturally my team was going to win because Sheldon on the other team was a bit of a hindrance. Having a difficulty lining up the... Uh... Hey. <laughs> I felt sorry for him, really. <laughs> I'm not as young as these 18, 19-year-old boys, but you know what? I think I've done myself proud. With a winning tractor built in under seven minutes, <laughs> it's clear that the future of British agricultural engineering is in safe hands. You did, you did we've done well. very well, no, and I think we've did. done a fantastic effort, boys. Especially as you had Sheldon. <laughs> so, as Tractor World winds down, Sheldon reflects on a lovely trip to the country. It's been a fantastic day. I didn't couldn't have imagined having the day that I've had here today. Amazing. It certainly has been a great sales trip, which gets even better when Sheldon negotiates a bulk deal with a tractor wholesaler for a job lot that includes rear wheels, radiator, and gearbox for 315 quid. Maybe there's a few petrol heads out there that might agree with me, but I'm definitely feeling the tractor love. Without a doubt, yeah, tractor's all good. Time will soon be called on the Working Vehicle Scrappage Challenge. Lynn and Frankie appear to have picked a winner with their transit-based ice cream van, as they have sold the vast majority of the mechanicals oh. and specialist equipment. Yeah, why are you go laughing, son? George and Sheldon initially struggled with their unfamiliar Ferguson TE20 tractor. Go on. But a trip to Tractor World saw them unload a plethora of parts. That trip to the country has helped them make up ground on their opponents, but they still need a big sale to have a chance of victory. Well. Fortunately, Sheldon is now a tractor expert. That's interesting. Even more fortunate is the fact that their one remaining item is the Fergie's two-litre engine, and Sheldon's on the case. No. No, no. I'm a very busy man. 375 and, and that's it. Take it or leave it. All right, lovely. 375 pounds is Sheldon's biggest deal of the challenge. It's also the final deal, as it's time to weigh and crush what remains of the hard-working donor vehicles. George and Sheldon have sold everything stripped from their tractor. So Ben and Frankie's ice cream van must face a lonely final journey. With scrap metal going at 125 pounds a tonne, a weight of 839 kilos equates to 105 quid towards profit. Will that be the winning margin? It's time to find out who's been working hardest for their money. Are you having a laugh? You lovely young ladies thought of um, opening your own bar, have you? Oh, look at him. Mm. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Get a nice bit of granite work surface in there on top. A couple of fridges, a yeah. couple of optics in the back. As it happens, he's got a point. That's a little darling and all, and I've got to tell you, we are a couple of lovely young ladies. Anyway, uh... What's happening here? Sold the lot. What sort of money are we talking about here? Where's your dough? Show us your dough. We paid 8 50 for our little tractor. Total sales, 1060 Gives us a total profit of 210 quid. George and Sheldon strayed outside their comfort zone in buying a decades-old tractor. Early problems were brushed aside with the inspired trip to Tractor World and the last-minute sale of the engine ensured that the Ferguson turned a profit. Cheers. But is it enough? All right, well, fair enough, lovely. I love it, I love it. Anyway, look, we parted up with uh, 1,800 knicker for this little darling. 1,800, which was cheap. Total sales, 2,131 knicker, to be precise, giving us a total profit of 331 knicker. There, look, bosh. Ben asked for a transit-based dual-purpose scrapper, and that's what he got. The Yorkshireman had to graft like never before to remove unfamiliar equipment, but it was worth the effort as Frankie secured some impressive deals. Selling the engine back to Barry was the final bonus. Put it in, my son. Frankie and Ben are the captains of industry. Yeah, you might have won financially, 
technically. But you know what? George picked that up. We beat you guys hands down, mate. What? What are you talking about? I don't know. How are we going to get this out anyway? It's big. I don't know. I don't if know. you push it from that end, then I'm... I don't know. I'm a bit confused. Anyone who knows what this is all about, they saw what we had left to what they had left. Says it all, really. We sold everything off that little grey Fergie. And it went on to live on other tractors all around the country. Some people talk about emotions. Some people talk about characters. Not me. I only talk about pound notes, shillings and pennies. And uh, I'm the winner. I can't honestly say I enjoyed dismantling the ice cream van, but it's proved itself to be a total winner. Since the making of this show, all the parts sold have gone on to help an assortment of other vehicles live again. Cliff is clearly overjoyed with his tractor dash. Up north, Barry's customer's narrowboat is now transit-powered. Whilst in East London, Nev is still trying to work out what to do with Frankie's ice cream cones. Don't think about eating them, Nev. You don't know where they've been. Can you get rich on rust? We'll find out as two teams of profit-driven car breakers go head-to-head -head in the ultimate test of stripping skill. And salesmanship. 1,500 quick. It's down from one and a half. 600 quick. Four hundred pound. But this is as much Hollywood movie as car breaking competition. Oh my gosh! We've got hair and makeup. So Feels like a big zit. <laughs> <laughs> Exhilarating <laughs> stunts. The bonnet's up. The bonnet is up. Oh no! And steamy romance. Now you've got a lovely face. Well, thank, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Cue the titles. <laughs> To triumph in this challenge, the teams must make maximum profit from breaking a vehicle that costs more than £50,000 in today's money when it was released. That price tag encompasses all manner of classy motors. But with only two grand to play with, the teams will need to be at their sharpest. Once they've splashed the cash, our strippers will have just three days to dismantle their once pricey donor vehicles at this licensed breakers yard west of London before selling the parts stripped for top dollar. Oh, lovely. The team with the biggest profits will be declared the winners. Taking on this high prestige challenge are two teams for whom it's all about the money, money, money. First up are George and Sheldon. Master of automotive destruction is mechanic extraordinaire George Percy. I was born to break cars. There's nothing I can't do with an angle grinder. Residing over a sales network that stretches from Stanmore to Southern Watford is Sheldon Nichols. Buying a fine motor is like buying a fine wine. You've either got taste or you ain't. They'll be scrapping for stripping supremacy with Ben and Frankie. On the tools is one-man dismantling phenomenon, Yorkshireman Ben Shiamansky. Stripping a car down is child's play. I just wish someone had let me put them back together. Sales and distribution falls to business bulldog, Frankie Oatway. I love animals. I really do. I really love them. If you're referring to ponies and monkeys, of course. And yes, that does mean money. First job for the teams is to decide on a donor vehicle that cost in excess of 50 grand in today's money when new. George and Sheldon are in a decisive mood. Well, what's the budget? Two grand. Two grand? We're not going to touch nothing for that. I was thinking, I don't know, something either Italian or German. Yeah. German? It's got to be. Yeah. You know me, I'm a BMW man. So what do you reckon, what, an M3? Yeah, it's got to be an M3. When it comes to BMWs, a simple letter M is a hallmark that guarantees speed and excitement. BMW's high-performance division specialises in giving cars the X factor. In 1986, they notched up one of their greatest achievements. The M3 was voted best handling car of 1997 by Car and Driver magazine. 
the second generation M3s, hit showrooms in 1992, with a price tag of over £34,000, which equates to more than 52,000 quid in today's money. A 3.2-litre engine ensured the car accelerated from 0 to 60 in five and a half seconds. M3s break well, but many drivers mistreat their beamers, vastly reducing the resale value of the engine. As the boys begin searching for a breakable M3, it becomes apparent that George is near death yeah. with the dreaded man flu. Hi, I'm ringing about the um, M3. Right, and what sort of damage has she had? Does she still run? Do you, uh, do you think you can do this one? Because I'll, I'll just feel rough, mate. So Sheldon heads out on a solo mission. Lovely part of the world, this. And it appears Northamptonshire's gain could be Stanmore's loss. I think when the time's ready, I can move my empire to somewhere like this. In fact, Sheldon's in his comfort zone on all counts today. I mean, I do know a little bit about the M3s. I used to have one a few years back. The M3 in question belongs to heavy plant fan Darren Jones. It's in a metallic purple. Miles, mileage is not excessive, but it has been in an accident and it is a financial write-off. It's got good interior though, and the engine is clean and it's all good running order. I'd like to see it go for a couple of grand. I am open to offers, and they need it gone, really. Hello, All right, Darren, Hello. how are you doing? Good, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. Um, here it is. Most of the bits are with it. It's not, probably not as bad as it first looks. Are there any other mechanical issues on it you know about? I think there's an issue in the diff or the drive shaft area. What about the engine? How does she run? Engine's all good. I'll tell you what, the keys are in it. Yeah. I'll get you a cup of coffee. Can you help yourself? All right, all right. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Just two sugars. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Hello, mate. So, what's the car like? Is there anything wrong with it? Yeah, yeah, she's all right. What can I tell you? It's, a, it's an M3. What's left of it? And what's the engine sound like? <laughs> sounds sweet. So, what's it like through the gears? Yeah, I was going to try that now, George. Yeah, give me a minute, mate. The gearbox is all good, yeah? George, I can hardly hear you, mate. You're, you're, you're breaking up a bit. Sheldon! I'll speak to you when I get back. Bye. Don't feel right. I don't feel right at all. Oh, fantastic. Getting better by the minute. Back at base, Frankie is inspired. Even if he can't remember which car he's envisaging. Ben, I'm seeing luxury. I'm seeing beauty. I'm seeing elegance. I'm thinking Mercedes, Ben. I'm thinking a convertible Mercedes. Well, the only one I can think of is an SL. It sounds good to me, and I mean, I, I agree with you. I think we should go for it. What? What Frankie's suggesting is the Mercedes SL, or sports lightweight. A mainstay of the company's range for over half a century. There have been just five full-size incarnations of the SL, and many consider the fourth-generation 380 SL to be one of the best-looking Mercs of all time. Part of the R107 series, the 380 SL stayed in production from 1980 to 1985 and was powered by an all-aluminium 3.8-litre V8 engine, renowned for its durability. It didn't come cheap, though. A 1982 model cost over 19 and a half grand, more than 58,000 in today's money. The 380 SL is fast becoming a collectible classic, and parts will certainly be in demand. But increasing demand can inflate the price of even the roughest scrapper. Ben and Frankie's search for an affordable SL has led them to Southall in West London, where it's a tale of two convertibles. Do you know what I really love about coming to buy cars with you, Frankie? Go on, mate. It's the glamorous locations. No, it is a little bit special, Randy, Ben, I'll give you that. They're nice, aren't they? The, well, 
I'll be the judge of that. Uh, do you want to go get the keys? I'll go and get the keys. I'll bring them out, right? Holding the keys is car dealer... Jags. The boys have come to see two Mercedes SLs. One of them's a 91 in red. Lovely car. Starts and drives. It's got a long MOT on it. The other one is a project and it needs work. I'm looking for two grand for the red one and 1,600 pounds for the older model. Is it going to be a V8? It's a lot of motor, though, Ben, isn't it? Oh, three litres straight, six, Frankie. I'm not interested. Well, the red one, it's going to be a future classic, but they're cheap to buy at the moment, a roadworthy model. So would we make any money off that? Probably not. Well, this one, though, it's sort of into classic territory already. Did you know SL? Do you know what it stood for? No. Nah. Sports lightweight. And I can see this one is even lighter, thanks to nature. Is there anything on the horizon here with this? Like, looking at it from, like, a positive point of view. Bodywork, shot. Wheels, not desirable. Chrome, iffy. There's pros and cons, you know, with those two motors, cos one of them sort of a, is a bit of a go the other one is, uh, is not. With the older one, I think it can place the parts a little bit easier. Does it work? <coughs> Arm works. Well, the auto works, doesn't it? Uh, mm. Let's have a look under the bonnet. I don't know, Ben, something tells me this is our little golden nugget. Look at that, look. 3.8 litre V8, doesn't work. What do you reckon, then? Two contenders. If I was buying a car to drive, that one. If I was buying a car to brake... I'd go for this all day long. All day long. Back in North Hants, Sheldon knows that two grand doesn't buy a lot of Beamer. So he's pulling out all the stops to get an abused M3 with a very saleable engine at a knockdown price. All the M3 bits that are on it is the only the engine and gearbox. And I don't know what the gearbox is like, so I can't drive it. OK. The diff shot, front suspension, I don't know what's been done to that because the rack's not attached to one side. Right. This is like an M1.5 from where I'm standing. Let's get that the money. What sort of money did you have in mind for it? Well, I was looking for around two grand for it. Um, you ain't gonna get that, mate. Well, what are you? What have you got in mind then? About eight hundred pounds. I can't do that. Engine, which is good. Interior, hood. You got loads of decent stuff on here. What is your best? I'll go up to a thousand pounds. Wow, that's just kicking me where it. That's no. I, well, can't I don't do want to kick you where it hurts, but the only sweet thing in this deal at the moment is the coffee I'm drinking. Sensibly, what about if we meet somewhere in the middle? It's fifteen hundred quid, and that that is my last price. I can't go any lower. 1,500? OK. All right. Yeah. yeah. That one bruised and battered M3 with opposable steering, purchased for 1,500 quid. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Southall, Frankie needs to seal the deal on an unroadworthy Merc SL. So what one do you want? What do you mean, what one I want? The red one or the, or the rusty one? Well, why do I want the red one? It's a better car. What do you mean it's a better motor? Well, it's it's two grand. I don't want to part of a two grand. <laughs> I want something a little bit cheap, Jags, which is it's, why... It's rusty, it don't run. Well, that's the reason I want it, though, Jags. I'm looking at sort of a, a grand. What, for the rusty run? Yeah. Nah, it's worth more than why that. Why not? That's a collectible you... car, that is. Oh, it's a uh, collectible, Yeah, is it? Oh, collectible. It was rusty five minutes ago. Yeah, but it's a collector's car now. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, now, now you're selling. Now you're selling. So you've it is. Yeah, oh, yeah, now you're going to try and top me up. Buy the red one, then. Why would I want to buy the red one, though, Jags? Give me £1,300 for it. 1300 quid. What's the matter with you? What are you on? cheap car. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Jazz. I have got in my pocket here, look, 12 and a quarter. That's 1225 nickel to me and you. For that motor out there, I don't care if it's collectible, debatable or indestructible. I'm taking it back to London. You're going to take that and you're going to give me the correct paperwork. Is it all there? It's just all there, can't it? You've got a deal. You've got a deal? Yeah, we've got a deal. If you like your Mercs rusty and rough with an engine as yet untested, that's 1,225 quid well spent. Challenge to max profits by breaking motors that came with an inflation-adjusted price tag of over 50 grand, both teams have returned to base with their scrappers. They have just three days to strip them of the most valuable parts that they must then flog to the highest bidder. Any unsold parts will be weighed in for scrap and chucked in the crusher. Before the stripping commences, there's just time for the teams to check out their opponent's donor vehicle. 
Frankie, Ben, looks like it's been a bit of a mix-up, isn't there? I thought the challenge was 50 grand when new, not 50 quid now. You boys need a couple of hours, maybe go sort yourself something else out? No, 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 we are happy with our... We're happy, aren't we? Yeah, well, mate. This is a cult classic. True enough, Ben, but, I mean, this has got more holes than a kilo of Swiss cheese. With added holes. That is a pile of dough sitting here, brothers, I've got to tell you. The wings are wonderful, and, I mean... I mean, that chrome, look at it, look, I mean, it's like something, it's like sparkles in a, in a world of, of murk. And as for that engine, we'll say no more. Have you heard it run? Funny you should say that. Not as such, exactly. Right. Not at all, but we're full of confidence. <laughs> You're full of something, all right. Well, we'll at least feast our eyes on this aubergine terror. I mean, it's an M3, well done, but a soft top... Frankie, this is a hairdresser's car if I've ever seen one. Yeah, well, that's something I can't really particularly comment on, I've got to be honest. This is a piece of German engineering, mate. I've got one of these. I'll rest my case, George. So, Ben and Frankie saw fit to splash 1,225 notes on a 1982 Merck 380 SL. Yes, yeah, she's rusty. No, they've never heard her start. But she's fast acquiring cult status and she could prove to be a little gold mine. Sheldon alone went ahead with the purchase of an accident-damaged BMW M3. The engine purrs like a randy lion. But the passenger side front wheel operates independently of the steering, the front bumpers have gone AWOL, and it doesn't drive. But it's not all bad news. That straight-six, three-litre engine will be crucial to profit. But they also hope to cash in on seats wheels, and the convertible roof mechanism. It's day one of dismantling, and having missed the trip to buy the Beamer thanks to a near-fatal bout of man flu, George is having his first proper look at the M3. Right, come on in. Start her up. That's not quite the M3 he described to me. I mean, not only has it been smashed in the front and smashed in the side, it's missing half of the M3 bits. But there's still a lot of good bits to be sold on that motor. I mean, especially that engine. So I'm going to be professional about it. I'm going to get my head down and get that job done. I love the sound of these. You know what, George? I think it's cut out at exactly the right time. I think it's only petrol. But more importantly, I'm really worried about this. I've had a call from a guy who's really interested in this roof, George, but right. I don't know how we're going to get around this. Well, yeah, obviously the rollover bars have gone off where it's had an accident, but I can reset those. But what about the glass? How's it going to leave that? The plastic will obviously be stretched, but I think if I warm that up with a heat gun, that should bring it back to its original state. Looks like a big zip. <laughs> You've got to be so careful with this. I just, if you warm this up too much... Oh, wow, it's going. You know when these go white, yeah. the, the plastic fades? If you heat it up like this, yeah. then you can take the white out. It's going. Is it meant to be dripping, though? <laughs> right, can you just pop your hand behind that? Right, you ready? Yeah. Keep an eye on shell, because it's going. Yeah. Right, what do you reckon on that? Mate, that's 100% better, George. We'll work the roof out now. I actually told the fella that yeah. that roof was 100% and it was all good and I missed out the rear screen. But I feel so much better now. So, yeah, money in the bank. And with the roof now measuring up to Sheldon's description, the phone buyer right, agrees to part with 200 quid. It's first blood to George and Sheldon. Across the yard, Ben and Frankie are charged and ready to go. Right, I've got this fresh butterly, so let's see if this makes a difference. Am I right in saying, right in the way of technical things, I mean, if that battery sort of uh, is a going concern, this engine's going to start, isn't it? Uh, potentially. Yeah, but Ben, this is our investment. Frankie's right. That aluminium engine will be the centrepiece of their business plan. But there's also money-making potential in the bumpers, chrome trim, body panels, and removable hardtop. First job is to see if that engine runs. Yeah. But there's a big problem. It's called Frankie. Hold tight, ready, Ben? Francis. Yeah. The immobiliser. Where is it? 
You see the little red light on the uh, centre console? Yeah. You see the little black thing with the metal thing on the end? Yeah. Stick that in the hole. Wiggle it about until the red light goes off. Are you touching it on the metal bit or the light bit? On the light bit? Well, no, it's on the metal bit. On the metal bit? Yeah. God, you make this look really easy. It's not working. They have taught crows how to use tools, but teaching Frankie how to use an immobiliser was a complete different league of challenge. The metal bit's got to go to the metal bit. Yeah. And then it fire up. See that, you see when that red light goes off, when you touch the metal bit to the metal bit? Yeah. You do that. And what's that do? Just start the car. <laughs> well done. <laughs> right, just give it a sec, Frank. So we got the engine turning over, but it didn't fire. So what I did is I took the king lead off the coil and put it against the engine block, and that showed when we spin it over, we did have a nice strong spark. Ah, uh, yes. We have lightning, we have sparks. So it must have been the fuel. With replacement fuel pumps easy to come by in scrapyards, it's not long before it's time for take two. And action. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you, are you sure? Yeah. You've done it, my son, you've done it. Oh, well, when he got that engine started, I mean, that was like money in a bank straight away. I mean, that's what it's all about. And to double-check the engine's viability, the boys decide on a short test drive. Always keep your flaps clear. Wait. Whoa! <laughs> oh, my God, God. That did it. Is that like the James Bond ejector seat? Bonnet catch not working. We deployed the flaps several times. The flaps, the flaps, oh. the flaps, Ben, the flaps are up. The bonnet's up. The bonnet is up. Over. The engine, lovely. Gearbox, harsh, but present, I suppose. Oh. We're going to test the suspension here because this is very bumpy. Are you ready? Yeah, go on in. <laughs> the handling over the pothole section was uncomfortable, unpleasant. I think Frankie found it very enjoyable. No, no, Ben! Ben! No, no! Ben! No, no! Oh. Not quite as Mercedes intended, I don't think. So, Ben, look, we've got some dough wrapped up in this, as you can see. Well, the bonnet's got to be worth at least a carpet, 300 nicker. That and the, uh, and the grill, it's got to be worth two and a half. That's, that's like 550 quid. Over a monkey. Yeah. We'll get around the other side and start taking it off then. That's why I've got the utensils ready. In fact, the bonnet... Wonderful, Ben. ...and grill are just the well start done, of it. Well that is a bit of our profit, son. The Merc is literally dripping with profit-producing parts. Is it attached? No. The hardtop should be an easy sell. We went for a test drive like this. Yeah, that was dodgy, yeah. wasn't it? We, we could have deployed. We could have been ejected. We could have been ejected. But the SL provides not one, but two Ooh. roofs. It ain't in bad shape, is it? How much with this massive hole in the uh, fabric here? Yeah, but holes are for sewing. And, of course, there's the now-running engine. That's unbelievable, Ben. You know what that reminds me of? Apollo 11. Landing on the moon. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one short step for an antique engine. One giant leap for Frankie's sales stock. But the engine doesn't stay on the shelf for long. It ain't in bad, Nick. It's seen better days. As a phone buyer snaps it up for 375 quid. Across the yard, Sheldon's shoddy inspection of the M3 is returning to haunt him. Shell? What's up? When we spoke on the phone and you bought this, I thought you said you tested it through the gears. What talking? Well, the drive shaft's been smashed right in. You didn't drive it, did you? One thing Sheldon always does well is flog stuff. And fortunately, the arrival of Tom gives him the chance to escape the workshop. I'm looking to buy some side skirts for BMW E46 convertible, which is in, back in Romania, in my country. Yeah, I'd like to pay around 40 quid. Have a look, see what you think. There are a couple of scratches and scuffs, isn't it? How much are you looking for them? 50 pounds. 50. 30. Come on, man. Come on. The rubber is missing. Look. Where's the rubber missing? The clips are not here. Do you take 30? No, Tom. No. What colour is the car you're going to put them on? It's white. Anyway. White. So yeah. you've got to paint them anyway. Yeah. It's not that they're not in bad condition. It's got a little scuff there. I'll take 40 pounds. 35. If, if these were missing, 
I would say, all right, £35. But it's, it's, it's worth, they're worth £40. All right. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. Top man. Thank you very much. That's a very welcome 40 notes. But Sheldon will need some much bigger sales to turn a profit on the Beamer. Across the yard, Frankie is utilising the wonders of the web. And consulting contacts. I know you know your way around this market, and I mean, I'm looking online now as we speak. To assess just how much money there is in the Merc. Three and a half hundred quid doors and all that game, and... Whilst Ben continues with the stripping process. According to my expert researcher, these bumpers are worth several hundred pounds. It meant I went carefully to try and take them off and not damage them. The front wasn't too bad, but when I got to the rear... Nope. I think what happened is they were designed with special German screws designed to disintegrate when an English mechanic gets near them. So I had to grind them all off. But it was very difficult, and it took a long time, but I didn't damage it. And hopefully Frankie will now sell it for more than £8.50. Frankie's drawn a blank on the bumpers, but he has enticed some punters to sight. And with a lady present, Frankie is planning to flatter and confuse. Uh, I'm Denver. Uh, this is my sister Linda. Um, basically, we're here today to pick up a few cosmetic parts from my dad's 500 SL Mercedes. Lovely to meet you, Denver, and uh, obviously, uh, I think get your name, darling. Linda. Lovely little Linda. Good to meet Isn't you. she lovely, that little girl? Smart lovely. Sister, yeah. See, that's what it's all about, beauty, because you have got lovely eyes. See this little lot here? Yeah. That's a little, that's a tiny little job lot, right? That works out at 65 notes, right? That's 65 nicker. That's, that's 60. 60. Yeah. Well, that's not 65, is it? I know, I know, but... That's like saying, that's like saying, I'll give you a one -er, but what I'll do is I'll give you 30 now, and I'll give you another sort of 70 shots down the road. What's, what's five pound between well, friends? Well, look, that's 60. Yes. Yeah. So, therefore, we are a fiver short. We're light. We're light. I'm light. Okay. And uh, I've just noticed a lovely little Hurton Centre there in a lovely Linda's purse, and I will relieve her of that immediately. Lovely. Thanks very much. Thank lovely. Thank lovely. Some might call it theft, but 65 quid helps push Frankie and Ben closer to profit. I'm sure he'll pop the fiver change in the post. So as day one draws to a close, both teams have secured sales, but neither is near breaking even. Challenge to make big money on motors with an inflation-adjusted price tag of over 50 grand. The teams are busy dismantling and searching for punters. Even if you don't know what you want, I know what you want. Ben and Frankie parted with 1,225 quid for a rusty Mercedes 380SL. On day one, they sold an assortment of switches, relays and chrome for 65 pounds and the engine for 375 quid. George and Sheldon kept the German theme going by staking 1,500 quid on a bruised and battered BMW M3. Day one saw them shift the soft top roof for 200 pounds and the side skirts for a further 40 notes. It's day two, and both teams need big sales to get into profit. Sheldon's got a punter on the phone, and this looks like it could be the big one he's been waiting for. I haven't driven it, but I've heard the engine run. Yeah, the gearbox is there as well. And you want the loom, loom as well. Cool. George, we got some work to do, mate. So let's unleash the beast. Hang on, mate. Whoa, 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 whoa. This BMW engine, it's it's a big money item. All right, George, try it again now. I'm not going to be selling any things off of it. It's going as one unit for an awful lot of money. Whoa, something's moving. It's moving. Oh, George, I'll tell you what it is. Go on. Got an earth strap still on. We haven't cut the loom, so we've got the loom all in one bit, so it all plugs into the ECU. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to enjoy selling it, because I've heard it run. Runs beautifully. Everything's all good about it. She's out, mate. With the Beamer block, box and loom safely removed, it's time for Sheldon to hit the road. And it appears the path to success could be a steep one. Well, today I've come to Longcross um, Testing Grounds in Surrey. It's actually in a place called Chobham. And for those people who know their tanks, it's where Chobham armour came from originally. They've got all banner of ramps, 
surface testing, um, tracks with high speed banking. It's amazing. The gentleman that I'm going to be meeting here today, he's also going to be doing a bit of testing on one of his vehicles. So um, hopefully he's going to give me a good price for my M3 engine and gearbox. And here is the potential customer, Peter Lathrop. I own GKD Sports Cars, and we produce high-performance kit cars that use BMW mechanicals. The car we've got here is built with a M3 3.2 Evo engine, and with that engine in place, totally standard, uh, you're going to be getting a 0 to 60 in approximately 3.2 seconds, 0 to 107. With Sheldon's M3 engine still en route, he takes the opportunity to ride side saddle as one of Peter's customers, Lawrence, takes his GKD for a test drive. I always wanted an M3 and I always wanted a Caterham or a Lotus 7. Okay. But this came up, it's the two together. It's all, yeah, it's all combined, it's all one, isn't it? My gosh, I think my face is left on the inside of the visor. The handling, the braking, the acceleration. Oh. Another hard day at the office, George. Sorry, mate, but it just had to be done. In case anyone's forgotten, this is actually meant to be a business trip. I was asking roughly two grand for the engine and box. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, just for the, having the crack in that, um, I'll do a straight deal with you today for £1,700. Um, yeah, that's probably not bad. I mean, the problem you'll have trying to get £1,700 is the, the engine and box is out of the car now. So nobody actually truly knows what sort of condition it is. Now you've got a lovely face. I trust oh, you. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Much appreciated. So, I obviously trust you, but uh, at the end of the day, to me, it's an unknown commodity. I'm willing to take a punt, but only for about 1200 quid. You've got no reason to take my word for it, but... I can guarantee you this engine is a great runner. And if you put it in your car and it doesn't run properly, and you take it out, I'll give you your, every cent of your money back. Can't ask further than that. Yeah, yep. but for that, I do want 1,700 pounds. What we normally do, to be honest, we normally buy a complete car and then sell off the bits, and we normally end up with one of these for free. But it takes time and money to do that. Yeah. Right. So um, that's probably gonna be worth about 1,400 quid. Call it 1,600 pound. Well, you know where we're going to meet up here then, didn't you? Where are we going to meet? <laughs> we're going to meet at 1500 Cash, right here, in my pocket, ready to go. And who knows, maybe you can come down for another test drive. Yeah, if you guarantee me another test drive, maybe a little something for the weekend. <laughs> um, all right. Brilliant. All right, great. Lovely. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Top man. 1500 quid is what Sheldon paid for the M3, and that deal puts the Beamer in profit. Back at the yard, buoyed by his findings online, Frankie is keen to get started on a major sales push. I've just been doing a bit of research on the old, uh, all that. You've been using a computer? I've had a go. I don't believe it. Yeah, research? That, yeah. Wow. Pull the other one. I've had a look at these doors, and they're worth a few quid. Right. Three and a half hundred nicker each, complete. But as ever, nothing simple when Frankie's involved. We have got a punter that wants the door cards. Right. Minus the doors themselves. OK. For one and a quarter. Well, that means one thing. That if we detach those door cards from those doors, it devalues those doors. So what do you want to do then, Ben? Well, I'll tell you what, door cards are always a little bit tricky to get off without damaging. So if I take the doors off first, make it easier to get the door cards off, and then you can flog whatever you like in whatever order you like for whatever amount of cash you like. So is that a yes or a no? Right, Ben. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I really like that motor. I know Ben's got his sort of little bit of reservations, but when you get in that motor, you can see a bit of luxury. It's just written all over it. And it, it, and it was very, it's a tasteful motor. Some of the fixtures in, like, in the interior and all that going, magnificent. As far as I'm concerned, I thought we bought a nice little golden nugget. With the door cards removed, Frankie decides money in the hand is better than waiting around for a big payday. Ever the salesman, he persuades his phone buyer to take the wooden heater panel as well and banks 140 quid. It's the third and final day of dismantling, 
Having raced into profit with their engine sale, George and Sheldon want to get further into the black by cashing in on the M3's luxurious leather seats. Shell, where do you want to put these? I'll stick them over here. Grab that. Got it? <laughs> Who what those seats? When they do something, they do over-engineer them. They, they're built to like... They are well-built, aren't they? It's like these windscreen pillars. You know, there's like three layers of steel in there. Really? Like, you know, like the rollover bar? Yeah. This is a front... You know, you, you won't budge that. Despite the Beamer's build quality, Sheldon's not exactly inundated with punters for the seats. All right, mate. Thanks very much. Yeah, bye now. But there is interest in the less than perfect rear subframe. There's a few people watching it. No, you don't have to give me a deposit. Um, if you want it and you give me your word, I'll give you my word that I won't sell it to anybody else. One rear subframe removed in the nick of time. To coincide with the arrival of Victor. Yeah, my name is Victor. I come down here today to um, uh, look into buy a uh, E36 M3 uh, subframe uh, for a car that I am rebuilding. Well, Victor, this is the X. As I told you, you had a slight, um, a slight distortion. <laughs> slight distortion. You can say that. <laughs> now I can see it's, it's a bit worse than I, was I originally that. thought. I mean, um, it looks to me like you got a couple bent lower arms as well. There and then, unfortunately, we got a bit more damage than we thought. I don't know. I'm still interested in it. If you're willing, to, if you're willing to give us a deal on it, I don't know what you say. Say on the pounds. I say 125. 125. Nah, it's too rich, me. Too you know, rich, thing that I got to replace. You've still that. got a drive shaft. You've got two. Well, you've got two drive shafts. I know it's popped out, but yeah. you can still sort that out. That one is also knackered, actually. Uh, I'm going to end up no. having to pay you by the looks of things. I think so. Don't, don't look anymore, don't look anymore. All right, we'll say £100. I'll, pounds. I'll, I'll close my eyes. Yeah, well, all right, you're saying £100. Pounds. Let's just say £100 pounds in. Yeah, we'll shake on that. We'll shake with this one, though. Go for it, go on. <laughs> go on. A hundred quid for a rear subframe with more problems than a wildebeest at a crocodile's dinner party represents good business. Across the yard, Frankie's winning streak continues as he deals with an inquiry for the Mercedes SL hardtop. It's in good nick. It's in great nick, as it happens. It's in very good nick. And lights. In fact, the interest is firm enough for Frankie to load up and hit the road. Yeah, so I'm on my way to Redditch. I'm seeing a geezer called Brucey from the SL shop, which is uh, specialised in... Um, Mercedes, they're sales. Yes, I suppose the clue was in the name. And I've got the roof, the arm top, and a uh, box of lights. I fancy two and a half hundred nicker. And as he arrives, Frankie gets the sense that there's money to be made. Wonderful setup. Mercedes galore. You name it, they were all up here. And I mean, he's restored a lot of them. And I thought, aye, aye, the geese has caked up with dough. And here's the man he's hoping to relieve of his hard-earned cash, Bruce Reatham. We do restoration, uh, sales, parts, and we do a hire as well. If you were looking to buy a hard top in very nice condition, probably in the region of around five, six hundred pounds, something which is very sort of rusty on the front and the bottom, in, in around sort of a couple of hundred pounds, something like that. A couple of hundred quid it'll probably be then. As you can see, it is beautiful. Well, I'm not so sure about that, really. It's quite a lot of rust. A lot of rust. If you look around here, I mean, it's all... It's actually broke on there. This is, you know, look at it all around here. You've got holes. It's, it's pretty poor, really. Yeah, well, look, Bruce. And, you know, all the holes you've got over there as well. Brucey, baby. Look, I'd, I'd appreciate if you don't start pulling my parts about because they are my property. Well, I've got to be honest. Yeah, well, all right, Bruce, you've got to be honest. Yeah. All right, you've got to be honest, but, you know, it's quite offensive, Bruce. Yeah. Bruce, can you stop standing that way because I've got funny feelings? I don't know what the story is here. Bruce, that, that, yeah. has a little job lot inside. Have a look. Have a look. Have a look. These are the front lamps, then. They're the front lamps. That's the front lamps. You know what I mean, Bruce? Yeah, don't want to tell you... have got a couple of little marks here, look. Yeah. You know. Bruce, you've uh, got... I've got to point them out. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Bruce. Right. As a little job lot, 
Yeah. With that and that, yeah. for you, three and a half hundred nicker. No. No? No, it's not happening. So when you say no, yeah. what exactly do you mean? Well, I'm not going to pay the 350 for You're those. Not no, no. Three and half. You're not going to pay the three and a half. You're not going to pay the three and a half. Well, I got some cash. I'm uh, not going to pay that money. How much have you got exactly, Bruce? Exactly. What's I'll, your budget? I'll pay for those and those. I'll give you 200. You'll give me 200. 200. Yeah. yeah, 200. Bruce, if I was to say to you, no, what would you say? No deal. You'd say no deal? No. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Bruce. Yeah. I'm going to let you take them at 200 quid. Right, Bruce? Sure. Yes, and I'll take that money now. Right. Let me see if you've got it on you. 200 quid means that the Merc SL is beginning to look like a very shrewd investment. Time will soon be called on the prestige car braking challenge. Tasked with making profit from motors that had a list price in excess of 50 grand in today's money, both teams have been racking up the sales. Whoa! George and Sheldon's M3 may have been undrivable following an accident, but the Beamer is well into profit. Largely thanks to a big money deal on the engine. Thank you very much, your gentleman. After a slow start, Frankie and Ben's Merc has also proved to be a profitable scrapper. Lovely, thanks very much. But Frankie could do with a big sale to match Sheldon's engine deal. And his luck could be in. Yes, yes, you, yeah, oh no, I've got you, I know, I know what you want, I know what you want, don't worry. Frankie's lined up a bulk deal that features doors, bonnet, Bumpers, soft top roof, and front grill. On reflection, it might have been quicker to say what hasn't been included in the job lot being offered to potential buyer, John. John, thanks for coming down, my son. No and problem. I do appreciate it, I do appreciate it. Now, John, listen to me, son, now yeah. listen to me, look. Yeah. Have a little glance at that, have a little glance at that, John. Yeah. And don't, look, listen. I can see the rust here, yeah. Yeah, now there's rust on it, John. Yeah. There's rust. Yeah. So how much do you want for the parts? I'm looking, I'm looking for 1,500 nicker, John. 1,500 nicker. It's a bit I, strong for me, to be honest It is a bit strong, yeah. John, yeah. but you are not <laughs> carrying it in your back yeah. pocket, yeah. are you? No, no, you're not. No, no, you're not. No, I'm thinking more about a grand, really. That's you're looking at a grand. Probably about all as strong as I can get with it, really. John, the thing is, what you're trying to do, John, I've got the feeling you are trying to have me over. No, I think that's a little bit of paranoia on your own half. I'm willing to meet you halfway. Well, what I'm thinking, about £1,100. 1100 nicker, John. Yeah, it's a lot of money, I know. It ain't that much. So I'm going to say to you, John, I don't know, 1300 nicker. Yeah, I think that's a very reasonable price. 1300 nicker. Thank you very much, I'll snatch you You'll take 1300 that. Yeah. That 1300 quid exceeds the original purchase price of the SL. A true game-changing deal for Ben and Frankie. No, John, can I count it? No, no John, let me count it. Can I count it? Because it's a lot of money, John. No, but it's my money. No, I know, but... I'm, I'm I want to sure. count it before I hand it to you, and then you can count it all day long. With time up, any unsold parts must be crushed and weighed in for scrap. First up is Sheldon and George's M3. With scrap going at £125 per tonne, a weight of 589 kilos equates to a handy 74 pounds. Next up is Ben and Frankie's Merc SL. 612 kilos equates to an extra 76 pounds in the kitty. But is it enough to seal victory? Judging by that new spoiler, you've um, improved the handling considerably. Nice work. I'll have you know, Ben, that this piece of German engineering has done us proud. Sheldon? You know what? We paid £1,500 for this M3. Total sales, £2,246. Gives us a total profit of £746. Sheldon went solo when buying the M3. But when it came to dismantling and selling, it was very much a team effort. The engine deal alone recovered their costs, meaning that the sales of side skirts and rear subframe represented pure profit. Phone and internet sales contributed over 500 pounds, ensuring that the boys have posted profit figures that'll be hard to beat. We parted up with 1,225 Nicaroonios, Total sales, 3,008 nicker, giving us a total profit of 
783 Nika. I've always loved these cars. They're brilliant, aren't they? Initial inspection and test drive didn't even hint at the success story that was to follow. The bulk deal with John was enough to put the SL into profit, whilst the sale of the door cards and hardtop continued the good work. Smaller sales at sites complemented a host of phone and internet sales for items that included wheels, boot lid, seat belts, and engine. I'm gobsmacked. How can we lose by over a thousand pounds? It's down to me. I chose that car. No one else. Me. After analysing the data and the spreadsheets and the accounts, I suppose I'm going to have to concede defeat. Well, to paraphrase the great J.R. Ewing, I'm surprised those boys are so bad at losing, given all the experience they've had. Since the making of this programme, all the parts sold have gone on to help a host of other vehicles get back on the road. Denver's dad is delighted with his relays and chrome bits. Nice drive, by the way. Love a bit of block paving. Peter from GKD is already putting the M3 engine to good use, and he still thinks Sheldon's got a nice face. Ah, oh, young love. They say there's brass in muck. We'll find out as two teams of money-mad car strippers attempt to make maximum profit from breaking old bangers for cash. 35 quid. That was one and a half. 600 quid. Four hundred pound. Prepare yourself for the most extreme off-roading imaginable. Tim, 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 no, Tim, oh, Tim. Fully grown men screaming like schoolgirls. Oh. And scenes of violence against defenseless cars that some viewers might find offensive. Not me, though. I love it. In today's challenge, the teams must pick up something cheap and cheerful to break for parts. With a stake of just £250 to play with, our scrappers will need to haggle like never before as they search for a suitable motor. It's possible to get something half decent for the money if you make the right choices. But that's a big if. To complicate matters, the teams will have just three days to dismantle their donor vehicles at this licensed breakers yard to the west of London before selling the parts to the highest bidder. Oh, lovely. The team to make the biggest profit wins. This bargain basement challenge is a toughie and befits two teams at the very top of their game. First up are George and Sheldon. Taking centre stage in the breaking process is the Scrap Game's very own poster boy, George Percy. This is stripping motors against the clock. You've got to be fast and you've got to be brutal. Taking care of financial matters is the sartorially elegant Prince of Stanmore, Sheldon Nichols. This game, it's all about first impressions. People see the sharp suit and they know I mean business. They'll be going spanner to spanner with Ben and Frankie. Mechanic in chief, and indeed the only mechanic, is Ben Shiamansky. Stripping cars is all about sacrifice. You've got to put some to death to keep some going. Taking care of business, and no stranger to the biscuit tin, is Mr. Frankie Oatway. Forget all that softly, softly catchy monkey malarkey. You've got to go in hard. It's and where it hurts. Bish, bash, bosh. So, next, please. Job one for the teams is to decide how best to invest their 250 quid. What are we going to get for 250? Well, you can't have your run-of-the-mill motor. We need something that's more desirable, that people can't get hold of every day, like a limited edition or a sports or something like that. You know what, George? Sometimes when you're looking for things and you're looking too hard, you don't realise they're right under your nose. With this one, I'm going to stay really close to home, my home. We're going to stand more. Centre of my world. Lovely restaurants. Place to be, it's happening. 
Because we're looking for something a little bit different, for me, it's best to stay in an area that I'm familiar with, and people that know how to do business the way I conduct business. First out of the little black book is local garage owner, Al. Come on, Al, so what you got for me, my man? Nice calm and gear. It's been on fire, as you can see. Oh. But these are worth a lot of money, mate. What do you want for it, Al? I wouldn't take any less than 500 quid. I've got two and a half. That's all I've got. I can't. I can sell this all day long, 500 quid. Perhaps the streets of Stanmore are not paved with gold. Back at base, Frankie and Ben have settled on a cut price 4x4, four four, and Frankie's on the phone to a well-heeled contact. Adam, hello, mate. How are you, son? Yeah, Frankie, yeah, that's it, yeah. Oh, you think it's wonderful, do you? Can I bring the boy up? Can I bring, you know, my partner up with me for the day? Would you mind? What, a bit of shooting? All right, lovely. And so, the hunt for a bargain off-roader leads the intrepid duo to the Buckinghamshire countryside. Can I just ask you again, why do you look like a Victorian school boy? Ben, you might laugh, but this is all the proper country clobber. This is what they're all going to be wearing when we get up there, I guarantee it. The man Frankie's hoping to put at ease is fellow country gent and gun club owner, Adam. Valley View is a sporting gun club, uh, Clay Pigeon Shoot, which has been here for the last 26 years. We use 4x4s here to move different automated traps around. I've got a Suzuki Samurai, spent a little bit of time in a lake, um, so it might have a little bit of water damage here and there. It's got to be worth a few hundred quid, 250 quid maybe, uh, just the scrap value. Not a pristine example, but this is a Jeep with a proud heritage. Suzuki's pint-sized Go Anywhere 4x4 has been produced under a number of names that include Samurai, Jimny, and SJ. The name may have changed over time, but its popularity has remained steady. Since launch in 1968, over two and a half million units have been sold in 188 different international markets. This is a genuine, lightweight and affordable off-roader, massively popular with the mud-plugging community. But off-roaders have a hard life, and owners are always on the lookout for replacement parts, making the Samurai a decent choice of scrapper. Look at it, look, he's screaming out at us, look. He's screaming, run away. Ben, no, don't be like that, have a look at it. Right, there's no glass in it, Frankie. Not a lot of interior. The big reveal. Oh, it looks... You like it? Carburetor missing. Distributor cap, coil, everything's missing, Frankie. There's no lights. The fella says it's been in a swamp. So if someone's run that engine in said swamp, it's going to be cream crackered, or it could be. Yeah, but, Ben, you're always nitpicking. These are just small little details. Hang on. No, 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 wait, wait. These are the small little details which we could sell to other people if they were there. But it appears that even Ben can see some potential in the once-submerged Suzuki. Missing a lot of bits, but I know they are a popular car for trialling off-roading. It's the Defender and the SJ, so we're not going to have a problem shifting those bits that we do have. <sighs> what do you reckon, Ben? We've got to go for it, I mean, surely? If it's cheap, let's buy it. Love it. See, that's what I love about you. I'm going to go and get hold of the geezer and blow right down his ear hole and give it to him. I'm sure we'll enjoy that, Frankie. <laughs> Having so far drawn a blank in Stanmore, George and Sheldon's search for a cheap and cheerful scrapper has led them to another of Sheldon's contacts, captain of local industry, Mike. I've known Sheldon for many, many years. Done, done me a few favours, I've done him a few favours, but he's a very nice man. You might have to step out of the way, George. But will Sheldon be able to call in any favours when it comes to this Fiat Seicento that's taking up valuable space on his forecourt? It's a little Fiat, it's beautiful in black. We took it in part exchange. It's got a little problem, but it's a lovely little car. Fiat is a car manufacturing giant with a tradition of producing small cars with a sense of fun. The Seicento, or 600 in the Queen's English, took up the mantle in 1998 when it replaced the popular Cinquecento, or 500. There's a theme here. The Seicento was produced until 2004 when it was replaced with the Panda. They obviously tired of the numbers thing. Auto Express praised the car's cheeky styling and nimble chassis. 
That sharp steering combined with impressive road holding make the running gear popular with kit car builders, while sporting or Arbath models will yield saleable body kits and interior trim. Hundred and mm. it's all right, isn't it? Is the rear panel on the doors all right? Have you seen that seat? It's like it's collapsed. Looks like I could tell a story, doesn't it? I mean, there's, there's plenty of bits that we can sell off for this, isn't there? Because it's just getting it the right money. It's a uh, little strap race on it, look. The young lads will buy these bits because this is like a sports edition. You know, there's going to be loads of bits that they're oh. going to want to put on their standard motor. These alloys, the body kit. Is it a genuine old bath, do you reckon? It looks like them. So I see if it runs. Dead. Yeah, there's no water in it. Let's see if you've got a split hose or it's losing the water somewhere. Tell you what, even though it's not a runner, I think I might struggle to get it with two and a half. It looks to be so an bath. It's got the body kit, like you said. Well, what else is he going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, who else is going to buy it? That's the spirit. I'm going to be straight with you. I've known you a long time, and I ain't going to try and deal you. No, I want 400 quid. I know that's what you want for it, Mike, yeah. but what are you going to take for it? Well, it's got to be very close. I'm not going to let it go for less than that. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to waste my own time. I've got 250 quid to spend. That's, that's no, all I've got. I know the car is worth about four, 400 pounds. I know that. Mike, it's not running. Mm. Passenger seat's broken. No, I don't think I can let it go. OK, let me put it to you this way. You're gonna, you might have to spend money on it to get it up for selling. You're going to have to advertise it. You're going to have people coming around wasting your time, knocking on your door. You know what? And I'll owe you. I'll, I'll, I'll owe you a favour, a big favour. As long as you know it's a non-runner, you're going to take it as there's no guarantee, no nothing with the car. That's cool. Yeah, that's fine, Jalen, since I know you for a long time. Deal is done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. Cheers, Mike. You're a diamond. One non-running Fiat Seicento with an Arbath body kit and a collapsible passenger seat liberated from Stanmore for 250 quid. Back in snowy bucks, Frankie and Ben have settled on a formerly lake-dwelling Suzuki Samurai. All that remains is for Frankie to seal the deal. So what sort of money are we looking at here? Now, being sensible now, knowing that I've made an effort to come and see you because... Hey, I've so I can see the effort, Frankie. I'm rather, rather impressed, actually. Yeah, but how much are we talking about for that? A couple of hundred quid, Frankie. A couple of hundred quid. You've got to be large. You are having a game with me. You said I you're mean, gonna... It's got to be 200 pounds, Frankie. Come on. I'm not going to go no more than 75 nicker. 75 nicker, you can take it and I'll walk away and I'll fly back to London. Boom, I'm off. It's got, Frankie, it's got wheels on it and everything. There's a lot of wheels in that motor. There's about 14. 100 quid. Boom, I'll take that away. No questions asked, I'll go home. What are you going to say? I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm no. not going to say yes to that either, Frankie. Well, Come on. 150. Look, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do you, Adam. That, I'm going to give you 120 Sovereignos, right? 120 nicker, providing you give me and Ben. You know, let me let me prove to him how good I am at shooting. You know what I mean? Treat him all that game. Look, wallop. Pow, all that game. You know what I mean? I think I can trust him with a shotgun, Frankie, but I'm not quite so sure about you. <laughs> well, let's have a deal. 120 quid plus a bit of shooting. How's your luck? you got a deal, Frankie. You've got a deal, my son, oh, and no. I love it. That's about 60% of a lightly soaked samurai for 120 nicker with a treat thrown in. Watch, listen and learn, and just watch what I do, son, right? Pow! Oh, that was, that was close. Is that, is that bubble straight? We're having problems here today, and I'm gonna get this weapon seen to. Oh. Stay about three foot in front of the target, and then what up? What, what is it you shout? Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. 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 Oh. Well, anyway, look, let's get home and uh, let's get home. Yeah. Yeah. With both cheap and cheerful donor vehicles back at base, it's time to get cracking. The teams now have just three days to strip their cars of the most valuable parts that they'll then flog to the highest bidder. Anything left on the cars will be slung in the crusher and weighed in for scrap. Before the breaking begins, there's just time for the teams to check out their opponent's scrapper of choice. Mmm, that is nice. Beautiful. So, uh, what is it exactly then? It's a fit. It's a Cento above. What is it? It's a bath. It's a lovely, oh, small right. and sporty little number. Yeah, it looks it. How small, George? Pop this bonnet. Pull the bonnet, Sheldon. Oh, wow. How big is the engine exactly? 
1100. 1100 Nike to be exact, George. 1100 exact. So how many brake horsepower does this sort of Italian thoroughbred kick out? This thoroughbred has 54, 54 screaming horses. Wow. So when we say sporty, we're sort of saying sporty like indoor bowls, for example. Oh, bloody hell. Or gymnastics. Anyway, let's see what you boys have got. What's this all about? That's a little goer. Well, you've been stripping it already? No. You're not going to be surprised at this. I will have you know this kicked off off-roading for the masses. Well, masses of hairdressers. Is that what it's powered by, is it? Lawnmower. Grass never grows on a busy street, my friend. So it's a mid-engine, yeah? More like mid-life crisis. Anyway, where's it come from? A lake. A lake. No, seriously. A, a lake. lake. So, £250 has bought George and Sheldon this Fiat Sicenta. On the plus side, it's got an Arbath body kit and the interior seems to be in good nick. At the top of the minus list is an engine that appears to be about as lifeless as a dodo that's been run over and then shot in the head. <laughs> ben and Frankie only coughed up 120 sobs for this Suzuki Samurai. That said, it spent an indeterminate amount of time at the bottom of a lake and is missing several important components that include carburetor, coil and rear window. But believe it or not, the underwater off-roader could still yield a handsome profit. Frankie and Ben should have no trouble shifting the wheels, axles and seats. Depending on the extent of the water damage, the engine might also find a new home. It's day one of dismantling. And as ever, Frankie's sales and marketing campaign leaves no stone unturned. One Suzuki Samurai, average to good condition, braking for spares and repairs. Lovely. Busy, busy, busy. Across the yard, Sheldon seems to be in need of a confidence injection. You know what, I really slated their motor out there, gave it a proper kick in. Chances are they paid peanuts for that motor. We paid maximum for this. They'll probably 100, 150 quid up before they've even sold anything. We've got to get it selling right now, mate. Luckily, the Seicento could yield plenty of saleable items. Cash-strapped boy racers will be attracted by the alloy wheels. Steering and suspension could prove popular with kit car builders. Whilst the easiest sale of all should be the blinged-up body kit. Nice one, mate. Well, what do you reckon is the best way for these to come off? I think a lot of this is going to be trial and error. It's tight, but you know what? It can't be held on too tight. It's a fit at the end of the day. Oh, things on these things normally fall off. When we refer to a body kit, it normally comprises of front bumper, rear bumper, side skirts, rear spoiler. It gives the car a little bit more bling. What's special about our little fit, the kit and everything that's been put on it, is by the our bath division. <sighs> Spider webs, lovely. That's the equivalent to AMGs for Mercedes, M division for BMWs, and what Ford and Cosworth combined created. I'm hoping that a young boy racer who wants to make his little Seicento look a little bit more desirable, a little bit more blingy, which is that our bath kit, which will do wonders for his motor and his street cred. Sheldon might be glad to have goods on the shelf, but he's a step behind Frankie, whose marketing campaign has already made an impact. You fancy the doors and the seats? I like that. The funny thing is, there is a few people queuing up to take them, so I think that you better get down here a bit lively. Marvellous, isn't it? No. Are you getting anywhere? No, I ain't, Ben. I've got to be honest with you, I'm a little bit surprised it ain't come off by now. No, me neither. Do you know what? There's a flaw in my plan. These have been on here for 20 years. Frankie, you know what it's time for? What? Power tools. What, I, what, like the grinder and all that? No, this is precision power tools. For me, the drill. For you, the kettle. What, I can't ever go? Tea break. But... Tea break. Hey, 
it would have been much, much quicker to use the grinder, but I don't want to damage the hinges. If this punter saw these, these knackered hinges, it could batter Frankie down, and Frankie needs all the help he can get when it comes to prices. So I had to keep changing drill bits because it's easier to drill in with a smaller diameter to get in there and then I need to open the hole out to the full size so the head of the bolt just falls off. Frankie! All right, Sam, how are you getting on? Take it away, Maestro. Take it away? Yeah. Come straight off? Straight off. You have to open the door first. We've got to open the door, like Open the go. door. That's right. Hey. Hey. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't miss a bat, Ben, do we? Frankly, identical door, same again. Same again. Yeah. That's right, it would be, wouldn't it? On two. On two, yeah. Two. two. And here's the potential buyer. Oscar, a man who's had a slight samurai mishap. Went down a ditch, my headlight and door got scratched and broken whilst in the ditch, off-roading, and the seats, they were a bit knack when I bought them. I wouldn't get your hopes up on that score, Oscar. I'm willing to spend around about 40 to 50 pounds. These doors and these seats, I fancy uh, 80 quid, don't you? 80 subs. I'd say about 25. Yeah, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? 80 quid, take them away, enjoy yourself, take them to the farm. Where you go larping, boy? All right, 35 quid, they've got dents on them, they're all a bit naff. Take a bit of bit, time to clean up. Bit what? A bit of time to clean up. No, you said bit naff. Yeah. Did you say bit naff? Yeah. And you said 35 quid? I did, yeah. See how I heard that? See how I heard that? Yeah. 35 quid. I'll tell you what, 65 quid, you can take them away now. You can take them away now. We've we'll got 45. No, not 45, no, no. If I said to you, a right round figure, a bullseye, right, 50 quid, how would you feel? Uh, I'd say, how about we chuck in the uh, bonnet yeah. with it? 70 quid. You don't mind pushing your luck, Oscar, do you? No. You want the bonnet thrown in? Yeah, next 20. Let me think about it. You've got a deal. You've yeah. got a deal, Oscar, and I like your style. You can let go now, Oscar. All right, love. Bonnet, doors and seats sold for 70 notes. Across the yard, a sale seems a long way off for George and Sheldon. Much was expected of the Seicento Arbath body kit, but the punters aren't exactly queuing up. Yeah, not too bad. Well, to be fair, I'm struggling a little bit. You don't know anyone who'd be interested in a fit Cinquento. Cinquento. I just thought you'd probably know someone. <sighs> oh, I thought that body kit would have been the first thing to go off that car. I don't know, it's like I can't give them away at the moment. There is some good news, though. It's the Jan Speed exhaust, it's stainless steel. It's a performance exhaust system. And Jan Speed, they uh, make tuned exhaust systems for cars that uh, gives the car a much fruitier exhaust note. People that tune their cars, you know, they like to say, oh, I've got Jan Speed on it. Well, I was hoping about £100. Let's be serious, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's going to cost an awful lot more than what I'm charging you for it. No, no. If you want it, and I can get it into the, into the post this evening for you, 70 quid. All right, what's your address? I always sneeze when I lose money. Sheldon! What? Give Sam a this. Come. All right, stop struggling. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Go up a bit. That's it. <laughs> One uprated exhaust system flogged for 70 quid. Not a fortune, but it's a start. Yeah, cheers for that. Yeah, any time. Meanwhile, word of Ben and Frankie's samurai has spread through the off-road community, and Frankie is soon fielding an inquiry. Hello, can I help you? You're after some wheels, that's right, yeah. What colour do you want, sir? You're after black. Funny you should say that, because those wheels now have been broke off the motor, now they're ready and waiting, and they are black. No problem, I'll see you when you get down here. Tell her, mate. Here. Francis. You won't believe this, son, you won't believe it. I've only knocked these out. Bosh, wallop. OK, well done. I've told him they're black. Frankly, they're quite obviously white. No, I know they're white, Ben, but I'm, they've got to be black because I've flogged them, and all I want to know now is, what do I do to make this work for me? Us. As a team. Us. Well, OK. For you, Frankie, it's very simple. All you need to do, take the tyres off, B-blast the wheels, 
then a coat of acid etch primer, three or four coats of gloss black, leave them to dry, coat a lacquer, ties back on, jobs are good and should only take you sort of ten hours. There must be a shortcut, I mean, there must be. No. What am I going to do? Well, you could praise colour blind. <laughs> Off-roading brothers Greg and Matt look like they'll recognise the colour of money, though even if they can't find their way to the car wash. Looking to come and have a look at the wheels and possibly do a deal with the wheels. Also, I need a spare front prop shaft as mine's starting to go. My brother's pretty good at bargaining, so hopefully he'll get it for about between 100 and 150 pounds today. And the buyer always feels confident when the salesman has to eat humble pie before negotiations have even begun. But I do apologize. I know they should have been black. I know they should have been black. But they're not black, they're white. 200 quid, 200 quid for that little lot there. That little lot there. No, Matt, don't laugh. No, don't start taking deep breaths and all that game. Ted, if that was in black, maybe we could have gone a bit higher. No, but we've had that out. I've apologised for that. But what do you reckon, though, Matt? Well, I reckon about 100 quid. What, what, for the whole lot? Yeah. Why'd you say that, Matt? Well, look at it. They're not exactly white, are they? They're pretty brown with all the rough that's on them. Is he normally speak up that loud yeah, when he's out yeah. and negotiating and all that? I mean, so how old is he, by the way? 14. 14, so you brought muscle to try and put me under the exactly, cops. Yeah. And that's a little bit unfair, isn't it? One and off. If the wheels were black, yeah, but they're not be. black. They're not black, no, Greg. not what we agreed. No, no. Well, well, well what we agreed earlier on and what we're going to get, it's always going to be, well, going to be oceans apart. You know what I mean, though, yeah, Matt? Yeah. So, Greg. Greg. 115. 115, no. Who's holding the money here? The, the, the uh, Scratchola. Matt, Matt, yeah. Matt, look, I'm going to talk to you, not the oily rag, because I know that you're going to part up with the right money. So if I said to you 140 as a deal, as a little gang, a little job lot. You know what? 140 sounds like a good deal. 140? 140. He's got the money. Yeah. Given Frankie's weak starting point, 140 quid represents a good deal and catapults he and Ben into profit. It's day two out of three, and the teams are furiously dismantling their cheap and cheerful scrappers, whilst attempting to flog the parts stripped for maximum profit. I wouldn't like to, yeah, because I don't want to have you over. Ben and Frankie paid £120 for a Suzuki Samurai dragged from the bottom of the lake. On day one, they managed to knock out the doors, seats and bonnet for 70 quid, and the black stroke white wheels for 140 George and Sheldon paid the maximum 250 quid for a Fiat Cicento Sporty and are lagging behind having shifted the uprated exhaust for 70 notes. But things are looking up as two potential punters arrive at sight, namely Phil and Pep Janella. Uh, we're a small family-based business in South East London. We specialise in Italian cars, Fiat, Alfa, Lancia. And we're here to buy a set of wheels for Fiat Seicento. We've been told we've got a nice set, hopefully going quite cheap, you never know. Uh, good price, 110 maybe, 120. These are the wheels. I've described them as best as I possibly could. As I said, they've all got the centre caps. There's no nasty curbing or gouges on them. The tyres are really good and they're a good brand tyre. Yeah, they're not too bad. What are you looking for? You guys are in the trade. I was going to ask for 200 quid for them. 200? But for you guys, 180. 180. How about we start at 100? It's a few marks there. Look, look the tyre's cracked there. 120 and we're losing out. Come on. <laughs> if you take them away today, you can have them for one and a half. One half. And you're throwing that torsion bar. I'll tell you what, call it 160 and I'll throw it and I'll throw the torsion bar in as well. Mm, 160. 160, we've got a deal. Come on. What do you think? 160 is not bad. Yeah. Right, then 160 in the bar. Cheers, mate. Lovely. Cheers, Lovely. Thank you very much. Cheers. Is there any other bits I can interest you in? Nah. nah. You sure? Nah, you're fine. Worth a try, and despite not adding to the sale, 160 quid for four <coughs> perfect wheels and a torsion bar put Sheldon and George within 20 quid of breaking even. But Sheldon doesn't want to get there by selling little bits for small change. You know what, George? We need a big sale. And this has got to be it, mate. I know what you're saying, Shell, but that engine ain't running, so it's probably shot. Yeah, well, what are we going to do to find out whether it is shot or not? If we drop the engine out, all the suspension and that, I'll get the head off and have a look. I mean, you'll have the suspension and get that sold, can't you? Gearbox. Come on, cheer up. So 
this is what's known as the front suspension assembly, and it consists of a number of parts. The part everyone probably knows is the shock absorber and the spring, and this is what affects and compensates when you're going across a bumpy road. This is what's known as the wishbone, and this is what affects the position of your wheel on the road, either forwards, backwards, or outwards, away from the vehicle, or inwards, and that's dependent on where you're sitting on the road. And the anti-roll bar is pretty much exactly what it says it is. It stops your vehicle rolling too much on side to side, so that if you hit a bump on that corner, it pushes the wheel down harder on that corner, so that it stabilises it. And it's not only George who is interested in the Fiat's front suspension. So front hubs, yep, drive shafts, right, yep, and a column. That's very far. Obviously, you do know there will be a charge for that, for delivery. OK, that's, it. that's very interesting. Let's just say you've twisted me arm, then. Where's Stoke? It's off the M6, north of Birmingham, home to a Premiership football team and birthplace of Robbie Williams. But that's irrelevant. Why is Sheldon going there? I'm on my way to a company by the name of Blitzworld up in Stoke. What this company do, they manufacture off-road buggies and they use parts from the Fiat Sacento. What I want is £150 for these parts, but more importantly, I need to devise some sort of plan of getting my bum into one of these buggies, because they look like a lot of fun. And Chief Controller of Fun is Steve Malpass. For something like the Joyrider, which is on our main cars, we use donor parts off like the Fiat Cinquento because it's a tracking car, it's cheap to get old of, like using steering racks, lower arms, drive shafts and stuff like that. So this is what happens when you get all the parts and what it actually finishes up into. We've got a Saxo engine at the moment which is going in there, 1.6, should be good for about 150 mile an hour. 150. 150, possibly pushing 160 if we tune it. And is this what I think it is? Is this um an old Morgan? It certainly is an old Morgan. We've got it in wow. at the moment. The lads are just working on it at the moment. And this one's going to be about another month before this one's completed. And then there's got to be a bodywork go on it and then job done. Right, shall we have a look at these parts? Yes, you've shown me yours. Then. Let me show you what I've got for you now. Oh, wow. Nice stuff. Yeah, steering rack looking pretty good. Good gaiters on it and stuff. Yeah, I think we can use that. Why don't you show me what these things can do? And we'll come back to the um, financial aspects of the purchase. Sounds like a good plan to me. Oh, OK. Let's do that. <laughs> This may not seem the perfect scenario for deal-making, but even when he's flying uphill... ..and down Dale... What are you doing? Oh, my God! Sheldon has a one-track mind. You, you know you're not going to get them bits for 75 quid. It's got to be 150, Steve. I mean, I've started off at... Whoa! Well, I was thinking more around 100. 100 sounds pretty good to me. You've still got... The steering rack, you've got the car! Oh! Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> Is that a wheel? Yeah. Look at them. Car's alright. Just just wheels at it there. Good. See? You're gonna need parts from me. Yeah. Not just these ones, you're gonna need lots of parts from me. It's yeah. gotta be 150, Steve. You know it makes sense. We've had an absolute buzz today, and you know what? It's worth 150 for the buzz. You know it. Top man. Thank you, you really much, are. Freddy. You know you are a top man. <laughs> and that could be a game-changing transaction. <laughs> Sheldon and George have raced into profit. You're not well, do you know that? It's the final day of dismantling, and the Suzuki Samurai just keeps on giving to Ben and Frankie. Even the lawnmower they found buried in the back has attracted a punter. 14-year-old gardening entrepreneur, Eden. I want to start up a, a lawn mowing business. Uh, hopefully I can make quite a bit of money out of this. Drive a hard bargain if I need to. Eden, isn't it? Yeah. That's quite appropriate considering you're going into the gardening business, isn't it, really? I like you. And you're again concerned because you are now officially an entrepreneur and you're going to take this away, aren't you, for 35 sops? No. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Eden. I'm in a good mood. And I'm going to let you have that for a score, for £20. I can do that. You got it on you? Yep, yeah, the... That's a knackered lawnmower sold to a schoolboy for 20 quid. Rule one in business. 
Never trust your elders. I don't know what it's coming to. I mean, I've been tucked up by two 14-year-olds. I mean, what's the matter with the schools these days? Frankie doesn't have long to dwell on the state of the UK education system. Even the potentially seized and carburetor-free engine has attracted interest. Hello, mate. Uh, I received your email about the engine and box. That's it, isn't it? It's right, it's ninepence. I mean, to you, I mean, I'll have a deal with you. I mean, you know, I ain't gonna pull the wool over your eyes. Kit cars. Do you know what? You've took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly what I was thinking. You're down on the south coast, are you? Funny, I do love a stick of rock. I'll tell you what, I might come down here. Have a day out? Yeah, have a bit of fish, sit down by the seaside, yeah. I'm on my way down to Little Anson. See a geezer called Tim. He fancies the, uh, the engine out of the Suzuki Samurai. He does something to do with, like, kit cars or something. I mean, so, uh, Little Hampton, here I come. Well, kit car tells half the story. But in Tim Dutton, Frankie has inadvertently found the one man in the UK for whom a submerged engine is an everyday occurrence. We've been making amphibious cars now since uh, 1995. All the cars that we sell throughout the world, apart from America and Canada, are based on the Suzuki Jimny. But they never imported the Jimny into America or Canada, so when we sell them there, we have to resort back to the earlier Suzuki, which is a Samurai, which is why I desperately need a Samurai engine. Hello, Frankie. Hello, Tim. Uh, what's the story with this engine? And I brought it all the way up from London. Jump in and I'll show you what we do. What, in this? In this. It's like one of these kit car things, isn't similar, it? Yeah, similar sort of thing, but this one's slightly different. Now, Frankie doesn't have the benefit of hearing this revealing sea shanty. And having only ascertained that he's knocking out an engine to a kit car builder, his day is about to take an unexpected turn. Sort of me, it's a bit of me, this. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just turn right here. No, like what are you doing, Tim? No, Tim. Tim, that's the water, Danny. No, Tim, 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 Tim. Tim, no, Tim, no, Tim. No, Tim. You can't do it, Tim. Tim. Oh, Tim. Get me out of here, Tim, a bit sharp, because you're not a well boy. So he took me out on a little day trip on a boat and I'm screaming like a nut. Ah, all right. It's all, mad. it's all madam. It don't mean anything. It don't mean anything. So you got to get me out of here, Timmy, it's ain't funny. But it was certainly a bit frightened to start with. But then you do, because if you're sitting in something that looks like a car, you don't expect it to drive into the water. We're in a car, Tim. We're in a car. Car. You don't have a car on a boat. You don't. It's a fact. No, no, they go together really well, a car and a boat. No, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't, Tim, and I don't like water anyway. I wasn't actually scared, in, in the sense of the word, scared. And I can see, I can see you're already double excited. It's One thing that'll never it's frighten it's Frankie it's is the negotiation of a price. Let's get down to some number crunching. OK. I really do fancy that you should part up with no less than sort of 120 nicker. How long do I get a guarantee on it for? Well, you don't, you don't get guarantees strictly. It's got bits missing. You know, important bits like the carburetor. But the car, but the carburetor is neither here or there. What's neither here or there? Well, it's not here, that's for sure. No, it's not here. <laughs> it's not here. No. I think I'll offer you that. Eighty quid. Eighty quid. No, look, Tim. Look, I'll tell you what I'm going to say to you, Tim. I'm going to say to you, hundred nicker, Tim. Oh, very well. It's a deal. A ton for a potentially seized Samurai engine is the icing on the cake of a dream dismantle. And uh, the receipt, please? The receipt? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tim. I'll see you later, Tim. Back at base, it's time for George to assess whether the Seicento engine has the same earning capacity as their opponent's power plant. So we've got the engine out, and it's, it's the moment of truth. We're going to have to get right in there, get the head off and, and inspect it. First job you've got to do is take the rocker cover off and then pull the head up. Next job is to take the cam belt off and then take the ten head bolts out and we'll remove it. And then we literally lift the head off and have a look. So here it is, the head gasket. 
and its job is to act as a seal between the head and the block and it allows the coolant to pass around the cylinders but not to enter the cylinders. And what you've got here is a metal ring which is called the fire ring. It allows the gases, the hot gases, to stay in the cylinder and pass out of the head. But as you can see, straight away I can see number one has been corroded away and that is where the coolant is obviously leaking it into the cylinder. That's why our engine would have lost all its water and not run. Unfortunately, this isn't great news for Sheldon and I because let alone replacing the head gasket, we've got to get the head sent away, get that skimmed, you've got your cam belt, and we're only going to make a couple hundred pounds of this engine. I'm afraid on this occasion it's just not worth our while. There's no money in this engine for us. You know, in this game you're always going to get something back on an engine. <laughs> not, in, not on this one, I ain't. That engine's totally and utterly useless, and bearing in mind the time factor I've got and what it's going to cost to put it all back together, I've, I need a miracle. I really do need a miracle. The three days allotted for our teams to dismantle their cheap and cheerful scrappers is drawing to a close. Spiderwebs. Ben and Frankie have enjoyed an almost perfect dismantle and have little left to sell on their Suzuki Samurai. George and Sheldon have managed to edge into profit with their Fiat Cicento. But after realizing that the engine is rendered worthless by a blown head gasket, they need a big sale to retain any hope of victory. With the clock ticking, in various time zones, Sheldon is pulling out all the stops to shift the troublesome body kit. Could salvation have arrived in the form of Bradford-based Fiat specialist, Mayat? We started in 2008, specializing in parts for Fiat Seicentos and Cinquecentos. I actually borrowed 350 quid off my dad to start the business up and we've been going since. I've come down today to get some uh, body parts. Might even be interested in some lights. Well, Maya, here's all the bits and pieces that we discussed. Yeah, the front bumper's in a bit more of a state than I thought it would be. Right. It's obviously been in a front-end accident because the headlights are from a later model. There's no cracks on the bumper, might have a few scuffs. Chances are, whatever car you're going to put it on, you're going to paint it anyway. I'm selling it as a job lot with the fog lights in there, and I think it's quite a reasonable price. How much do you want for it again? I was going to say 130 for the bumpers and call it £40 for the lights. I was going to say about 100 quid less than that, Sheldon. I was going to say 70. I'm a Yorkshireman. <laughs> yeah, and I'm from Stanmore. Yeah, we roll for no one. 100 quid? Nah. Call it 130. 115 and you got some. 120 and shake my hand on one. Go on, 120. Yeah. Go on, Sheldon. Oh, you're a hard man. <laughs> Squeezing any money out of a Yorkshireman is an achievement. 120 quid right at the death is a triumph. Ibagum. That deal proves to be the final chapter in the cheap and cheerful story for George and Sheldon, as it's time to weigh in what's left of their Seicento for scrap. With scrap metal going at 125 pounds a tonne, a weight of 532 kilos adds a very useful 67 pounds to profit. A last-minute phone sale of the Samurai body shell for 75 quid means that Frankie and Ben have little to weigh in. Nonetheless, the 187 kilos remaining equates to another 24 notes in their coffers. It's been a close fought challenge, but who'll be crowned the bargain basement kings? Saint tells me that's uh, bigger than what it started off to be. Well, actually, lads, I think that yours Looks a lot better like that. That's funny, that is, George. That's funny. That's really funny. Anyway, what's the money saying? We have parted up with 120 nicker for that little gold vine there. A little bit of gold. Total sales, 520 sovs. Giving us a lovely little profit of 400 nicker. There. <laughs> Buying cheap was the key to Frankie and Ben's success. The sale of the wheels alone put them in profit, allowing smaller sales to bump up takings. Phone sales of items that included roll bar and axles with their icing on the cake. £400 represents a profit of 333%. An amazing return. But is it a winning number? We paid £250 for our little Sacento. Total sales, £602. 
which gives us a total profit of 352 pounds. Sheldon and George paid the maximum 250 pounds for their fiat, but stayed in contention throughout the challenge. The majority of their profits were provided by the sale of wheels, front suspension, and body kit, whilst internet sales of the exhaust and spoiler kept margins looking healthy. Ultimately, a worthless engine cost them dearly as they were beaten by just 48 quid. Well, I do have to say, credit where credit's due, I did pretty well there. Life is a shipwreck. A bit like that motor, really. I mean, how can we lose to a car that's been found in the bottom of a lake? I feel a bit guilty because we lost, and I should be gutted, but I'm not. After the crack that I had on that little buggy, I've made one decision. I'm getting one. Since the making of this programme, all the parts stripped and sold have gone on to help a host of other vehicles live again. The Janellos are as pleased as punch with the Seicento wheels. Tim Dutton is busy transplanting the Samurai engine into an amphibious car. It's not that engine, which is probably why he's still smiling. Whilst young Eden hasn't had much joy with Frankie's lawnmower. You'll learn, kid. You'll learn. Is there money to be made from scrap motors? We'll find out as two teams of scrappage aficionados attempt to profit from breaking old wagons. And in a packed show, we bring you two-wheel wizardry, inspired sales techniques. That's one of them. And fantasy role play. I was like Steve McQueen, overweight Steve McQueen. In this challenge, the teams must amass profit by breaking a heavily modified standard road car. These are affordable, bog-standard motors that boy racers across the land love to upgrade with all manner of body kit bling, interior trim and tuned engines. These cars are often modified to the very particular taste of their owner, which can make shifting parts tricky. Throw in a budget of just a thousand pounds, and this could prove to be one of our team's toughest tasks to date. What's more, the teams will have just three days to strip their modified motors at this license breakers yard west of London, before flogging the parts to the highest bidder. The team to make the biggest profit wins. Taking on the challenge are two teams for whom less is certainly not more. First up, Bud George and Sheldon. When it comes to stripping, number one spanner in the manor is George Percy. Even though I was brought up on diesels, I've always been a petrol head. That leaves sales and marketing to Stanmore's answer to Donald Trump, Mr Sheldon Nichols. I say where there's, mo there's money. Do I look skint for you? Hoping to match them quid for quid are Ben and Frankie. Dismantling is the domain of Yorkshire's finest, Ben Shiermansky. Stripping cars and liberating these parts is like saving lives. Flogging Ben's parts is second nature for East London's Frankie Oatway. I ain't in this game to make friends or pals. I'm in it to make money. First job for the teams is to identify a blinged up beauty that they can secure for under a grand. And Sheldon is charm personified. This is more your era, you know. Hanging around in car parks with loud boom boxes and bolt-on fiberglass body kits. Yeah. Still, at the end of the day, it's all about the money, isn't it? It is. It's all about the money. It's about how much we buy it for, what it's got that we can sell. Where do these challenges come from? And even with a non-specific brief, Sheldon is struggling to find a suitable motor. I appreciate you've put a lot of time and effort into it. But you shouldn't have. Yeah, bye. So Sheldon decides to call in reinforcements. Hello, Matt. Shell, oh, oh, mate, I really need your help. Something loud, leery, like a Corsa or a Fiesta, small hatchback with those silly doors, loud exhaust. Um, yeah, I'm counting on you, Matt. 
no, it's not for me. Well, today, George and I, we're off to see an old friend of mine, Matt. Now, Matt normally comes through to my rescue whenever I'm in need. And believe me, I'm in need, because I've been trying to track down a little car for under a thousand pounds that's been modified, and I'm not having much joy. He said he's got something. He said it's not actually a bit of him, but it could actually be a bit of me. Oh, yes, he has. A fully pimped Vauxhall Corsa. It's a scrapper, really, because cars like that, people spend a lot of money, they put a lot of parts on, but it's to their taste. And when someone else comes to buy it, they may not like the colour, they may not like the body kit. And sadly, you know, it doesn't make a lot of money. Um, it needs a, quite a few jobs doing on it. Really, in parts, the engine's worth the money, and there's lots of bits that can be sold. So it's really one of those cars which can't stay on the road any longer. But the good news is there are still plenty of other courses out there. The Corsa is a mainstay of the General Motors range across the globe. A curvier, more attractive model, the Corsa replaced the Vauxhall Nova in 1993. The car has become very popular with driving schools, which is ironic as legions of young motorists like to add uprated exhausts, racing seats, blinged up wheels and flamboyant body kits to produce a vehicle that says a lot more than three-point turn and emergency stop. Add-on extras will be good for Sheldon's sales strategy, and if the boys can find a scrapper with the sought-after red top or XC engine, they could be onto a winner. Well, you wouldn't be missing that in a car park, would you? Was that it? I think so. I thought we was going to look at that. Yeah, I'd love to be able to get one of them for a grand. Well, it's like a big spearmint, isn't it? Well, that's on well. Well, it just makes it easier to come off. And you know what, all fun and jokes aside, it's not actually a bad kit, it's just been put on really badly. These bits will sell. You know, it's got the wheels, door mirrors. Well, I mean, I expect lads are on my way, I want that body kit. No one in Stanmore would ever dream of looking at anything like this, mate, trust me. It's got a, got a big bore exhaust, all the crystal rear lights. Right, pull the bonnet. Let's have a look. And lo and behold, there it was. The jewel in the crown. Oh, that's all right. It's got a two-litre, 16-valve red top. Oh, my that. God. That's a lovely two little Two-litre, 16-valve? Look at that, baby. There's plenty of cars that can go in. Kit cars, all the modified little cars. Even that car's not meant to have that engine. <laughs> Sheldon was very enthusiastic. <laughs> oh, dear. I think I actually turned into um, a little bit of one of those people that wear the baseball caps round the other way. Well, I think I've made up my mind, George. Get this for the right money, cos we've got to win this. Back at the yard, Frankie is for once on the receiving end of a verbal battery. I'm thinking V8, I'm thinking TVR Griffith. Under S2000's very nice, they're fast. You could get, like, a track focus of them out too. Toyota Celica, they did the um, World Rally Championship Special Edition. What about the Focus RS? That is a lovely car. Um, what? Ben. What? Leave it to me. And the big boy is straight on the blower. Now I'm looking for, uh, you know, something a little bit tasty, something a bit sporty, something with spoilers, something with a souped-up engine, something a little bit leery. All right, yeah, no, that sounds good. I like the sound of that, yeah. Where's well, it Citroen what? Citroen Saxo? The name Citroen Saxo may conjure up images of affordable town cars designed for nipping down the shops. But add a B, a T, and an R, or even an S, and it's a very different story. A 1.6-litre 16-valve engine generates 118 brake horsepower. That power, combined with a car that weighs only 935 kilos, gives the Saxo VTS a top speed of 205 kilometers per hour and a 0 to 100 kph time of under nine seconds. This is a fun and affordable car, popular with young, thrill-seeking motorists, and there should be a demand for parts. And Frankie's search for a sexed-up Saxo has brought he and Ben to West Mosley in Surrey. Well, that was a lovely bit of parking. Thanks very much. And this VTS, resplendent in metallic purple. To secure this classic, they'll need to win over Paul and Andy. I'm Andy, I'm Paul's uncle. 
I'm just there to make sure Frankie don't stitch him up too, too bad, like. I, I know the type. How dare he? Ben, I have found a wonder cart with you. I have searched high and low up and down the country, and this is what I've come up with. Look. You cannot be serious, Frankie. Now, Frankie was uh, bigging this up. He said, Ben, you're really going to like this. This is right up your alley. How wrong can a man be? Formula One, screaming out Formula One, look. He thinks it's a nice car and it's got sort of motorsport heritage because, well, because it's got a spoiler, apparently. Spoiler equals Formula One car. What about if we have a look underneath the uh, doings? The, the, yeah. It all looks a bit shiny. I mean, anything that sort of jumps out worth money in there? Um, well, the engine, that bit of aluminium pipe, strut brace. <laughs> and this body kit, Frankie, we're not going to sell this unless Stevie Wonder's got his driving licence back. Did he lose it, then? Uh, apparently so, yeah. When Ben sort of talks about the prices, you can get out for a score, you can get out for a pony, it don't come to a lot of dough and all that game. Not me, not me. I think outside that circle, like, that's how I work, like that. I'll come right round on your flanks. Oh, I think it'll be fine, then. What's that? What's that whistling? Oh, that we're locked in. I can't get out. I think I've done it all wrong here, Ben. Hmm. Back in Brackley, Sheldon and George have been blown away by this modified Corsa. But the seller, Matt, won't let it go without a fight. Look, I ain't got anything else to look at, so pounds, shillings and pence, what's it got to be, my man? It's really got to be 800 quid. 800 quid? Matt, if I knew you wanted 800 pounds for it, I wouldn't have driven all this way for it, man. What do you see it out then? I mean, what are you saying? I'm saying about £400, Matt. 400 quid's a big no-no. I mean, I'll give you 700 quid. And that, that's me sorting you out. That's the deal. I s seven. I'll give you six now. She looks pretty good, doesn't she? She does look pretty good. She does, doesn't she, in a, in a heyday? <laughs> Go on, and I'll give you six of them. Or 12. All right, we'll go for a deal with that. Yeah? 600 quid. Top man. That one Vauxhall Corsa with red top engine and turquoise body kit in the bag for 600 quid. I hope Matt won't miss it too much. I'm just glad to get off a drive. It was a bit of an eyesore, and I don't think my neighbour was too happy being sat there. Meanwhile, in West Mosley, Frankie is preparing to begin haggling for this subtly modified Saxo VTS. I've got to, I've had a look at old Bubblicious yeah, over there, and uh, it's very colourful. I fancy sort of like. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Four I mean, four and a quarter, quarter like four and a quarter. quarter. No, you got to make the deal a bit sweeter than that. You know what I mean? What do you mean sweeter? Well, tell me how sweet. Five and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half. That's a bargain. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here now. I've got five hundred nickel in my pocket. That is a monkey. And I'll five have. Some... You acted like a monkey. Oh, oh! I'm yeah, being that's... abused. I'm being abused. You can't, can't do it. You can't do it. Well, do you want five? Now, Paul, look, listen. Don't send a notice of him. I don't want you to have any quids. Paul. It's yeah, perfect. It's, it's your motor. It's your motor, Paul. It's yeah, your yeah. motor. Take that, Paul, and enjoy yourself. So that's one two-tone Citroen Saxo with a Formula One spoiler, according to Frankie, and an eccentric self-locking system purchased for 500 quid. We have paid £500 for that. We have, Ben. Oh, dear. Challenge to profit from breaking a heavily modified standard road car popular with boy racers the teams have returned to base with their tastefully accessorised donor vehicles. They now have just three days to dismantle their motors before selling the parts for top dollar. Anything unsold will be crushed and return only scrap value. Before the breaking begins, in a scene played out in car parks across the land, there's just time for our ageing boy racers to check out the opposition. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Finally, one of them motors that complements one of your suits. What's that? Stylish and understated? No, cheap and nasty. Did you get the body kit from a pound shop? It looks terrible. And it looks like it's painted like a bathroom suite from the 1970s. Ah, uh, now, Ben, I'll have you know, there's loads of money in this motor. George, looking at that Fred Bear steering wheel, I can tell this car has been spanked round Essex car parks <laughs> many a time. Well, you know as well as I do, those red top engines, they go for a song. What song would that be, George? Would that be Money's Too Tight to Mention? Ah, uh, no, you're going to like this, Ben. <laughs> I like that, Ben. You're in a... oh, yeah. What do you mean about that? Anyway, enough about that. I can see that you two have gone for something altogether a lot more tasteful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what colour is it? 
What? Purple, blue, green. It's like a black eye. No, oh, dear. This is a blinding little mo. Look at that twin exhaust down there, look. I mean, this would be in demand on every council estate in Great Britain. It's a blinding little motor. Look at it, look. And, gentlemen, would you just feast your eyes on a set of genuine imitation carbon fibre look seats? But they are nice, Ben. They're almost the real deal. If you like that sort of thing. So does it run? Well, no, it doesn't, but the alarm does chirp like a canary. Yeah, like, you know, like Sharp and his beak on a bit of cuttlefish. All right, so bucket seats, twin exhausts, in a motor that don't run. Yeah. Sounds like a bit of overkill <laughs> to me. George, let's go prepare for victory. So, George and Sheldon shelled out £600 for this heavily modified Vauxhall Corsa. On the plus side, it's got a sought-after red-top engine, but it's about as tasteful as a footballer's wedding, and it's, well, <laughs> turquoise. Ben and Frankie parted with 500 quid for this chav-tastic Citroen Saxo VTS. She might not be a runner and be confused as to her colour, but with so many add-on accessories, she could still yield plenty of profit. The easiest sell should be the imitation racing seats. But they'll also be looking to cash in on over-the-top exhaust, and if they can get the engine started, they could be quids in. But on day one of the dismantle, a familiar foe has returned to haunt them. Is that the old bill? When we first got the car back in the workshop, the alarm just kept going off and off and off. What's that? What's that? It was doing everything but what we wanted to do, which was just shut up. Do you know what this is? No. Tremendously annoying. It wouldn't shut up. And we didn't know why it wouldn't shut up. Why does it keep making that noise, Ben? I don't know. What's that? It kept locking the doors. We were trapped in. When that central locking thing went down, pshong, it was locked down. We was locked in. Should we take the battery out? There was only one way out. And that was, that was through the window for me, because, you know... And, like, it was like a bad episode of The uh, Great Escape. I was like Steve McQueen. Overweight Steve McQueen. After escaping from the car via the emergency exits, we uh, disconnected the battery and... Ben, I can't get out. Across the yard, George and Sheldon have a clear plan of action. Right, well, should we get on with the main event of the day? Engine the box. Come on, then, let's roll her back. And it's a sensible policy. <sighs> that red top engine will be the centrepiece of their business plan, and they'll hope to bump up takings with wheels, body kit and seats. And it's an inquiry about the seats that forces Sheldon and George to refocus their efforts. The seats are fantastic. Yeah, there's no rips or tears. No, there's no foam coming through them. Um, I'm not sure what the runners are, but um, they've been modified to fit into the Corsa. Yeah, give me a call and let me know what time you want to pop over. Great stuff. Bye. Right, George, we need to get these seats out. We've got a fella who's just rung up about them and he said yeah. he definitely wants them. God knows why. Because I think they're hideous. So, how do they come out? Well, should we just take it off with the runners? What do you need? Tell me what you need and I'll get them. Phillips screwdriver. Yeah. What, a big one or a little one? Or my medium? Uh, number two. I need a TX40 and an extension. Actually, no, I won't, I won't have an extension for now. I've got that Phillips. Yeah. I mean, in what world does this colour turquoise and blue go together? Well, it's good enough for your suits, Sheldon. Sheldon might not be a fan of racing seats, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And here comes the potential beholder. My name's Scott. I've came to look at some Corsa seats and hopefully I can get a good deal with them. I'm looking to pay about 40 to 50 pounds. Well, I was hoping to get about 80 quid for them, to be honest. I was thinking more like 50, mate, to be honest with you. I'm not going to give them away. 50 quid. You ain't going to get seats like this for 50 quid, are you? Come on. Well, if you think about it, they're, not, they're faded. You've got a little bit here. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to have to buy a die for them. 60. I don't know. I must be getting soft. Um, you seem like a nice enough fella. You can have them for 70 quid. Do you know what? 70. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. 70 quid for the seats is a good start, but profit is still a long way off. 
Luckily, Sheldon is like a coiled spring. Meanwhile, Frankie and Ben are also interested in seats. What do you want me to do, Dave, Ben? <laughs> Getting away? Yeah, if you could. But they could be looking at a far more attractive return than their opponents. Do you know these seats, Frankie? Go on. I checked how much they were new. How much? 680 quid each. What are they worth now? You would get maybe 300 quid for them. What, for the, for the lot? For the lot. For the, for the two front ones, the back rear very attractive seat cover may be worth substantially less. With the seats out, it's over to Frankie to maximise the return on a deal with the befringed potential buyer, Johnny. Johnny, get yeah, in that seat and sit down, my little love. Imagine, imagine driving down the road, John. John, all that, look, skidding. All that. Imagine that, Johnny. Stay there, love, because I think they suit you. Thanks, have because a you can have... You can have these as a job lot. What sort of money are you looking at, John? Have a seat. Let's talk business. I can't get in, John. I'm all right getting in, getting out. I am not going to let these go for no less to you <laughs> for less than two and a half hundred nickel, Johnny. To you. To me. To you. Two and a half. Yes or no? Yes right. or no? You yes, right. Class yourself a very lucky man. You can take these away for two and a half hundred, Nicker. Well, there, mate. Thank you very much, yeah. Johnny. Two and a half hundred quid for the seats means that Frankie and Ben have already recovered half their stake. But keen to keep up the good work, they're assessing the sales potential of the engine accessories. Right, we've got to get the extras off, Frankie. All these uh, little bits and pieces put on. Strut brace first. Strut brace. Strut brace. What does that do? Well, it braces your struts. And that means that you improve your handling because you've got your two towers, top of your suspension, you want to keep them located. Now, high, high cornering speeds, you can, you can twist the chassis a little bit, so that basically just ties them together and increases the torsional rigidity of the car. And that improves your handling. But on this one, I think it might be for show. Can I get to... Uh, to... Once we've done that, we've got these um, just aluminium covers. It's just covering your fuse box panel and your... Uh, your brake reservoir there. So what next, Ben? Well, we've got this uh, beautiful induction kit. What sort of money they worth? In this condition, not a rate lot. There we go. We have got a raising vault stabiliser. I've drawn it. This is a vault stabiliser. Roughly translated, that means it stabilises volts. I can't emphasise that enough. Volt stabiliser. On the other side of the yard, with only £70 in the bank, George and Sheldon are already playing catch-up and need a decent sale. They know that their biggest ticket item will be the iconic red top engine, but to gain access, they need to remove some bodywork. Yeah, can you get it out of the way? Yeah. Might as well get that off the normal, mate. Oh, it's nearly off. Back in the day, years ago, I used to work for a Vauxhall garage when um, the 16 valve GTE first came out. These used to rival the RS Turbo, the Ford R Escort RS Turbo. <laughs> I've done one bowl. <laughs> Removing the bonnet will require a bit more work and give Sheldon the chance to admire the spannering skills of the Corsa's previous owner. Look at all this tape there. Why would you do that? You'd just go down the scrapyard and get a new hose, wouldn't you? We've got a roll of tape on it. Ready? Right. Let the dog see the rabbit. It might be the red top engine that Sheldon's pinned his hopes on, but an internet auction nets a useful 46 quid for the bonnet. Meanwhile, Ben is busy stripping the back end of the saxo. Most of the parts are going on the shelf for Frankie to take to market. Some are being stripped to order. What, just the rear lights? Is that all? Well, you know, money's money. Look after the pennies and the pound notes to look after you, won't they? Well, themselves. Lovely. Lovely. Marvellous. The lights have interested an old friend of the Otway family. Ha! 
Hannah, who's brought boyfriend Brandon and mum Sue for support. We've come down to get some rear lights for a Saxo for Hannah's first car. Um, Frank is an old friend, hoping to have him over a little bit on the lights. So, uh, we have got the Essex mob. I would have said boys, huh. but we haven't, have we? Uh -huh. We have got a mixture. We have got a mixture from Essex, right or wrong? Right. Uh, uh, you're sorry. right. <laughs> Correct answer. Lights. I'm looking at a bullseye. That's 50 shots, Hannah. I'm not paying 50 quid for those. Why not? Because, look at them. Because, because? It's a liberty. It's a liberty? Yeah, it it's is. a bit of a liberty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if, who's give you permission to pick them up when they don't belong to you? Well, we've well, got to have a look. At the moment. We've got to make sure they ain't broken or nothing. No, they ain't broken, Brandon. Mm, and I'll tell you why they ain't broken. Because we have took every... We have took every care and consideration in stripping them out, stripping them out of the car. Yes. Now, they're on the floor down here for a reason. Look, I'm going to renegotiate and it's going to go downwards. I ain't going that way, it's going down. If I said a pony, that's 25 shots. 25, between the three of you, that's Trez. 20. 20? Yeah. No, I don't do 20, Sue, because it interferes with calculations. <laughs> And there is a ball. There is a pony there now, is it? No, that's, no, that's for yeah. our lunch. No, it is for your lunch. <laughs> but I, I, I have lunch and all. With friends like that, who needs enemies? Twenty quid is better than nothing, and means that Ben and Frankie have made a good start. Whilst George and Sheldon have some catching up to do. It's day two out of three as our teams attempt to profit from breaking heavily modified standard road cars. George and Sheldon splashed 600 notes on a tastefully turquoise of Vauxhall Corsa. On day one, they sold the front seats for £70 and the bonnet for a further 46 quid. Ben and Frankie picked up a two-tone Citroen Saxo VTS for £500. They enjoyed a more fruitful first day than their opponents, shifting the seats for 250 quid and the rear lights for 20. And it looks as though they could be about to extend that lead. Ben is removing the Saxo's steering wheel, which Frankie plans to add to a sales bundle. Starter box, lovely. Rear speakers, gorgeous. Tweeters and subs, absolutely. Steering wheel, yes. Neons, what do you mean neons? Everyone's got neons now in these motors. They've all got them. You got it, brother. I'm coming to you. That's official. I'm coming to you. The meeting with the potential punter will take place at a London location that's achieved iconic status in British social history. It's the Ace Cafe, managed by Darren Williams. Ace Cafe London, first opened in 1938. Back in, like, when rock and roll was first being established, you know, you could go to a bar, or club, or anything like that, so we had jukeboxes, and this is pretty much where rock and roll carried on from. It also serves tea and grub, which is just as well. Frankie's buyer's running late. Oh, well, I've been here since quite early this morning. I, I wasn't quite anticipating him being so late. And, uh, you know, what do you do when you're waiting? That bit of breakfast was lovely. Ain't any chance of a nice little sausage sandwich, is there, love? Can I have a sausage and mash, please? Super. With a coronary just around the corner, the punter's arrival could be life-saving. Here's Jim. What is it with these cars and fringes? How many speakers have you got exactly? I've got ten in total. You've got ten? to get some more. Let's talk about money, Jim. I know it's a tough subject. I know it's a tough subject, Jim. And that's a lovely bit of air you've got there, boy. Let's talk about power notes, right? For that lot there, one and a half. That's one and a half. That's 150 nickel to you, Jimmy boy. 100, 150, Jim. Uh, I don't know. I think that's a bit much, mate. I'll give you 100 quid. You want to give me 100 quid? Jim, that's a liberty. 125, Jimmy. One and a quarter to you. Right or wrong, Jim? Right or wrong? Jim? Uh, that sounds about right. That sounds right, Jimmy. Have you got the Thank money? You, Have you got the money on you? 125 quid for an assortment of audio accessories, starter box, steering wheel and fire extinguisher means Frankie and Ben are close to breaking even. 
Back at the yard, George and Sheldon are in desperate need of a big sale. George is busy removing the heavily modded Corsa's uprated exhaust. It should sell, but is unlikely to be a game-changing part. Fortunately, the next stage of the dismantle will liberate the all-important red top engine. You watching? Yeah, slowly, yeah. This engine was designed round about 1990 and it went into the Astra GTE 16 valve. And today it's still powering in an awful lot of kit cars. The power output and the power delivery is really, really good. And the reliability is second to none. You can give these engines a real hard time and they absolutely love it. They really love it. Go on. Hold on, let's move. Just move. I'm really hanging out for a good sale on this engine because of what it does, I'm not going to be shortchanged by anybody. If they don't know what its capabilities are, tough. I know what it is, and I'm not going to let it go for silly money. Hey! Hold it. Despite all that potential, Sheldon has yet to receive any inquiries regarding the Red Top engine. But there is some good news. Well, this afternoon, my old friend Kevin's come down to see me. He's a gearbox specialist. Now, I've been straight with him and I've explained to him that I'm not sure if this is an original Corsa gearbox or if it's an Astra gearbox, especially having a two-litre engine in it. Doubt very much that a normal, standard Corsa gearbox would be able to take that power without blowing a component or a diff differential. Kevin always wants a deal, though. Always wants a deal. What are you looking for? 70 quid. If I knew what was inside it, I'd do 70 all day long. I'd be wrong, my friend, because they're so after. If it's the right box for the red top, it's worth having a punt on. But if, it, if I find it, it's out of a 1300 Corsa, I'm stuck with it. I'll give you 40 quid for it. No, come on, man. Work with me, not against me. I'll have a 50 with you. 70 with the CVs? 60, you got a deal. Come on, come on. I need petrol money to get home. Come on, 70 quid with CVs. They've got good boots on them. Go on, and me and Mark yeah. do it. Top man. Cheers, mate. That's a hard-fought 70 quid for gearbox and constant velocity joints. But it's not the biggie that Sheldon's after. It's day three of dismantling, and despite having made a good start, Ben and Frankie are still a few quid from profit. A sale of the engine will help takings, but they've never heard it run. So, unfortunately, we couldn't get the Saxo started when we went to buy it. We didn't know the reason. There was uh, power coming to it, but if, if you do apply power directly at the fuel pump, it wasn't moving, it wasn't turning, it wasn't pumping fuel. So there was no fuel getting to the injectors, and hence the engine wasn't starting. Now, because it wasn't getting any fuel, I needed to find an alternative fuel source. Now, don't try this at home, but what I did was got the propane equipment that we use for cutting and brazing around here, and fed the propane directly into the air intake of the engine. Now, the spark plugs did their thing and ignited the fuel air mixture, and we got the engine running. And it sounded sweet, so we know it's a runner. If it's a runner, it's worth extracting. And as Ben prepares for the engine removal, there's more good news. So when we got the car up in the air, quickly I saw that the, uh, the whole exhaust system was a, a good brand aftermarket system, a performance system, so it was definitely worth taking time to take off carefully. The first thing I took off from the system was the, uh, the manifold. Now, this was actually welded tubular steel, so it was a, a performance system. So the guy's obviously done a bit of work to the car, to the engine, and, and the exhaust manifold's all part of that. It might have been worth a mint when new, but second-hand, that exhaust fetches just 60 quid online. That heaps more importance on the now-running engine. I'm looking forward to this, Ben, cos I do like a disaster. I don't know, something about a disaster that I quite... That's not a disaster. Don't what worry. is it? That's one engine on a pallet. Something's disconnected. It has. The engine from the car. The engine on the pallet method. Yeah. You can't beat it. Yeah. It's all disconnected. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look, see that? Look. It's quite impressive, Ben. It's not, it's not, not that impressive. And with no buyers for the engine, the boys need to turn their attention to body panels. But Ben is beginning to realise that their sales stock may be severely limited. Now, if this was a normal Saxo, we'd have absolutely no trouble shifting any of the body panels off it. You know, you bump your Saxo and we could sell you a, a black wing, a regular wing, but we don't have one of those. The guy has spent such a fortune on this car. 
this paint that he's painted with, we found half a tin, half a litre in there, is a few hundred quid per litre. It must have taken quite a few litres to paint the car. He spent an absolute fortune on it and, in the process, made it entirely worthless. Across the yard, George and Sheldon are still lagging behind. With time ticking, they need to get selling, and quick. Yeah, we've got the GTE dash. Yeah, it all works, it's all been wired up um, for the Corsa, but um, it would work in any other car that you choose to put it in, I suppose. Hey, get it on, George. You got that radio out yet? Yeah. What about the instrument cluster? Well, it's coming out, but it's, it's a bit of a mess. I okay. mean, they've chopped everything and taped it all together. What I'm really hoping to sell off of this car is that digital instrument cluster. It came originally in the Astra GTE, and today you don't really see them. They're quite sought after, so there's no plugs on there. Well, there is. I mean, you've got the GTE plugs, but they've chopped it and joined it to the Corsa Loom. I mean, you're going to need an auto electrician to wire this back in. Now, I was really hoping for it to have multi-plugs and connectors on it, so it would have been easier to take it out and much easier to install it into the new car. But with a Heath Robinson bird's nest of wires and tape, the digital dash fetches just 38 quid. With big sales still eluding the chaps, they turn their attention to the remainder of the body kit. Bumper's about ready to... Well, it's off. Got it. Got the top stud. Which sells to a web buyer with the exhaust they stripped earlier for 80 quid. It's progress of sorts, but it'll take a lot of small money deals to get the Corsa into profit. And with time limited, that's a big ask. That's why Sheldon needs to make his next sales inquiry count. The engine is, is fantastic, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I've had it run. No, it doesn't smoke, no. No, not even on initial start-up, no, it's great. <laughs> Well, today I've come down to Exxon Racing to um, hopefully sell my XC Red Top Vauxhall engine. To strike a deal, Sheldon will need to impress owner Paul Exxon. We're Exxon Race Engines. Uh, we build racing car engines, uh, mainly the, the Lotus Twin Cam, the Vauxhall XC engine, and the Ford Duratec. Uh, they go into rally cars, they go into hill climbs, they go into circuit cars, anything really that, uh, that races on the circuits. Right then, Sheldon, this is the, the engine build room. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'm in absolute heaven. To me, this is the sharp end of the motor trade. Forget about your dealerships. This is passion. That's, 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 that's it, exactly. It is. It's a passion. It's great to see these old engines still running, making loads of horsepower. That's a bit emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Sheldon might be full of emotion, but it'll be cold science that determines the price of his red top engine. Well, should we go and see what our little red top's producing? Yeah, we can do, yeah. Give me an idea. Before we do it, what sort of power are you expecting to see out of it? I'm expecting around about the 170 horsepower. About 170. <laughs> what Paul's going to do, he's going to put my engine on the dyno. Well, hopefully his engine, if the figures are right. It's like when you go to the hospital and they plug you into a machine and it tells you a graft and a scopes and gauges. It's going to give him an indication of what the brake horsepower is and also what sort of torque figures he's going to get and basically the general condition of that engine. We're going to bolt it onto the dyno. Uh, we'll hook our own exhaust up to it. Um, we'll hook our own inlet system up to it. Um, we control the fueling because we'll put it on a, a standalone management. Um, and then we'll do a sweep test from around about 2,000 up to 6,500 or what, as much as we dare. Be gentle with her. <laughs> Be gentle. I'm always gentle. <laughs> That looks good. Wow. Is that is that right what I'm seeing there? There's your figure. 168.5? 168.5. And you was hoping to see 170? 170 is a really good one. Right, um, well that's all good. I think we're gonna have to do the undignified thing and start discussing money. Okay. Where were you hoping to be? I'd like to be around about 150 pounds. I was hoping to get around 350 for it, Paul. I can't really do it. 
I'll tell you what I would like, A4. I'll do 250. I'll do 200. Split the difference. I'll meet you in the middle. 225. All right. Yeah? Yeah, lovely. That £225 deal came late, but could make all the difference for George and Sheldon. Time is short for our two stripping duos as they attempt to profit from breaking heavily modified boy racer specials. With both George and Sheldon's Vauxhall Corsa and Ben and Frankie's Citroen Saxo fully stripped, it's down to last minute sales to bump up takings. With every pound being precious, Frankie is launching a last minute marketing campaign. Of course I've still got it. Let me tell you, I have got parts that will make that and take it to a different level of a saxo. This is a proper, proper, proper saxo. The smooth sales patter helps him shift the parcel shelf for 21 pounds, but with only minutes left, he's forced to let the engine go for just 10 pounds. Sheldon is also pulling out all the stops. You want to come over and have a look at them? No problem. And manages to flog the Corsa wheels for 50 notes. The front and rear lights for 30. And the steering wheel for 20 quid. Before employing desperate tactics to shift the horn unit. Yeah, that's one of them. Hang on, you've got a few more to go yet. You've got this one as well. And last but not least, there's that one. And after all that, it goes for a tenner. Yes, I thought that was a bit steep too. And that proves to be the final deal of the challenge. It's time to weigh in and crush any unsold parts. First up, it's the bare bones of Ben and Frankie's Citroen Saxo. With scrap going at £115 per tonne, a weight of 574 kilos nets a further 66 quid. Next, it's the turquoise husk of George and Sheldon's Corsa. A weight of 474 kilos contributes a further £55 towards profit. But will it be enough? Well, I see not that many people fell in love with your um, Technicolor dream car. And now your masterpiece in turquoise, it would seem. Come on in. We parted up with 500 nickel, that's a monkey to me and you. Total sales. 614 stops, giving us a total profit of 101, 2, 3, 4, dinero, pound note, 148, nicker. Frankie and Ben were out of the blocks fast when it came to selling parts from the Saxo. The seats alone recouped half their stake. But after the job lot sailed to Jim, deals were harder to come by. An unsaleable body kit dented their ambitions. Whilst £10 for the engine was a big disappointment. That said, they did make a profit, but was it enough? George and I, we paid how much? £600 for this? Yeah. Total sales, £720. So I do believe that gives us a total profit of um, £120, which means we beat you by uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, six. Unlike their opponents, George and Sheldon started slowly. Smallish sales for seats and gearbox left them playing catch-up. But Sheldon's dogged sales strategy ensured the deals began to flow. That red top engine was always going to be the decisive factor in their business plan. And the clean bill of health from the engine test ensured they won by just six pounds. Well, we lost to a Vauxhall Corsa. A turquoise caster. That's not good. That's really not good. When it comes down to the wire, like this one, it's all about the parts. It's all about the dismantle. He can't sell them bits if I don't take them off properly. Yeah, we won. We won by six pounds. Just goes to show in this game, every penny counts. Yeah, I hated that car from the beginning. And I mean, my ears are still ringing from that alarm. Pardon? Since the making of this programme, all the parts sold have gone on to breathe new life into a host of other tastefully accessorised motors. Scott has fitted the Corsa seats in his Peugeot. He doesn't look too happy, though. 
Mind you, neither would I if I'd done that to my car. Johnny is so pleased with the Saxo seats, he can't stop sitting in them, which has prevented him from putting them in his car. Whilst Jim's used the Saxo speakers to upgrade the output of his car stereo to a decibel level that's on a par with a nuclear explosion. Wiki, in it. <laughs> <laughs>